with um, singing the school anthem and then the national okay let's see we'll see start with the national anthem and then the school anthem and then before we commence everything we will start with an opening prayer those that are outside can you please find your way inside piero can you please tell the guys the outside so that we can start Good morning once again. Please let us all be upstanding so that we can sing the national anthem. And after the national anthem, we'll take the first stanza of uh, our school anthem. Arise, O compatriots, Nigeria's call. First stanza of uh, our school anthem. Uh, our guests, we know you won't just, you can hum along with us. <laughs>
I'd like to invite our pastor, Pastor Tiami, to give us the opening prayer. In Domino, let's, let's rise. Heavenly Father, King of Glory, Daddy, we thank you. Father, we bless your holy name. We thank you for the wonderful thing that you have been doing in our midst since yesterday. We thank you for yesterday's program. Thank you, Father, because today again we have gathered here, even unto your name. That it will say, be thy exalted in the mighty name of Jesus. My God and my Father, we commit those who are still on their way into your hand. Father, we ask all that you bring them here safely in the mighty name of Jesus. My God and my Father, as we have come here to learn one or two things, Lord Jesus, we pray all that you minister to us in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, everything that we are learning here, Lord, today, Father, King of glory, let you dwell in us in the mighty name of Jesus. My Father and my God, we know today is the final day. Even as we are going to round up the, today, Father, let your spirit be with us in the mighty name of Jesus. Impart your knowledge and, and understanding to us in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray for all our speakers, even from yesterday, King of Glory. We ask, O oh Lord, that you continue to enlarge them in the mighty name of Jesus. Continue to give them wisdom, understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. My God and my Father, even as they're going back to the various places, Lord, that's after the program, we ask, O oh Lord, that you guide and protect them in the mighty name of Jesus, my God and my Father, we bless your name, O Lord. Thank you, Father, for this program. We thank you for the organizer. Father, be with them in the mighty name of Jesus. My God and my Father, as we are going to the program, Father, come and be with us in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. Please be seated. In Domino. Our guests, please don't mind us. We are trying to relive our days in school. That's anthem we used to sing with all our heart and with all our might. And it always marked us differently within the environment. So we'll go rapidly into the program. And uh, we're sorry for our starting a little bit behind time, but we'll try as much as possible to catch up. And we'll be having our first speaker who will be talking to us and educating us on the topic starting and managing SMEs in Nigeria. He's an accounting graduate and a master's, uh, with a master's in business administration and an alumni of the Lagos Business School, South Excel, India and Cranfield University, United Kingdom, a farmer and a managing consultant of Long Strides and Associates, a thoroughbred human and material resources manager with a commendable flair for challenge resolution, a self-starter, who has served on various implementation committees resulting in an avalanche of accolades and award, a veteran of the HR profession with experience transversing various areas of HR management, including training and development, performance and management, employee relations, compensation and benefits, among other things. His experience scope spans over 20 years in the banking sector with a number of high level responsibilities. Like being a part of a bank restructuring team, managing a learning and development center, and branch management and regional business controller, Southwest, among other responsibility. He has also been privileged to have several years experience in banking operations, thus, further strengthening his competencies by enabling him to understand the HR spectrum, both from the perspective of a practitioner and a beneficiary. And we have no other person than Mr. Wale Rinekon to handle this particular area. Mr. Wale Rinekon, please. Good morning, gentlemen and ladies. Yeah. Those things that um, I noticed immediately I got in here. I saw a banner here that says that um, 
this program is for senior citizens. I looked around, I cannot see any senior citizen here. Is anybody here that is over 70? Okay, you are climbing the ladder. So if this program is for members who left school in 89, Abby, yes. you left school in 89, there is no way you are going to be senior citizen. No, you are senior boys. <laughs> then the second one was that I noticed um, a lady in the class. Because I grew up the next streets to Equal Boys High School, I grew up in Alaji Laisi. I was bread, butter, and cheese on that street. Okay, and I knew then that there was no, it's called Eco Boys. So I got in here and I saw Eco Girl. And I was wondering when we started um, having ladies in school, in the school. Oh, okay. Ah, okay. That's a good one. That's a good one. Oh, okay. That would have been wonderful. Yeah, that would have been wonderful. Okay. Um, my name is Wally. Most of the time, I forget the surname. Uh, I always prefer people to call me Wally. That name is so beautiful to my hair. Um, thing. Um, he read out, the only thing that makes sense to me there is that I am a farmer. I am a farmer. Every other thing he mentioned there, okay, yeah, okay, presently I'm still a management consultant, I'm a life coach, yeah. Um, yeah, my certificate as an accountant is still there, as a banker is still there. But the only thing I, that comes to my head most of the time now is farming. All right. Now, the program is, supposed, is said to be um, starting and managing SMEs. I will want us to take this as a lecture. In the next one hour, I want it to be as interactive as possible because that is when you will be able to relate with whatever I'm saying. That's when you'll be able to um, interact well Okay, so this program is going to be, the next one hour, 60 minutes, is going to be very, very interactive. I'll be very fast because, of course, I have another presentation in Abeokuta by 12. So I need to leave. By, I should have it to one. All right. Um, micro, small, and medium scale enterprises. Okay. We said it's, they are the life wire of a country. What is your name, sir? Kolaoli. What do you do? Real estate. Real, sir? Real estate practitioner. I like that. I like that. Um, is your organization up to a billion naira worth? It will get there. Yeah, you are moving there. Okay. Pastor, what do you do, sir? Apart from pastoring the church, you are a marketer. What do you market? Medical equipment, all right. What do you do, sir? You are a fresh retiree. You must have retired very young. I like that. That's good. I did, too. I retired at 40. Yes. What do you do, sir? Accountant. Wow. Okay. Okay. So you're counting money. Yeah. Okay. That's good. That's good. What do you do, sir? You are the PRO. Okay. What do you do, sir? Insurance. Now, what we are saying here is that it's okay. All of you, you have told me what to do. Okay? The accountant, the insurance broker. Where we're going to start from is that everybody after this program, if you don't have a business registered, you must have now. You must have now. Let me assure you of something. Whatever you are doing now will not sustain you till you die. I met somebody who told me to go and resign. I was already a regional business controller in a bank in charge of Southwest. 
And I met this wonderful man, Dr. Gamalele Onosode. I'm sure you must have heard his name before. I met this wonderful man, and he changed my life all over. I met him August 8, 2008. So I went ahead and burnt all my certificates. All. I can't see IBN, university, everything. I burnt everything. So as you are looking at me, I am certificateless. So what the man told me was that I was not going to need those certificates again. <laughs> All right. I'm not your mentor yet, so I won't tell you to burn yours. Okay? But that was what the man told me to do, and that was exactly what I did. Okay. So we said statistically, medium scale enterprises, they constitute more than 75% of all enterprises in Nigeria. 75%. In fact, you know what? 75%. In fact, you know what? You want to think, oh, Nigeria, 75%. The statistics we got says that in America, it is 86%. 86%. This is the sector that actually run the economy of America. Because look around. If you look around you, ask yourself, what do people do? What do people do? What do people eat? What do people wear? What do people use? Okay, those things are being produced by people who are in this sector. Who are in this sector. This is mainly due to is in terms of set of capital and human resource requirement required to establish SMEs. What we are saying is, it is very easy to establish SMEs. It is very, very easy in terms of human capital, in terms of financial capital. It is very easy. You find some SMEs that with, you won't believe it, with 20,000 Naira, you are in business. True? 20,000 Naira, you are in business. I established a foundation for my, for my dad in my former church. And what we did then was that we just put some money down. Then it was two million, put it in, 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 the, in the church and said, look, people should be able to assess that fund free of interest. Pay over 12, year, 12 months free of interest. And people were doing it. I was shocked when a woman came to me one day and said, daddy, you know what? This program you established has turned my life all around. I said, how? She said, do I know that our initial capital for doing business is, you can guess, 1,900 Naira. 1,900 Naira. You cannot guess. And I was, I was like, wow. Mama said, I mean, how? She said, hey, that's what she asked me. That she was trading in soft drinks. Soft drinks that every day she will buy two crates of soft drinks, each for 950 naira. She goes ahead to sell. He said by 2 o'clock, by... she has sold. She goes ahead to sell 950, and she, she, she sells a crate, 1,200. So on each crate she sells, she was making 250 naira. So the, which means on a daily basis, she was making 500 naira. The beauty of that story is that at that particular point in time, because she was unfortunate to be married to a very, very irresponsible man, she has a daughter, Funke, in Unilag. 500 naira per day profit. But most of us big men, we take some of these things for granted. You don't start business until you have a billion somewhere. It never works. That is not the spirit of SMEs. SMEs is such that, like somebody Amy said, Sam said, look, Wale, ideas rule the world. Ideas rule the world. Not money rule the world. But a lot of people will sit down and say, wow, I'm waiting to win a jackpot. Have you noticed, look around you, do your research, all the people that have made good money by lottery or by inheritance, over 95% of them lose those money in one year. Because they did not work for it. There was no idea behind it. People that win lottery and inheritance, most of the time, 
one year down the line, the value of that inheritance or lottery deep, seriously. Okay? This reason, okay. Together make, no, it's okay, I'll use this. All right, so I say what is SME? SMEs are small and medium-sized businesses that account for a significant portion of job growth and economic activity in Nigeria. These companies exist across industries and sectors, employing as few as 10, and as many, okay, as 500 employees. You also have some, this is actually not, it, you find a lot of SMEs that are employing less than 10, two, three, five, Okay. Now, in accordance with the national policy of SM, SMEs, micro, small, and medium enterprises, it's classified as this. You have micro, less than 10. In fact, as a matter of fact, a lot, a lot of businesses are here. A lot of businesses are here. Less than 10. You want to think about it. Look at that volcano close to your house. How many does he have? Look at that fish seller. How many employees does she have? Okay. Look at that supermarket close to your house. How many employees do they have? So it isn't until you are able to employ a thousand people that you are like, I mean, happy with yourself. No, you can actually do less than that. Okay? Where there is inconsistency between employment and asset base, it now depends on you to determine how, how well you can run. A distinguished feature of SMEs from larger firms is that the latter have direct access to international and capital market, local market and capital market. The big organizations, they can easily tap into international market to raise money, even local market. I mean, look at it from this angle. If today, Nigerian breweries a billion naira. All they need to do is what to, to sell to, to issue what we call commercial paper. Immediately, Nigerian bureau does that. A billion naira, that commercial paper will come back with two billion naira. Because the organization is already big. But if Wale, for instance, needs to raise one million naira now, Wale will have to struggle depending on my goodwill, depending on who I know, depending on who believes in my dream. So that's what we're saying here. SMEs, a lot of them, they face the same fixed cost and large-scale enterprises as large-scale enterprises in complying with regulations, but have, they have limited capacity to market product. Now, this is relevance of SMEs. Like I told you, in Nigeria, SMEs is responsible for over 75% of the business we do here. Over 75% of the business we do. The first one is employment generation. I'm not taking anything away from labor to raise minimum wage. The question Lagos State, for instance, Lagos State is said to be one of the largest contributing contributors to labor in Nigeria. Ask yourself, what is the stark trend of Lagos State? The state government, local government, all together rolled into one. What is the staff strength of Lagos? If statistics is telling us that Lagos State, presently, Lagos itself, that the population of Lagos is 23 million, 23 million in this Lagos, in this small place, and the total staff strength of Lagos put together is not up to 1 million, not up to 1 million. That means that it is now up to 5% of the people that are in Lagos. Most of the time, when people are talking of employment generation, I tell people, it's not the state government that employs. The only things states, federal, local, should do is to make available conducive environment for businesses to thrive. That's what you have in other climes. In April, my team was in Ghana. 
we were in Ghana, and uh, one of the things, one of the multinationals that left Nigeria for Ghana, they contracted, we, we, we consult for them, and the MD was talking to me about why they had to relocate to Ghana. And said the only reason they did was conducive environment. Conveniently, I've forgotten the name of that organization. Okay? But what he told me, and you know the good thing when we got there, we discovered that 90% of their staff there are actually Nigerians. 90% of the staff of that organization are Nigerians. They just moved them straight on. Okay? Supply of potential entrepreneurs. Okay? This is what MSMEs does, does for co the country. Okay? Entrepreneurs come out on a daily basis. Entrepreneurs come out on a daily basis. I was talking to somebody in CAC, not Christ Apostolic Church, Corporate Affairs Commission. Do not do it. Do not do it. Because the pressure of repayment most of the time can kill your business. Okay? Friends and relatives, people give money. Okay? Ah, I'm, I, I want to encourage you. Okay, so friends come in, relatives come in, business suppliers, a lot of organizations actually encourage people. Okay, um, we have one of the largest fish farms in Ogun State presently, and one of the things we benefit presently is that you find a lot of suppliers who say, no problem, we know you. Okay, take this product, feed your fishes. When you invest, we'll talk about it, that you can repay me. But a lot of time, okay, that takes goodwill because we don't have credit culture in Nigeria. Okay, so that takes a lot of goodwill for people to do. But people do it. Trade credits. People give you product to go and sell, to do business with it, and repay them later. Okay? Then, of course, we have equipment loans and leases. I always beg people, do not take a lease on a non-productive asset. Do not ever, ever, ever take a lease on a non-productive asset. I've seen people, I'm a management consultant, so we consult for businesses. And I see people, they're starting business, the business is, uh, some of them, the business is just growing. And they're going to leasing companies to take leases for cars. Don't forget that motor vehicle is a wasting asset. asset. We call them wasting assets. Try something on your own. Go to any of the auto shops. Buy a car today. Let's assume buy a car at 4 million naira. Go to Courtville, number, number plate that vehicle on Monday, on Monday. 4 million naira Monday. On Wednesday, after putting plate number on that vehicle, Take it to the market. Take it to the market. The best you get for that same vehicle that you bought for four million on Monday, the best you get is three million naira. And that is why, even in accounting, we say, you know what? You should learn to depreciate your motor vehicle minimum twenty-five percent across board, which means by the end of the fourth year, the car is not worth anything. That's what it means: twenty-five percent annually. Okay? So I tell people, please, be careful when you are talking of leases. Then another one, another source of finance, which is very good, is what I call equity. Okay? Um, one of my clients came to me over the weekend. We had a session with him over the weekend. And um, in Nigeria, a lot of people in the diaspora, a lot of people are now coming in. A lot of people now want to repatriate money. They are already seeing that things are working now. In the last 16 days, whatever magic this man is doing seems to be working. Okay? Everybody seems to be like, look, wow, I think the country is ready for business. So this young man came to me and said, his friends called him and said, okay, you have this business. We want to come into it. And he asked me, what should he package for them? He already has a small poultry. Yeah, a small poultry. So, and those guys are ready to say, look, they said, to start with, we have 20 million. 
So he now asked me, what kind of proposal should he give? Should he give a proposal for debt? Should it be they should give him as a loan or as equity? And I told him to go ahead and give me the cash flow projection of his organization. The guy was looking at me. I'm glad when I saw your program for today, I saw something like, um, oh, it was yesterday. Small business accounting. I'm sure you did it. Please, I beg you in the name of God, okay? Start with what I call personal budget. Everything, every money you spent in your life should be recorded. We have a template in my organization that we give to people. It's like an Excel thing. Okay? You'll be surprised. Let's do something. What's your name, sir? Demola. Okay. What do you do, sir? Real estate. Mm. Mm. That's where the money is. Though. Real estate. It's the real people that are in real estate. Mm. Today is um, 16th of June. We are not half year already. Do you know how much you have spent this year? Do you know? Okay, roughly three or four million. Okay. Let me shock you. If you are telling me that you think you have spent three or four million, you know what? You have actually spent eight million naira. Okay, temp uh, template. Okay. Okay, I like that. I like that. Uh -huh. This is where I'm going. Okay, that is what we call a tracker. So, as an individual, okay, you know what? Learn to have one yourself. You will be surprised the amount of leakages that are unrecorded. You will be very surprised the amount of leakages that are unrecorded in individuals and small, small businesses. That, that um, airtime that you buy, that airtime that you buy, ah, it should be 1,005. It's a small money. You know, all those small, small things, they actually matter in small, small businesses. <laughs> Trust me. All right. Then we have some people, we call them, we, we have personal resources too. Okay. When I left paid employment on my birthday, 1st of October 2011. The first, thing I, the first thing my mentor told me is that you must start with your personal resources. So I put together everything I've worked on with in the 22 years I worked in the banking industry. X amount. And that was what I started business with. Okay? 1st of October 2011. Okay? So personal resources is very key. So then people were like, let us give you this. Let us give you this. But because my mentor said, no, start your personal resources first. Because it is yours, you will find a way to guard it. Do you understand what I'm saying? You find a way to make sure that it doesn't fly away. Okay, personal resources. Then we have people who call business angels. Business angels. Okay, there are people that have made it so much in life. Okay, now they are around and they bless people. Okay, they mentor people. They are mentors. You see a lot of them, they have programs on TV now. Okay? And um, where, the, where you sell ideas to them, you sell ideas to them, and they see the profitability and viability of those projects, and they finance you. Okay? We call them business angel, angels. Then, of course... Another set of people are the people who call venture capitalists. Venture. Venture capitalists. They help startups. They help startups. However, the challenge with venture capitalists most of the time is that they insist on a percentage of that, organi of that, of that business. Okay? And a lot of times, so people say that venture capitalists are like sharks. Okay? Then, you, of course, you have joint ventures. When we're talking of joint ventures, what I tell people is this. There is nobody God has created that can survive alone. No. There is nobody God has created that can survive alone. 
At a point in one of my businesses, we had to invite somebody, a friend, who became a strategic partner into one of the businesses, who became my strategic partner. Your strategic partner will be somebody that is bringing something into the business. Okay? So you have joint ventures. You can, you can collaborate. If you have expertise in one area, these other people have expertise in another area. You can come together, okay, to start that business together. Okay? The stages we have for SMEs, okay, the seed and development stage. For me, this is about the most important. This is the, what I call the ideas stage. If I ask you this question now, you might not be able to answer me correctly. The question would be, why are you in the business you are now? Why? Why do you do that business? Sir? To make ends meet. Can you imagine? That's a very, very wrong reason to go into business. And that is the major reason why a lot of people do. To make ends meet. Okay? And that is why a lot of time, businesses don't actually survive beyond making ends meet. That business that is to make ends meet, you ask yourself, what is the vision of the visioner of this business? What is the vision? What is the mission of this business owner? What is the mission? If it's to make ends meet, you know what? You just find yourself rolling and rigmaroling within a very small parameters. You know what we say? In a Greek, you know what we say? We say that you cannot catch a big fish by the bank of the river. Are you with me? Piero. Piero, you are distracting also. All right? You cannot catch a, a big fish by the bank of the river. Big fishes don't come there. They are in the... And you remember that time, that, that wonderful parable of Jesus Christ? Okay? It was the first miracle. I, he told Peter, he said, launch into the deep. Uh -huh. Into the deep. It has to go into the deep for you to catch that very big fish. So the challenge with most of us is that we have very limited vision and mission. Very limited. If you are, go, if you are in the business to just make ends meet, what it just means is, okay, I can afford to buy rice for my family at the end of the month. I can afford to pay school fees. It's limited there. And that is why most of the time, businesses don't transcend the owner in this environment. Immediately the person dies. That's why they say the vision dies with the visioner most of the time. Okay? So here I'm very, very interested. Seed and development. Seed. The quality of your seed, write this down, please. The quality of your seed depends on the quality of your harvest. The quality of your seed determines the quality of your asset, harvest. If you get it wrong at this level, it's going to be very difficult for you to rejig your system. It's going to be very, very difficult. So here, this is the first stage. This is what we call the conception stage. Conception state. Conception. The ideas, when the ideas come. Like I told you, somebody Yemi said, ideas rule the world. Ideas rule the world. So at this particular point in time, your ideas has to be very robust. It has to be very robust. It must be something that endures. It must be something that can even outlive you. Seed and development. Then, of course, you are your startup. You have growth and establishment. You have expansion. You have maturity and possible exit. But you know what? You see that I'm so interested in that first item, seed and development. Seed, okay, and development. The challenges we are having in SMEs in Nigeria, okay, most of the businesses we do, 
in SMEs, they are labor intensive. They are labor, labor, labor intensive. Okay? They are mechanized in nature. Because most of the time, the SMEs, they don't have money to procure all this technology. On one of my farms, we used to use, we, we make our feed. So we were using a particular pelletizer. We were, making a, we were using a particular pelletizing machine. And that machine was giving us, okay, you can make feed 200 kg in three hours. After making the 200 kg in three hours, you now dry it for another one hour, making four hours. We went for a fair, a program, and my consultant called me and said, you know, okay, you know what, this might be expensive, but is there a way we can go for it? And we, go for, and we went for this particular pelletizing machine. <laughs> when I saw it, I, I, was, I was actually out of the country when she forwarded that thing to me and said, oh God, you know what, pay me. This thing makes sense. So they got it before I got back because I transferred the money. When I got back and got to the farm, I saw what they were doing. I said, wow. So we have actually been punishing us, myself and even all staff in that, on that farm. How? Now, this new machine makes, listen, 500 kg of feed in 45 minutes. Dried and pelletized, pelletized and dried, 45 minutes. Meanwhile, we were doing 200 in three hours and drying for another one hour. This one, all you just need to load the feed and you leave that place. In 45 minutes, come back and carry your pelletized, ready to be fed to the fish. Limited ability to assess relevant information. Okay, because most of the time, okay, it's as, as information can be very expensive. So most of us, we don't even have it. Okay, lack of good succession plan. This is something that is militating against the growth. If I asked you, for instance, as you are seated here, how many of you have businesses and you have children that are ready to take over those businesses from you? Not even me that I'm talking to you. I'm telling you, not even me, okay? So, lack of good succession plan. And that is why, once again, I told you, most SMEs dies with the visioners, okay? High cost of production due to inadequate infrastructure. In one of the farms, in one of my farms, we were the one that bought, we bought our own, we bought our own transformers, okay? And... Those guys, Ibadan Electric, they insisted that we must get 500 kV, kVA. So we got 500 kVA transformer. We sank six boreholes on our own. I mean, I'm sure if it's, some, it's, if it's not that we can assess some funds, we might not be able to do that. Okay? So this is one of the problems of SMEs in Nigeria. Infrastructure. If somebody has to construct his own, you, you do virtually everything for yourself. Okay? Inability to distinguish between personal and business finance. Uh -huh. This one, virtually everybody is guilty of it. Okay? And that is why there is no clear line between what is yours and what is business. And I always tell people, that's why I tell people, sorry, can we have a class, please? That is why I tell people, there is a concept in business, you cannot fault it. It is called the concept of legal entity. What it means, what's your name, sir? Isaac. Isaac. What it means is that Isaac Limited is different from Isaac. Isaac PLC, no, no, not PLC. Isaac Enterprises is different from Isaac. So he should be able to distinguish between his own personal money and the money of the business. But a lot of time, we roll everything together. So you don't even know that you are eating deep into the WC of the business, the working capital of the business. 
Yeah, she beats her money. Let's go. I'll, I'll, I'll buy it. It's not your money again. Once you put it in the business. Okay? Then, of course, we said limited access to long-term finance. Most of the financiers we have in Nigeria, they do not support, maybe the high cost of the funds do not support medium-scale enterprises. Okay? Then, of course, low-quality product output. Of course, if you don't have money, if you don't have technology. This example I gave to you, in fact, is a, a group of people that came to the farm one day, and they compared the feed we were making with this, in quote, mechanized pelletizer, and the one we are now making with this automated pelletizer. In fact, those fishes, they were supposed to fight us. Because it's like we've been giving them poison. I'm telling you. By the time it goes into that pelletizing machine, it comes out in, two, in, four, in three hours, we now put those same feed again in the oven to burn it. By the time it's coming out, the protein is gone. The protein is gone. I mean, so when these guys now came, got to the farm, and they, they tested it, they said, Gawali, you to come and look at it. I went to the pond, okay, and I was apologizing to all the fish. <laughs> said, sorry, we are sorry for everything we have done to you in the last 18 months. Okay? It will lead to low quality output. Okay? Challenge you have your own business budget. It takes a lot of discipline to be able to do this. Adequate entrepreneurial skill. People don't know that if you want to do, if I tell you how many seminars I've attended, even after I left banking industry, after 22 years of financing different businesses to learn how to run businesses, you'll be shocked, paid for. Okay? Ineffective education and technical background. I'm sorry to tell you this much. Here, I'm not even talking of formal education. Um, yeah, I can say this. My experience with entrepreneurs has shown that the South Eastern, Easterners in Nigeria are better businessmen than South Westerners. And I'll tell you the reason. And every Yubama man wants to go into business, the first thing he thinks about is money. My brother should give him money. I'm inheriting money somewhere. I won a lottery somewhere. Immediately get that money. Five million naira. The first thing he does is he went to rent a shop. Bah! Say, ah, to move around, get a car. And it starts like that. Five million naira. He first paid for, shop, for the shop two, two years. In nine months, he has not stocked that shop. The rent is running. Now, an average Igbo man wants to start business. The first thing he does is to identify somebody that is already in that business and becomes the boy's, the man's boy. And he goes there to learn for one year, two years. And you see them just staying there. Now they bring that thing. Rebecca bring that thing. And they are learning. And Hebron boy that has a mini supermarket once told me, Daoga, do you know that in this Lagos, why people will continue to patronize me is that there are some products I buy from Mushin. There are some products I buy from Lagos. There are some products I buy. I went to, I go to Ibadan to buy those products. That an average Yoruba man gets money, say, everything, yeah, let's go, it's Lagos, Lagos Island. You bring it down, I say you cannot match the pricing of that guy. All right? In effective education. So before you start any business, know as much as possible on that business. Don't start with lo looking for money. Money does not run businesses. Ideas do. Okay? I business mortality rate within the first two years. Go to CAC, Corporate Affairs Commission, and they will tell you that most organizations most organization that they register, in one year they go into dormancy. Inactive. You leave, I say, I want to register a company. You register the company. What do you do with the company? In one year, that business goes. Okay? High mortality rate. Little or no training system and development of staff. Anytime I get to the farm, tomorrow now I'll be there. My staff already know. 
my first session with them, every time I get to the farm, the first one hour is training. Everybody must say something. You must, you must have learned something in the last two weeks. Training is very important. Okay? Over dependence of imported raw materials and spare parts. Okay? Hopefully, we'll be able to get out of that now. Then, of course, weak capital structure. Strategies. Now, we're running down now because of our time. The first one is what I call market penetration. Market penetration. Okay? You can charge lower cost. What is lower market penetration? Ability for you to gain entrance and dominance, okay, into markets, into various markets. How do you do that? You can lower your own price. We call something introductory pricing. We call something psychological pricing. One of the best ways to do this, if you are new in that area, is to reduce your Okay? When you, want to, when you are doing a business, and people are already in that area, and they sell that item 100 naira, if the cost of that thing to you is 75 naira, to start with, you can start with 95 naira with people in that area. And you know what? That 5 naira, because of that 5 naira, people will say, ah, no, it sells better. Okay? People will say, it sells better. And they will come to you because of that 5 naira. Psychological pricing. Have you noticed that if you go to the malls, Outside this country, we now have it. Yeah, if you go to um, Shoprite, for instance, they price most of their items, and you see something like one forty nine ninety nine, one forty nine ninety nine. Now, you now leave your house to go to that place. They say, "Where are you going?" They say, "Ah, that thing in my area it is sold for one fifty. But when I get to that place, it says sold for lesser than 150. What is lesser than 150? In 149.99. Okay, product expansion. Another way, okay, of doing this is that you can expand your product line. Okay? By the time you are marketing new products and, and services in your area, for instance, one of the things we do, we, we are doing now, is that we call it forward integration. Forward integration. I tell people one of the best industries anybody can veer into in the world, world over, is agriculture. It's agriculture. Get it right and you'll be home and dry. The chain is so long. The chain is so, 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 so long. Let me give you an example in the fish industry. There's something we call backward integration in fish industry. Backward integration means that if you are producing, if you are here, and all you produce is grow out, clear areas, what you guys call catfishes, maybe that's what you are producing. You know what? You can do backward integration by veering into archery. Archery is the process of producing fingerlings and fries. That is the raw material for the catfish. You can also do what we call forward integration. There's a lot of exportation of smoked catfish out of Nigeria now. So you can actually say, you know what? I'm going to establish a small kin, a small oven in my area. So I don't need to sell all my grown catfishes to market, market like that. I can actually add value. Okay, smoke them. You cannot decide to sell locally or internationally. It is called forward integration. Market development and expansion. For a growing company struggling to find its feet in the current market, maybe due to stiff competition, market development is a growth strategy. Okay, you expand your market. And what you can do is that you can sell your goods and services in another state or country. If you notice that what you have here is the competition is high. You can, you can move to other places. Market segmentation. I like this a lot. Okay? If you're a small business operating in a market field with bigger competitors, okay, this growth strategy can help you. By segmenting your market, you can identify and focus on a sector okay, that your competitor haven't reached. Think of what other people are not doing and go there. Then, of course, you have alternative channels.
because we also have a segment of our farm is poultry. One of our generators was giving us problems late last year. And this young generator technician came to the farm. My manager called me that ah, they saw Light Day taking pictures of the turkeys and the noila chickens. I said, he was taking pictures. Did he carry anyone inside his phone? He said, no. He said, but he was taking pictures. He was making videos. About three days later, this same technician, generator technician, called me. He said, Daddy, I said, yes. He said, uh, please, the turkeys and the chicken, the noila chickens on the farm, um, how much a day? Because I've already sold 200. Sold 200. How? Where? He said he uploaded them on his social media page. And he started telling people, okay, so he called me to confirm the price. Because I was so impressed with him. I said, okay, how much are they asking for? He said, ah, that, I mean, you give me something, but I told them 30. I said, you know, no, he said he told them 25. I said, like, go ahead, sell. For every turkey or chicken you sell, you get 5,000 naira. I intentionally did it to encourage him. And I intentionally took it to the farm and told my boys on the farm, said, you are here. <laughs> Chopping every day and saying there is no market, there is no market. Look at this gentleman. The guy came to the, and he pushed out all those things. Okay? So you can actually look at the digital age. That's what people are doing. Then, of course, partnership. Like I told you, there is nobody in this world who can survive in isolation. No, 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 no. You cannot. At one point or the other, you need somebody else in your team. You need somebody else to help you. I always tell people, this is how I'm going to end this session. I want everybody to please stand up. Where is the president? Please call. I want everybody to be here. <clears throat> everybody to please look up please if you are holding anything please drop it if you are holding anything I want your two hands to be very free you'll be surprised at how well you can do if you do what I call Positive strategic alliance. All your hands, are they free? I want you to look at me. Your right hand, I want you to give it up. Everybody. Your right hand up. Thank you very much. If there's anything is on your left hand, drop it so I want it free. All right. Now, after this session today, this is what I want you to do. On the street of Lagos, this is what I want you to do. All right. On the street of Lagos, this is I want you to be walking when you are walking on the street of Lagos going forward. All right. Now, people will ask you, why are you walking like that? Tell them. Tell them. That's what Wally said. Now, the, es the essence is this. This hand that you are putting high up here is searching for somebody to lift you up. This hand is looking up to somebody. You need somebody. You need somebody to lift you. No matter how rich, no matter how old you are, you need somebody. Now, this hand that is free here is also searching for somebody to lift up. If all the time, all the time, your hands are like this, your two hands are up. Thank you. If all your time, your hands are like this, 
it means you are not adding value to anybody. People are just dropping into you. You know what will happen to you? You go down because you are a selfish person. If all the time your two hands are like this, you know what's happening? Nobody is sowing anything to you. You are searching for people to lift up. Nation ultimately is down. So I plead with you all the time. This hand should go up, searching for somebody to lift you up. This one should go down, searching for somebody to Thank you very much, sir. All right. In case we have any questions, we'll just take questions in about um, two minutes. Questions? Okay, your name and then your question, please. In Domino. Uh, my name is Wasiwa. Mine is no question, but one or two comments. Um, Mr. Wale, thanks so much for uh, the good talks. I think I picked one or two things uh, that we need to have a business now. I picked that and I agree with you. I believe my colleagues also have taken that. But I have one or two opinions that I do not uh, actually agree with. Uh, one, you said SME is very easy. No business is easy to venture into. That is my opinion. I had an, an experience some years back. My, one of my junior colleagues lost his job. And he used to do this Okada business. I bought one for him. Yes. So I bought one for him. And at the end of the day, I have to take the Okada and dash it out. So the guy became comfortable and he wasn't trying to return. I so, made, I so much made it easy for him. What he delivers per week was actually what others on the field were delivering per month. Then a colleague of mine now said, don't venture in, into a business that you cannot monitor. Ojume wa ojojueni. Permit me if there are none you say. So please, this is important. He said, if you can't monitor it, make sure your wife is involved. If not, forget it. So SME is not, it's not easy to venture into. So that is one. Number two, the late AIT uh, guru, Dr. Wesley, I learned something from him. There was a time when the four big bands came together. They wanted to take over the institution. Then I learned, if you want to go into business, don't use your, don't use your lifetime savings. Take a loan. And this is also where I disagree with you. Why take a loan? If you take a loan, you monitor it. And you make sure you don't lose out. But if you put down your life savings and something goes wrong, you go back to ground zero. I think uh, uh, these are areas where I disagree. Then on the other hand, there is money in business that involves the masses. So look at where the masses are. Look at the needs analysis he advised. They monitor the business. I believe we make it. And finally, uh, you are talking about eco boys and girls. I'm um, 81 set. During our time, Jack Conde came in, 1978. And by 79, he shut down some private schools. So he might them. Because as of that time, we were having three sessions. I think eight to 12 or so, one to then, three sessions. So he changed the three sessions to one session, eight to two. I remember one of my, uh, one of my teachers then, Mr. Taiwo, used to teach geography for one. He became principal in one of these schools. So um, among the schools shut down, what well, uh, happens to be one uh, which involved which was a co-educational school. They were brought to Eco Boys. And I think they were there for two years. The last went with my set in 81. So it was while we were writing our school site in 81 that Eco Girls came in. So those ladies were now passed to Eco Girls. So, that is just the genesis. I grew up in Amoju. My family is here, just behind you. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> yes. All right. Um, let me quickly um, tell something. I love the first um, example you gave. You got on a cadre for somebody, okay? And of course, the first question I asked you is this: What do you know about a cadre business? The answer was nothing. Okay. I wanted to, to go into farming because I had financed so many farmers when I was in the banking industry. 
One of them, I was Baba's personal, account, personal money accountant, okay, general. Okay, so I felt, yes, I was ready. Okay, I thought I was ready. So by the time I was stepping out, I went to him, and the man called Atilade, said, you know what, okay, let's encourage him. Can you give him 5,000 beds to start with? 5,000 beds, that's our own contribution. I was very happy. The man now said, however, with a condition. I said, what's the condition, sir? He said, you must never get to Lagos in one year. Because he knew my family is in Lagos. And the farm is supposed to be between Abekuta and Shagam. He said, I said, sir, now, this is what he told me. And that's what I want to tell you. He said, there is no successful absentee farmer. That's not my word. That is Baba's word. He said, there is no successful absentee farmer. Me, I now took it up. I said, you know what? My experience now has shown that there is no successful absentee businessman. I can stand here to tell you that business is good. But you know what? In the last 12 years of my being in the business world in Nigeria, you don't, know, you want, you don't want to know how much money I have lost. Let me assure you of something. In the first 13 months, of my starting business after I left banking industry, I lost close to a hundred million naira. Yeah. <laughs> I can share it with you here. I can share it with you because now, I mean, it's like, I mean, by providence, by luck, by hard work, by God, one has been able to get over it. My first house was on the highland. We sold in order to liquidate a, a, a loan. Of course, I forgot to tell my wife before we did it all. We sold that property. My first house was on the highland. But we had to sell. All right? Have I told you that the business world is easy? No, I've not said so. But what I'm telling you is, you know what? Whether you like it or not, if you want to make it, it is a world you have to play in. So, like Baba told me in 2011, that's what I'm going to tell you. There is no successful absentee businessman. Whatever you want to do, the first thing is knowledge, idea. You must know how that business works. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, let's give Mr. Wale Uyeneko a, a big round of applause. <laughs> Thank you very, very much, sir. And um, is there anyone that has questions again? No questions. Well, I'll have questions, but if I decide to ask that question, we'll not live here today, sir. But I'll, I hope you are still around, sir. Oh, please, uh, I'll indulge you five minutes. But before you leave, sir, I'd like to invite Mrs. Um, Ayolani. Okay. Uh, my Oga has to leave now. You will have a question. Can you make it brief? One minute. All right, then. Good morning, all protocol observed. Um, sir, must a business go into loan? And if not, can one survive, maybe piecemeal, gradually, gradually get it to where you are going to? Thank you. As a matter of fact, God bless you for that question. Maybe I didn't even say it. Do not ever, 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 ever start big. Do not ever, ever, ever start big. If your potential, okay, is a hundred million, start with one million. Don't be in a hurry. Start with one million. When we acquired, listen to me, when we acquired six acres, that is 36 plots of land, and we are to start. And I said, you know what, gentlemen, what we're going to do? We're going to start with, you know how many, how many acres we start with? One plot. One acre, and the ratio. One plot. Uh -huh. It is because I know that, you see, it depends on the kind of car you drive to determine the kind of shock absorber that you have in your car. Uh -huh. Okay? 
if I lose investment in that one plot, do you, want, do you understand what I'm saying? I can still, ah, okay, my shock absorber is still good. I can still dance around and say, okay. But if I had gone ahead and say, wow, I'm going to start. As I'm talking to you, this, all these ones I'm texting you now, we're just occupying two acres of, now, even now. Even now. Ah, bros, you have to take it one step at a time. You've got to understand where you are first. Don't, don't, the challenge most of us we have is that we peep too much through the window to see what our neighbors are doing. Most of the time, your neighbors don't tell you their orientation. They don't tell you their motivation, so you don't know their destination. You don't know what they have gone through. A lot of people will come and meet you. Say, I want to go to business. Ah, yeah, come. It's good. A lot of times, they won't tell you the downside of that business. And you just took the dip. Ah, it's wonderful. I love this, my race. Yoruba say, you know, you cannot jump into, you can't start, see, if you want to swim, you cannot start from the deep. Start from the shallow area. So that when, you are, when you are sinking, you quickly rush back. That is the idea. That is the idea. So that you quickly rush back. Thank you. Okay. So on that issue that you mentioned the other time, hmm, see, uh, that AIT stuff. Maybe my bank was one of those. And maybe I was part of that. Bro, I don't want to do my father. I beg you, do not start with a no. Do not. See, no matter. I no, no, no. Thank you very much, sir. Please uh, still stay around. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Olani, can you please come forward? She's one of our honorary guests, one of our wives. Okay, okay, so she will do us the honor okay. of giving you a small token from us. <laughs> Thank you very much, ma'am. So, kindly present it to Good afternoon. Uh, good morning, sirs and ma. On behalf of Eco Boys High School Students Association, Eco E89, appreciation that was presented to Mr. Wale Oyeneko in recognition of your presence as a guest speaker. 
at the 2023 Business Conference, June 15th to 16th. Thank you very much, Ma. Thank you very much, sir. We quite appreciate your time and the lecture. I hope when we call on you again, you will be ready to um, oblige us with your presence. <laughs> so, as we move forward, sir, I would like to call on one of our own to introduce the next speaker, and that's in the person of a Korean Dr. Rafael Akogbe to introduce the next speaker. And while that is going on, we can always move to the back to have one or um, tea because we won't be having a tea break. Thank you very much. It's not easy, me person just call to I mean to come to this, uh, you know, uh, high platform. Uh, up school. I am highly privileged to be amongst very great-minded people here. And uh, in fact, my heart is shake when uh, President tell me, say, I go do I say, wait, I won't talk before these guys. Yeah. You know, but I want to thank God for the, the because this conference is a huge success already. And uh, Mr. Wale just left. In fact, I will never forgive myself if I didn't come to this place. And uh, those people that, you know, maybe for one reason or the other, they are not here. I think, let us try and see how we can make this material to be available for them. So that is, if possible, I'm talking about the soft copy of the material of uh, the presentations that we're having here. Particularly the one that was just uh, delivered. Now, I think, you know, the man was actually speaking to me, really, because... Um, Many people have actually failed, you know, because they are starting wrong. And this particular conference is not really meant for a particular profession. It is meant for all profession. And the man, you know, spoke into my own particular area, which I have really picked up. And uh, it's so unfortunate that he has left, but I will try and see I'm going to get his contact. I mean, for me to get, uh, you have it. Okay, thank you very much. So, uh, do we have our next uh, uh, speaker around? Okay, okay. So, I will just quickly go through the profile of our next speaker. And please, I want to just uh, admonish us that, you know, uh, let us just pay rapt attention to whatever that is going to be taught here. Because uh, whether you like it or not, you are a student, no matter how old you are right you are a student here somebody coming up here is a master in whatever is going to discharge here and is going to give us what we need so i want to appreciate you know the present executive of uh, you know e89 for this wonderful you know program that they have just i think you know is really going to linger in our memory the president i want to really appreciate you and every other executive so let's put our hands together. Thank you very much for this. Also, before I introduce you, sir, you know, uh, there are people, of course, let me know that there are people. There's someone I also want to really appreciate here who has really tried. I know this must have been done before now. That is the person of our past president, uh, a Korean Sunday, Ojo. Let's really appreciate him. Ja, ja, ja. Twali, baba. Hello. Is it sometimes when you see Mushi guys, you won't even recognize them outside? You know, I mean, the way we package ourselves now, you know, Yoruba will always say that I didn't know it could do near Some people never believe that things, you know, glamorous can come from Mushi. And I have met a lot of Moonshine, you know, products, and we are one of them. I remember those days when we are, you know, at school, at least. When this guy entered, the next thing that came into my mind was that, man, this bad guy, don't enter this place, you know. <laughs> I could remember that time. He's a big boy now. I mean, I'm talking of uh, Ayobami, you know. Very bad boy, you know, that time. <laughs> I still remember that time when we, when we still used to go to disco, you know, whatever stuff, you know. 
we'll go to Ayo's house. You know, there is this, um, uh, uh, yeah, this guy that married, um, uh, was it Whitney Olsen? Whitney Olsen that time. Bobby Brown. Yeah. You know that kind of dance? Let me not fall down, you know. <laughs> you know, that time I will be teaching us and stuff like that. And I just want to bless God today that, you know, all of us are daddies and grandfathers and, you know, we are doing well. And this program definitely is going to launch a lot of us into the realm of, you know, uh, greatness. That is what I believe. Because coming here with what I've had, I think I appreciate that. Sorry I'm taking much of our time. Let me use this honor to introduce our next keynote speaker. That is in the person of uh, Mr. Wasiu A. Amao. He has BSc, MBA, and ACIIN. Mr. Wasiu A. Amao is a native of Oyo State in Nigeria. Born about six decades ago. Ah, bros, Ekbeleza, you know. And grew up in Lagos. He holds a first degree in actuarial science and the, at, from the University of Lagos, Akoka, Yaba, Lagos, and a master degree in business administration and financial management from the Lagos State University, Ojo. He is an associate member of the Chartered Insurance Institute of Nigeria. He is currently pursuing MSc in risk management and insurance at Joseph Ayo Babalola University in Ikeji, Arakeji, Oshun State, Nigeria. It's also a seasoned facilitator with some insurance professional institution in Nigeria and a faculty officer with the West African Insurance Institute, the Gambian. He has over three decades of practical exposure in life assurance administration, pensions, project strategic and enterprise risk management, and have traveled beyond the African continent in the course of administering life assurance policy. I think uh, I will hold your tail before you go to, from this place today. He has served in various capacity in various organizations, Great Nigerian Insurance PLC, Linkage Assurance, Tajarin Life, False Bank Nigerian Insurance, UNIC, Old Mutual Life Assurance, and Hess Life Assurance Limited, respectively. Furthermore, he was the pioneer head of technical operation in some of the company mentioned above. Wow. His last post of call is Air of Life, Heirs of Life in Assurance Limited. Our next speaker is going to speak on risk management and importance of insurance to SMEs. Permit me to use this beautiful platform to present to you Mr. Wasiu A. Amao. Let's put our hands together for him. Let's just keep clapping for him because this is an embodiment of knowledge and we have to really honor him. Thank you very much for coming, sir. Thanks, sir. In Domino, uh, good morning, colleagues. I'm delighted to be in our group. Um, let me, let me seek permission of the ESCO to stand on the existing protocols because if I'm to state it, I'm sure I won't get it right. Let me also seek permission of the house to say that I have not come to teach, but just to rub minds. The previous speaker have actually set the pace, so my job should be easy. I think in the next 15 minutes or so, I should be done. I didn't know I would end up as an insurance practitioner. My first jump in 1981 was uh, in medicine. And that is now history. And incidentally, just like the man said, this issue of continuity or succession, four of my children are actually engineering graduates. So it's only the last one who says she wants to do insurance. Maybe she should venture into insurance uh, set up now, maybe I'll have a successor. But insurance is something that we need as a human being, as a business entity, as a business entity. And it's something that we've never taken serious. 
I recall my family, my family house is just behind the street where the former speaker mentioned. I had a car, and the car was involved in an accident. So it was a day to a layer. I've got, I was returning from my site. I normally do a layer with my late mother in that idiot. So I was rushing down. I need to be with mama tomorrow. Then very close to my house, a truck ran to me by the driver's side. Boah! So I managed to come out alive. I parked the car. The, my uncle, my late uncle, happens to be a mechanic. He looked at it and he was surprised after one week the, the car was back on the road. He said, Wasil, how did you do it? I said, I have comprehensive insurance. In fact, today he never understood what I said. And that is to tell you the beauty of insurance. Let me ask, how many of us have motor insurance? <laughs> motor, motor. Yeah, motor. Yeah, motor. Ah. Yeah. No, I said motor insurance. All right, okay. All right. Third party is not a crime. Hello? Third party is not a crime. How many of us have third party? All right. Sir, have you ever read the policy? The policy document? No, have you ever read it? Yeah. Those of us who have comprehensive, no, not you. Okay, have you read the policy document, sir? Okay, do we know the implication of putting a car on the road without insurance cover? That is two fifty thousand dollar fine, or one year imprisonment, or both. So if you, if you have a car and it's not insured, just take, make it one of the takeaways from this gathering. If you are caught. Is it a two fifty thousand naira fine, or one year imprisonment, or both? Go and check the the Nigerian Insurance Act, two thousand and three. Okay, that is just to set the ball rolling. So let, let's let's move on. So we have to look at insurance and SME. Fortunately, the bulk of the job has been cleared. So for the over, for for today's talk. We we'll look at overview of insurance. The SMEs, I'm happy that has been done. Insurance protection for SMEs, I will want us to take note of this. The challenges confronting the two organizations, for that of the SMEs, it has been done. So my job is actually made much more easier. So I'll just take a look at summary. We'll conclude. I'll leave you with some recommendations. All right. When it comes to insurance, what comes to mind? Protection. You see that umbrella, be it rain, be it sun, you are, you are covered, you are shielded, you don't feel the pain, and you move. You go to where you want to go, you get what you want to get. Actually. So when it comes to insurance, what should be in your mind is protection. And I need to sound this morning. Insurance is something you buy when you don't need it. Am I communicating? It is something that you have to buy when you don't need it. But the day the benefit will come, you'll be amazed. Like the issue of my car, I have used that car and insured it comprehensively in the first 10 years. You know, when you are just starting, you need something rugged. So when I wanted to buy a car, <laughs> just like this, my, uh, my guy said, why do you venture into SME? To make ends meet. In most cases, you don't know your potentials or you don't know you have a need until when that inconvenience comes. In 2000, I think 2007, there was a change of management in my office. I was using a car. So when the new management came, they said, oh, they don't give cars to back end employees, they give cars to uh, marketers. So my car was withdrawn. You know, South, South Africans, all these white men, they can be crazy. If they want to do something, they don't care about the pain that they are inflicting. So they took the car away from me. Now Ramadan was coming. I needed to reach out to my mom. 
I took my first daughter. We went to make purchases. So we used, I was using public transportation. We got to Alaji Lassisi Junction, which Imam mentioned. And there was something like civil commotion. The police and the area boys. In that place, is very close to Akala. So we managed, we escaped. We got to Amodi Street. But I have not been able to give the old woman all she will need for Ramadan. So the following weekend, I took my second daughter. We went. It was the same experience. This time, 1 p.m. in the afternoon. Then when I got to our house at Amodi Street, I said, come on. My father never had a car. But in his days, I never went through all these sufferings. I look at my daughter. I look at the experience of the previous week. They were sweating. And I said, oh, Wasi, you need a car. Then I recall when I was in Namibia, 2006, I saw a very small car, portable. And you know, Toyota products are very durable. So I went for, to, I went for Toyota, Toyota Yaris. As the car was being introduced to Nigeria, I was among the people who bought it. I've used that car for the first 10 years. No claim, no accident. I thought I was wasting money on comprehensive insurance. So I changed the car. I, I'm sorry, I changed my insurer, but I didn't change the comprehensive cover. The 11th year, I had an accident claim. The 12th year, I had an accident. I mean, the 13th year, I had an accident. So please, you can, if you want to reason with me, I say, I have insured for 10 years. No claim. Now, 11, 12, 13, the claims were coming and coming. You can't tell when risk will happen. So please don't toy with insurance. Let's move on, sir. So what, uh, what do we by, mean by insurance? I'll look at insurance from two perspectives. Number one, the first bulleted point and the last bulleted points. I can look at insurance as a means of managing risk. And I need to distinguish with us risk and uncertainty. They are not the same. When we say risk, what comes to our mind is something negative. Am I communicating? Risk is not about negativities, no. When the positive side, you know, we, our mind will go to the side. Risky ventures will yield very high profits. They are always very lucrative. But when the other side comes, that is when we now remember risk. For you to distinguish risk from uncertainty, there are two things. One, risk can be quantified. You can attach a value to it. I have this car for five million. If this car is lost, five million is gone. So you can attach a value to it. That is one feature of a risk. The second is that you can attach probability of occurrence to it. Oh. What is the possibility that I will lose this car? Maybe I use it from office to work and back to my house. Risk of accident, maybe 30 out of 100 cases. So you can attach possibility of occurrence of a negative uh, scenario to it. But when it comes to uncertainty, you can't attach possibility of occurrence. You can't attach a value until after the event has crystallized. Oh, I have lost 10 million. So insurance is about risk management. Uncertainty cannot be managed by insurance. So let's distinguish between risk and uncertainty. Any affair in which you can't attach a value and you can't put a possibility of occurrence of a negative affair to it is uncertainty. But where you can attach a value, you can also say, oh, give and take. 20 out of 100 cases, I make a loss. 80, I'll make a gain. That is a risk. So risk insurance is about a means of managing risk. There are so many methods. You can accept a risk. You can avoid, if possible. You can transfer. and. Uh, you can avoid, you can control. We'll see how these are done. On the other hand, you can also look at insurance as a contract, contract agreement, written agreement between two parties. I, as a as person who wants insurance,
compensated. As a contract, a written agreement between two parties, the person who wants to buy the insurance and the person who wants to sell the insurance, should something happen, compensation will be paid within a particular period of time. There are four things that constitute an agreement. Offer and acceptance, uh, payment of consideration, intention to create legal relationship, and capacity to enter into that contract. So uh, lawyers and businessmen will tell you more about that. So for definition, we can pick the bulleted points one and four as a means of defining insurance. So insurance is just one of the aspects of risk management that exists. Others, I think, uh, they are outside the scope of this, uh, of this discussion. OK, so in a nutshell, uh, I'll come back to this diagram at the end. This is risk management in its entirety. OK, now types of insurance. Basically, there are five types. There are some insurance companies that can only insure human beings. That is, if the person dies, they pay a claim. That is called life assurance. They can't do any of that thing. It's only life assurance. They are licensed, they are authorized to administer. So if it is about that person dying, we call it life assurance. There are insurance companies that can only insure that person in case of health, ill health or accident. That is health insurance. So. That is number two. Number three, there are insurance companies that are licensed to do property insurance. Uh, I'm happy to hear property. Example, fire insurance, burglary, uh, money insurance, marine, aviation, motor insurance, and so on. So those are property, or is it liabilities? That class is very wide, very big. That is the third. The fourth is, uh, there are composite companies. They do both life and property. I'll give you examples. If you look at Africa Alliance, Africa Alliance cannot do property insurance. If you look at Consolidated Hallmark, they cannot do life insurance. If you look at do Assurance, they can do both. Cornerstone, they can do both. So their capacities differ. And likewise, their capital base. I think I've mentioned three. Number four, there are the reinsurance companies. Their own job is to insure insurance companies. They can't insure you and I. They can't insure the public. They can only provide insurance covers for insurance companies. We call them reinsurance companies. And I think there are very few. If you, part, if you are accustomed to VI, you will see the likes of African Reinsurance Corporation, uh, Continental Reinsurance Corporation, and so on. There are very few. They are not common because they don't deal with the public. They only deal with insurance companies. And finally, we have social insurance. Uh, social insurance is insurance undertaken by the government to provide social amenities for the masses. It's not common in this part of the world. We have them in, in the advanced countries. So basically, these are the five types of insurance companies that you come across. You may also have been hearing of the likes of micro insurance companies. They also do, they, they are meant for the masses. We are the value at risk is not more than two million era. And they also do life insurance and general insurance. There are also the Takaful insurance. Uh, just to make, to give a balance to the people from the north, especially the Muslims, because they don't believe in compound interest operations. So their own is like mutual, uh, operations. So their dealings does not involve compound interest. So we have the Takaful. It's open to Muslims and non-Muslims. I need to clarify this. And it's also uh, falls into the line of life and general insurance businesses. So basically, these are the five types uh, that we come across. Okay. The, sorry, the types of insurance companies I've mentioned. In fact, this also falls in line with uh, with the types of insurance that we have. OK, next slide. Now, is insurance important? I said it earlier. I said it's something you buy at the time when you know value it. But if you decide to take a rundown, number one, 
insurance is more about protection. Protection for the family. I am here. Uh, if I die, what happens to the people I'm leaving behind? I remember when I was a staff of Great Nigeria, one man came into the office, said he wanted to buy life insurance. And we were asking him what he needed, what he needed it for. He said, I just want to leave something for my family when I am gone. So that is life insurance. Uh, we call that, uh, that, uh, that type of insurance uh, whole life assurance. Anytime he dies, we make the payment available uh, to the family. So that is protection. The same thing as we provide for your family, you take care of your properties. Um, you take a loan. When we were very small, somebody died in our area. I was living at Okuntu Street in Mushin then. The man died, and it was and the bankers came in after the burial. They took over the house and sold it off. The families were ejected. What happened? He took loan from the bank. He has not finished repayment. Debt come. But nowadays, you can take credit life for your mortgage, for your mortgage protection. When you take loan from somewhere, you take credit life. Uh, recently, I, I lost my job. I was asked to proceed on early retirement. It didn't come to me as a surprise. Because some 10 years ago, I lost a job. And it was then I realized that no job is secured. No job is safe. Please have this in mind. It, any job can come to an end at any time. So immediately I was called that, oh, they want to do restructuring. I should proceed on early retirement. Fine. I went home. I have some policies. I put a stop to two of them. I called my children. I have uh, two of them in the university. I said, come on, take your allowances. Each of them I give 30,000 Naira per month allowance. Take your allowances from March to July. After I lay in July, we sort ourselves out. If you like, finish it now. I called my wife, Madam, oh, yeah, yeah. I promised we had a long time. She's the maker now. So I just put my expenses together. My NEPA bill, I've gotten my token till December 2024, so I don't have business with NEPA. My rent, I've paid till December 2024. So I just need to relax, plan, and move ahead. So if I don't have those insurances, Will I be able to take those immediate decisions? I'm still, I'm still having issues with my former employer for one reason. He asked me to proceed on early retirement, and I'm asking for 200 million dollar compensation. I stated my reasons. Tony Elumelu met with me on Africa Day, May 25. He was just shaking his head as I was putting my demands on the table. Sir, your man even wants me to go. I'm even tired of working for you, but by virtue of what happened, this is my demand. We are still on it. So you can take insurance for any type of protection that you want. Just consult the experts. Tax management. We used to hear of tax avoidance, tax evasion. Are they the same? The finance experts are among us who tell us tax avoidance is legal, it's allowed. Tax evasion is illegal. One can go to jail for it. Just find out what is the difference between the both. What I want you to take away from here is that you can use insurance to manage your tax. That is tax avoidance. It is allowed. If you want to know more, I think uh, Mr. Joe and others are here. So consult them. Target savings, you can have in mind. The next five years, I want to have so much. I work towards it. You can use insurance to plan for it. Loan procurement, if I have insurance policy, life policy, I can use it as collateral security to obtain loan. And if I'm taking a loan elsewhere, loss of job, in case of debt, and so on. Educational planning, if I have a child today, and I can say that, okay, in the next 16 years, this, this child should be in the university. I can plan the university education of that child now. Even pay for it, insure it, and put my mind off. Just waiting for 16 years to come, the insurance company will fund the education of that child. Employment generation. Insurance companies provide employment for the masses. They contribute to the gross development of the country. Uh, they get involved in social responsibility, and also they are involved in pension administration. The list is endless, but these are the important ones. All right.
the SMEs, this job is actually has made easy for me, so I'll just run down. Next slide. Okay, so what are SMEs? According to the central bank, these are small companies that have a annual turnover of not more than 500,000. And I think uh, the last time we took a count, we have about 41 million of them. You know, Mr. Wale said they constitute three quarter. They are privately owned institutions. And they can be classified into micro, employing one to nine people, uh, small enterprise between 10 and 49, and medium uh, from 50 to about 249. Examples are abound everywhere. So we don't need to run through that. We've had uh, a comprehensive lecture on that, uh, mostly by Kama, the company's analyzed matters. At. Please, you can't venture into a business without having an idea of business law. Business law, of which contract is an element of. Mr. Wale mentioned something. He said uh, he, I, he wanted to raise a loan. And I think some people provided them with facilities and said, oh, at the time of harvest, we will negotiate how you repay. Please, negotiate everything up front. Negotiate everything up front. If I'm going to an area where I don't know and I pick Okada, Okada, I'm going to so also place. He tell you, he will charge me. We will agree the price before takeoff. Otherwise, by the time you get it, the guy will charge, ah, Okada, 1,000 naira. And you know Okada's. This is where you are going to. They will now. Ah. So please, any agreement you are signing with anybody, sign, make it clear from the onset. Don't wait till the end of the journey before you now ask, uh, how much is my money? No, it, it's, it's not the best. So please, you need to know about karma. I'll give you an example. The chairman of my company asked me to proceed on early retirement. I was happy, I left. So when they asked me to file my exit letter, and I said, oh. By virtue of the meeting held and instruction of the chairman, and it was like, no, remove that paragraph. And I said, they now realize that they have breached the provisions of karma. And that is where I'm, I'm asking for 200 million naira compensation. So please, you can't do without business law if you are going to business, however small it may be. Then something like karma, you need to be aware of it. Please, you can download it on, the, on Google. It's there. It's much more easier. Then there are regulatory bodies. Uh, the, the list are not that visible, but one of them is the Central Bank of Nigeria. And there's also something about business. Please, don't think that it is only one regulator that have, more, that have power over you. Please, erase that. For example, I come from the insurance industry. We are licensed and regulated by the National Insurance Commission. But it is not only NICOM that has power over us. CBN has, Inland Revenue has. So please, your license, you should operate beyond your license to operate. All regulators must be respected. Standard Organization of Nigeria and what have you. It's important. All regulators have power over you, they can shut down your business. I've seen, I've seen Inland Revenue shut down bank branches. So they don't, wait for, they don't have to wait for CBN to do that. Next slide. So importance of SME, I think uh, we've run through this with the former speaker. Uh, they create employment for the populace with very low capital. They provide training for entrepreneurs and also make a skill acquisition possible. They are the engine room for development of any economy. Just recapping what Mr. Wally has said, they contribute to the economy in terms of output of goods and services, develop a pool of skilled and semi-skilled workers, and provide vehicle for reducing income disparities. One thing we used to, in the days of Nubifi and Asbifi, I started from the banking industry. We used to say somebody in Lagos should not be earning as somebody in Oshobo. Uh, or uh, somebody is shaky. So, but I think um, SMEs are trying in this area to make sure they bridge that gap. So they provide opportunities for developing and adapting uh, uh, appropriate technology. All this have uh, been said before, they are closer to the customers. You know, all these big banks may not have time for you. 
that they may have time for bigger establishments, but SMEs have that advantage. They will call you, talk to you one on one, and they are very quick in taking decisions. Unlike bigger organizations, they are flexible. We are the likes of Union Bank will not uh, will not answer you. You find SMEs coming to your attention, taking your personal needs into considerations. So, and also they take and take they take advantage of what is available in the market. So it's even easier to link their staff to the corporate objective of the companies, and communication is very very easy, easily attained. So. Which insurance products will you recommend for SMEs? Mr. Wade said something which I like. Separate the entity from yourself. Am I communicating? He said, I think he said, Isaac, am I right, sir? Isaac as a person should differ from Isaac Enterprises. It is important. There should be that line of demarcation. So let's take a look at, I think I have like 10 products I'll be recommending here. Number one, pension. When you provide for others, remember to provide for yourself. You won't be able to work forever. There will be, if you get to a stage when you'll be tired, I can't work again, others should take over. It is compulsory by law to provide pension for your employees, even if they are three. It is also important you provide pension for yourself while you are strong, when the bones are still very strong. So it is compulsory. Group life insurance, also compulsory. What is group life insurance? To take care of debt in service of your employees. You know, if you have a loyal employee who has been working with you for a long time and the guy dies, the council will demand that, let me give something to the family. Government has made it easy. Pension Reform Act 2014 has provided that items one and two there are compulsory. So as you are providing for your employees, include yourself. Somebody was asking me, I facilitated, facilitated last Wednesday, and somebody was asking me, eh, so if I have life insurance and my wife does not know, when I die, what will happen? I said, allow your family to know that you have so that when you are dead they will take the benefits it's for them and the guy said ah if they know the value is high they can kill me <laughs> no it's a fact it has happened it has happened but it, it is something you can't do without look let, let, let us look at the banks for example in the I, I was a staff of i was a staff of union bank in 19 in 1984, first bank was the, was the bank that built high rise. The first bank to build high rise on the, on the island was first bank. It is that golden building. Which money did they use to build it? Money of people who are, who are late and whose family does not know they have money in that bank. Look at Union Bank. That place was formerly the public building. For those of us who know they demolish it and build the high rise. That is something in stories. Look at Great Nigeria Insurance on Martin Street. Where is the money? Money of policyholders who are dead and whose family does not know that they have insurance. So why allow this money to be wasted? Let your family benefit. That is it. Then um, group life, health insurance. I said health insurance is about health. It's about when somebody gets involved in an accident. It is different from when somebody dies. When somebody dies, it's mortality. When somebody is ill, it is called health, morbidity. You won't be, you won't be strong forever. In fact, by the time you attain age 50, 55, the bones get weakened. You discover that you can't do as you used to do. There was a day when I was with FBN. We started San Lam Life at Makati Street. On a weekend, I went to office that day. I took my son, who was just in GSS 1. There was no light, so we have to climb the seven-story building. By the time we got to the seventh floor, I was very tired. And this boy was still... <laughs> I looked at <laughs> No, I thought probably because it was in a military school, Nigerian Navy Secondary School. 
But the fact remains that I couldn't do, I couldn't climb that seventh floor as he has done. That is it. You won't be strong forever. So provide for that age when you need to take some break, to take some rest. Health insurance is also compulsory. If you're an entrepreneur, it is compulsory you provide for your employees. If you are a hairdresser, it is compulsory you provide for the apprentice learning under you. You may not know. The day somebody who is learned will come and make a claim, there will be trouble. So as an SME operator, it is compulsory you provide health insurance facility for your employees. And as you are doing for your employees, don't forget to include yourself. Keep person insurance. If you have a company, you will identify one or two people whose presence are whose presence actually determine the fortune of that company. It could be you, and it could be you and somebody else. So you need to put key person insurance in place such that when that person leaves or he dies, insurance company will compensate you to get a replacement, to get and train a replacement. That money doesn't come to you. It goes to the SME for you to find and train a successor. That is the importance of key person employee. Their motor insurance, we said it. Uh, unfortunately, the price of the premium for motor insurance has gone up. As at 1st January this year, third party motor insurance was raised to 15,000 naira from 5,000 and comprehensive 5% of the value of the car. But one beauty of it is that it was extended to enable you to take your car, to use your car within the West African sub-region without taking additional insurance. It's important. I will strongly recommend you have a comprehensive cover in place. I'll give you an example. Uh, on my phone, I can show you. Uh, one of my children took my car. I actually left a Lexus Jeep for them to use. Then I needed to be in school, Ikejera Keji, for an exam, so I dropped the Prado. And I don't like going about with key. So the keys of everything, my wife, my wife have the spare key. So one of my children just took the car. I have disconnected the battery. She connected the battery, boom, she took the car. Unfortunately, she bashed another car. And my wife was just crying. This car was 25, no, 30 million naira. It's my company's official car. So the consolation I gave my de or my de myself was that one. Was anybody involved? Any death? They said no. Fine. I felt good. Then I said, if, it, if, if I do drive, it may happen to me. But what I, was not what I was not happy with was that she took the car without my her. So if not for insurance cover, I will not be able to put that car. It cost over 700000 naira to fix. It's just the front to fix it. The full lights, I can tell you, were a lot of money. Just before the accident, somebody bashed the, the rear mirror. I mean, the rear... No, not the bumper, the light. Just to one pair, we spent over 70,000 naira to fix it. If there is no comprehensive cover, will I still be able to use the car? I brought the car here today. So please, it may be expensive, but the benefits are there. So you need to have motor insurance. And as Mr. Wally advised, if the car is not going to be uh, productive, don't go into it. These days, you don't use car for pleasure. No, no, no. You use it as necessity. You know, I was fortunate to buy fuel before the increments. I used to fill two of my vehicles with 15,000 naira each. When I went this last week, 15,000 rose to 40. Two of, the, two, two of, of those vehicles cost me 80,000 80, naira. Mm. Yeah. My Lexus, 37,000. The Prado, uh, 40,000. So I spent roughly 80,000 to fill two cars. Now tell me, can I use them anyhow? as I used to No, But whether you like it or not, comprehensive cover is a necessity. 
So it's important. Number six, cyber security. Do you have customers? Do you have sensitive information of those customers in your database? They need to be protected. And you know, th there's something about all these people. If we, I think they started with a uh, virus. I want to protect the data. I will now, I will now put virus to protect it. Then later, people now started using the virus to attack and destroy. It is now a cyber attack. They will hack into your system. And the next thing is ransom, bring money. Or, or you have to know in your database who will expose his information to the public. You will have to do what? If you have insurance, it will take care of those expenses. It's important because your customer's sensitive, private and sensitive information deserves protection. Next slide, please. OK. General or public liability. General, this uh, have this have to do with properties generally. And it's also compulsory by law. Should, should, should anybody come into your premises, sorry, public liability, come into your premises and get injured? It is your responsibility to take care of such person. And you can't tell when it can happen. There was a time, there was a day some years back, there was a heavy rain. And on the third mainland bridge, one of the billboards fell, damaged people's cars. The company that hosted that have to pay for it, that hosted the advert have to pay for it. If they have public liability, it will take care of those claims. The same thing, if you, if you are an hotelier, you need this. If you have a building used by the public, you need, in some other environments, we call it employer's liability. You know, you may be working in a factory now, and you, could, you can sustain some health injuries, which may not be apparent for now, maybe in the next 10, 20, or 30 years. By then, you've be, you have become very weakened. You are an old person. If this cover is in place, that ex-staff can come back and make a claim. We call it, in Nigeria, it's workman compensation. In other environments, it's called employer's liability. Over here, we have the National Social Insurance Trust Fund managing this. You need it as an employer. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, uh, no, sorry. I think there is something I missed. Sorry, there is a mix of something. Let's go back to the other slide. There is, I think there is, okay. All right, sorry. Workmen also is about accident or risk on the job or in the course of employment. If I step out of my house today, I'm going to work. And I, and I enter the company staff bus. If anything happened, motor insurance does not cover me, but workman compensation will cover because it was in the course of employment or on the job. There's also a mix up somewhere. I missed something. Uh, there, there, was a mix, there was a mix up. If I get it, I will, I, I will bring this out. There was a merger somewhere, and one of the, one of the covers gets mix up. Okay. All right. Let's go. I'll check that and get back to us. All right. What are the challenges confronting insurance companies? There are so many, but I know if I want to ask some of us, it's a matter of trust. Insurance don't pay claims. Am I correct? Uh -huh. Insurance don't pay claims. But it is not, sir? But it is not so in some other cases. I'll give you a very recent experience. I had, I delivered a lecture with the Nigerian Insurance Association last week. Mutual benefits actually led some other companies. And this guy, a colleague of mine, lost his wife. The claim was, I mean, the group life was supposed to be paid. He reported to me, said, hey, okay, I will report to NICOM. These people are not paying my claim. Then I got across to all the companies involved. You know, fortunately, uh, there is no company I step into, no insurance company in Nigeria, where I won't find somebody that I know because I teach insurance in the industry. So I got across to all the companies and 
the first company to respond was San Lam, First Bank Life, said they don't have documents which wish to make payments. Which documents? And they told me in particular that KYC, know your customer, and a means of identifying the beneficiary. So I called him, cousin, do you have international passport? I said yes. You have NIN. Okay. You just need the two. Snap the two together. What about your NEPA bill? He said they use token. Yes, I said your NEPA token, the last token you bought. Scan it. Make it available to all the companies. That was on a Saturday. Do you know that by Monday, I was still running after this guy to snap all these documents by WhatsApp and send to all the insurance companies. He's the one complaining he has not been paid. And you just need these two documents. Means of identity, then means of verifying where you reside. I spent the whole Saturday, Sunday, Monday running after him. And unfortunately, he's a claims manager in an insurance company. He pays other people's claims. So you can see, at times, it is not even about the insurance companies. It's also about the claimants. Okay. All right. Okay. So this is the challenge, the issue of trust. And that was why I make, made it bold. So there are others, like uh, risk profiling. The insurance companies even knows your need to advise you on which product you, want, you should buy. And the products, how is even addressing individuals' needs? Uh, advertisements. Are you conversant with the advertisements of insurance products? We are not doing much in this regard. I'm part of it. Insurance knowledge by customers. I, was, I asked now, if you don't have insurance on your motor, what are the implications? I couldn't get an answer. And I said, 250,000 fine, or one year in imprisonment, or both. So what are we doing in that regard? Distribution channels. How, through which medium can I buy insurance? Do I need to go to an insurance company before I can buy? Low public confidence, issue of trust. Adverse effect of inflation. I'm buying life insurance of 1 million naira for my family's benefit. 1 million naira today, will it, will it be the same 1 million naira in the next five years? What do I need to do? Issue, issue of inflation. Then adaptation to the technical, uh, technological advancement. The banks are trying. They have moved ahead of the insurance companies in terms of uh, making use of IT facilities. Then investment performance on the premiums collected. The law allows insurance companies to take premium and invest. Um, I think one thing I used to do is, our real estate people, I used to advise insurance companies, don't invest in residential real estate, rather go for commercial and industrial layouts. So for the SMEs, Mr. Wale has said a lot, but I think financial difficulties, he mentioned it, uh, lack of accessibility to large customers, the, the cost of operation, difficulties gaining customers' trust, high cost of production, thank God he discussed all this, inability to endure prolonged period of crisis. Can they sustain it? Most SMEs die within a short period. Uh, access to have more difficulty in accessing technology. Economic issues, they are there. Uh, and taxes, taxation. You see, tax have the effect of eroding your income. So you need, and it's compulsory, you must pay. So the way you need to manage your insurance, you also need to manage your tax as SMEs. Look at government people, you know them, when they come around, billboard, advertisement, blah, 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 they lock up your office, they lock up your shop. So all this. <laughs> then, does SMEs have facilities for research and developmental activities. And in most cases, they are easily wound up or acquired by bigger organizations. So recommendations, I think I have, I have more than 10. Put all necessary insurance covers in place, and particularly as a package policy. As a package policy, just one policy that will address all your insurance needs. That's the meaning of the word package. As we talk about enterprise risk management, enterprise-wide, so just one policy. Then take care of personal line insurance cover for the protection of yourself and family. Prepare for old age in terms of business survival or continuity. 
prepare for pensions and disability at old age. Uh, do same for long-serving employees to, to enable them reap benefits of loyalty to your enterprise. Take advantage of services of micro insurance companies. If you can't afford the cost of that of a bigger or, or a bigger insurance, conventional insurance company, there are micro insurance companies. There are micro pension uh, provisions in the pension act. There, there is also micro health insurance provision in the health insurance act. So take advantage of this, all these micro, micro, micro organizations. They will fit it into your SME. So use insurance products to reduce your tax. We call it tax avoidance. Engage in social media interactions for advertisement at reduced cost. Then number eight, comply with extant laws. Please respect all regulators, not just regulators relating to your line of business. Be a good project manager. Uh, I think you also need a knowledge of project management. It's important. Look at the Lagos by the Agri uh, Express Road. It's been on for more than 16 years now. That is not project management. A pro project management, we have a time. This is what we want to do within social time, and this is the cost, and so on. So please take time to look at what project management is. So be a project manager. Do, we call something DIY, do it yourself, be involved. Mr. Wale said there can't be an absent, uh, what, how did he frame it? Absentee, aha. So please, you put in a business, you have to be involved. You have to be fully part of it. And I said, okay, don't use your personal or life savings for business accomplishment. Well, he has uh, taught us, but one thing is that, please, your life savings, you need to manage it. Your life savings. Because if anything goes down with that business, if anything happens with that business, you go down with it. And that's why I said, I recommend, the opinion is now ours. Take, take a loan to run a business. If you look at the cost of capital, the interest you have on that loan, you won't allow that business to run down. So your personal savings remain intact. But it's a subject of debate. debate. I leave that to you. All right. Uh, I said I have not come to teach. So I leave just uh, this sign of reference to you. Then next. So questions, comments. Thank you for listening. Questions, comments? Okay, let's take comments first. Sir, let's take comments first. Kindly moderate. Okay, no problem. Um, questions? Now we just take about two. Comments. Let's see. Okay. Comments. Comments, first. comments before Comments? Comments? Questions? So let us, okay, we'll entertain five. So let's take it one by one. Sorry, please. Uh, you can take my number from Ojo after the class. Sorry, after the session, so you can reach me there. You can time. even give us your number now. Everybody write it down. So, okay. Osho Kuno. <laughs> All right, 0803, wow. if you want to write it down. 0803. Hello, everyone. Hold on. 0803. Yeah. So, 076. Yeah, I'm a. Uh, 7819. 0803, 076, 7819. You can call me. But once it is 9 p.m., I don't pick calls again. <laughs> All right, sir. So what is your company that your, your insurance company doing to make sure, you know, the bad eggs in the industry are fit, fit out? You know, because I have a personal experience. The insurance man in my area, that man, you know, he does go all these irrigating vehicles, you understand? And he's just doing it for, you know, for some months. And, you know, he will set the... It's an insider. You, you know, you have his claim, you know, complete with the with the other staff in the industry. So, you know, they, 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 are, they are killing the industry. And when you now, for person that now insure his property or himself or any other thing, by the time you now came for you know for claim, they will be giving you excuses. Go and bring this, go and bring that. What is your industry, you know, doing to make sure all those things are not you know. All right, thank you very much. Um, there is Sir, no. Can I? Can I? Can we take the questions together? Okay. Then you can now. So if, or if is, I, it, is it okay? I'm, oh, if you can write it down, write them down. Okay, okay. let's take. You take your questions. 
You can answer that one for them. Okay, sir. Hello. One house, one house. Hello. You see, fraud is fraud, and it is illegal. If that guy is caught, he will go to jail. You get it? I'll give you one instance. There, is, there, was, this insur uh, there was this vehicle insured with more than one insurance companies. Then shortly after, claim was made, all true. That person didn't know that there's a claim database. So as this insurance company pays, they file a return. So insurance, the insurance company now wanted to take a look at it. They, they have all the information. And while they were still working on it, an incident happened somewhere outside Nigeria involving the same person. So they now send a tag, you know, the way, we, the way we tag ourselves. They didn't know that insurance is worldwide. The person was picked in one of the West African countries, now on that trial. So fraud is fraud. If that person is caught, he goes to jail. Uh, insurance is not about that. No, it's not about that. I'm also, I'll give you an instance. Somebody was sent, somebody went to, so, yes, oh, until the person is caught, you won't know it's a thief. You know, money, and it's like money, but I will. There was a claim. Somebody did that. So, and he, I lost a just went to check. And this guy felt like, ah, no. He now brought, he now went to the site of the burnt vehicles. He asked them to remove the engine. They cleaned the engine. He checked the engine number, the chassis number and everything, and discovered it was different from what was in charge. That claim was not paid. So until they are caught, we wouldn't know. So once they, once they are caught, they go to jail. Thank you, sir. Uh, during the course of your lecture, you told us something, and I'm hearing that for the first time, and that is tax avoidance. Okay. I think I'm interested. You said it is legal. Tax evasion is what is illegal. Is illegal. <laughs> so can you tell us more about it so that if tax avoidance is legal, then probably maybe I need to avoid some taxes <laughs> you avoid you don't evade uh -huh. Uh -huh. so then apart from that you talked about educational planning how do i go about it i have some kids some little kids at least that i'm looking forward to our education in the nearest future going to the university and all those stuff how do i take care of them then you talked about comprehensive life insurance for vehicles said it's better than third party and i know most of us here have third parties and that's what i've been used to so what does it cost to do a third party and uh, do you do it on all vehicles because like somebody that has a very old vehicle and you are likely or you are thinking about even changing it do you still do life or uh, comprehensive life insurance for such vehicle and uh, the other one i want to ask is uh, like on rent do you do insurance for rent like you live in a place you've been living there for some time and all of a sudden the landlord or the landlady just give you a quick notice or something like that is there any insurance that you can do on such things so that for uh, any eventuality at times they give you a time frame where you have to move out, six months so after six months you are still looking for a house you have not gotten one and you want a very good place do you do life insurance for such things? All right. Um, sorry. My guy here will address you one on one. We take it together with you because I won't be able to do much of the explanation. So, for the educational needs, which of your guys? Meet are? them. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> See my man. <laughs> so, for the educational needs, they will brief you. Now, for vehicles, I said, Comprehensive is 5% of the value of the vehicle. It covers accidental damage, fire damage, malicious damage. You park your car, by the time you get back, the following day, somebody has smashed your windscreen and so on. Malicious damage, accidental damage, but not when your tire busts you, no. So they will, they will give you all these lectures. It's 5% of the value, and every other thing associated with it. But on tax evasion, two ways. You as a person, if you have life insurance, and you pay your premium regularly. By the time you are filing your tax return, you, they, you, would, you would attach what is called life assurance premium certificate. Your tax will be reduced uh, on the average by the value of premium you paid on your insurance in a year. They will tell you more about it. As a company, 
If you pay group life for, for your employees, that will also be considered in the tax your company is supposed to pay. You get uh, relief. So as a person, you get tax relief, tax avoidance. As a company, you also get tax relief. Those are legal. But if you are to pay a tax of one naira, sorry, 100 naira, and you meet the tax officials, they say, okay, bring a five naira. We'll write the rest of that tax evasion. That is illegal. One can go to jail for that. I think that's just the brief I can make. But please, my professional colleagues, you can pay consultation fee to them. <laughs> OK. All right. Um, Okay. I'm 59. I'll be 60 in January. I'll be 60 in January. I'll be 60 in January. Because I was on the I knew it's one day that the pastor called me. I was born in Mushi, Mushalashi Street. And I spent 30 years in Mushi, then I moved to Ajegule. Those are two rough areas in Lagos. As of today, I live in Ebutemeta. So, I <laughs> think right, I, sorry. Can, I can on tell the, you. Sorry, on the issue of the rent, yes. On the issue of the rent, there is something you can do if the landlord asks you to leave. There is no insurance for that. But you can take mortgage protection. There are insurance companies that will give you facility to build house. From your pension reform act, your savings, your savings, you can raise money there for mortgage purpose then you can do credit life and so on. So if you are still working and earning salary, pension is being deducted from your salary every month, you are entitled to raise loan on it to build or to buy a house. You get it, but there's no insurance for rent. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Yes, sir. I have one simple question, and uh, it's based on my personal experience. Okay, sir. Is with one of these major insurance companies on educational planning. Okay. I remember in one of your slides, you made mention of a compulsory retirement and uh, it was faulty, so you fall back at Kama. So okay. In, 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 yes, in the situation where you have a problem with... And, and, uh, Make sure whatever I'm doing will be rounded up before next year. So after retirement, I don't want to be making payment rather than having my claim. She now told me that, ah, Ogami, GBT don't pay any insurance, you. That she can tell me that when the time comes, it will be very difficult for me to get that claim. That they are coming now easily, we are laughing and making payments. She, the person will laugh, will, she will, it will go. But when it is time for me to get that money, there will be a series of questioning. Things that were not being asked at the time of inception when we are going through the negotiation. That she would rather advise me when somebody else came for something better off then. That she would advise me, okay, monthly I can be making payment for that. That she would advise me to go into it because she knew the base value of that thing will be much, much better than what I was expecting from the insurance firm. I said, okay, no problem, I will consider that. Often at times, that guy will keep calling me because he knew that before month end, I will be making the payments. So after that due consultation and somebody that did exactly what I was doing now told me that, ah, she will advise me I should go ahead with it. Because she was equally into it. And now for her to get her claim, becomes a problem that things that were not even visible, that was not part of terms and agreement when she started, they were asking her to go and bring. And I said, okay, no problem. I decided to back out, out of it. And the guy kept calling here and there. I said, okay, no problem. I gave a flimsy excuses that I have some money to pay to the whatever, whatever. So in a nutshell, I... Apart from those things that were said, have you called the same people that, even from some of my younger ones, okay, they have a comprehensive insurance with an accident, person that was not owing premium as at that time, till now, 
were unable to get their car fixed. So I look at it when you made a reference that you've made payment consecutive for 10 years, you are not having any claim, but fortunately, 11, 12, 13, 14 years, you're having a claim. I look at it that because you are in the same field with them. So invariably, an average Nigerian, over 70% believe insurance is a fraud. So I don't know what the industry is doing into it, at least to correct that impression from people so that Nigerians can now have trust in the industry. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. You see, you and I are involved. When I came in, I asked how many of us have policies and how many of us have read them. I think I couldn't get an answer. I think I couldn't get an answer. When I asked how many of us have read the insurance policy, you are, you, all of us are guilty of it. We empower the insurance company to do all this. You get me? I'll give that example. I give that example of my car. Actually, two, I used two loans to finance that car. I took a loan from UB. I gave it to C&I uh, Leasing because I wanted a brand new car. I didn't want to Kubo. I knew that for a brand new car, I'll use it for the next five years without issues. I won't be able to use Tokumba for full one year before I'll be spending on it. So when I took the car from c &I leasing, I made part payment. I think I paid like 20, 10%. So c &I leasing funded 90%. I got the car. I gave them posited check. After one year, I was on vacation. I now took time to read the lease agreement, only to realize that those repayments were based on 100% funding. We are asked, I put 10% up front. For me to get that 90, I mean, for me to get it corrected to 90% took me another one year. If I have read it at the initial stage, there won't be that experience. That is the problem that we have. A typical insurance policy, we have six sections. One of the sections is called operative clause. One, two, heading, uh, preambles, then operative. Operative clause is about when you have a claim, what do you need to present to get your claim? So when you are told that, did you bother to even check the policy document to see whether that person is telling you the truth or not? And if there are issues, you definitely win. No insurance company nowadays wants to, wants to hear in the social media that they've been taken to court. That is negative publicity. The, share, the directors will feel concerned. I told you, I was asked to proceed on early retirement. I didn't argue. It now got to a stage. For Tony Elumelu, as busy as he is, somebody who's, I mean, who will be invited by president of international communities for a business dinner, for him to have time to call me to sit one-on-one -on -one and sit, you can imagine, because I knew they have served into my hands. You get it? So if you know what you are doing, you know what the policy is about, and you are maintaining your part of the agreement, nobody will cheat you. That's it. So please, let's take time to read. We've been taking loans from the banks. How many of us have bothered to read the terms and conditions from the bank? When they now slash the interest on you, nobody will say the banks are corrupt. But it is the insurance that will cry out. Same thing is something in the bank. I've taken bank loans before. I've never read the terms and conditions. That car I told you, I repaid the UBA portion after two years. Then they slashed me about 40,000 interest. I asked, they said, oh, I should just close so, 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 so. They, they were supposed to charge it monthly, but they now charge at the end of the year. I couldn't talk because I have not read the document. So please, let's cultivate the habit of reading. All right, next, please. Good day, sir. All right, you're My welcome. little question is, can a small scale, my name is Mr. Shoba Wali. Okay. Can a small scale business owner go for an insurance? Can a, a small scale business owner float and 
business owner yes. goes for an insurance Yes, company. you can float an insurance company. Oh. You can float. Go for an insurance company. Be insured. Yes, all these recommendations, they are for both business and for you as a person. You know, I said, provide for your employees, then provide for yourself. So the one for the company will take care of the employees, then provide for yourself. As you're even providing for your employees, include your name among them. So you need it. Every business entity needs insurance cover. Good morning, sir. Yes, sir. My name is Edward. Um, in your discussion, there is one vital point you did not mention, fidelity insurance. Okay. I okay. think it's important to SME. All right. Then also, um, you know, we have so many insurance covers. For SME, what would you, you know, suggest as the topmost three insurance cover an SME should have? All right, this is a very tough one. Uh, thank you. Fidelity insurance. I really did not give it consideration. What is it about? It's about the infidelity of your employees. So, and I think all you just need to do is uh, you have to manage that place. You don't entrust cash to people. Nowadays, there is less emphasis on interest, if I'm correct. There is less emphasis on cash at hand, cash in vault, and so on. That is one of the reasons why I've not given it consideration. This is a cashless environment, so please go with cashless environments, and you discover that at the end of the day, fidelity will either be minimal or non-existent. I remember when we started my former office, I recommended that we should have a vault. And my MD said, no, it's not going to allow cash to be kept. Vault goes beyond keeping of cash. It can also keep vital documents. But even vital documents, you can scan away and even destroy original because the legal environment recognize electronic evidence nowadays. So there is less emphasis on fidelity. This is a cashless environment. So for the top three, I think it will depend on the nature of the organization. So you look at what you trade in, and you ask yourself which and which is vital. For example, the likes of uh, uh, all these transportation companies, comprehensive cover will be, I mean, non-negotiable. For the man who is a farmer, agri insurance will be non-negotiable. So it will depend on that sector where you find yourself. I don't know if I'm communicating. So I won't be able to say this and that, but please, all those compulsory insurances that I mentioned, they are vital, they should be in place. Good afternoon, sir, sir Max. Yes. In the course of your lecture, we did talk about uh, one very important uh, aspect, which we just laughed over when you are doing some analysis, and which was done on uh, life policy insurance. Okay. That a man just walked into your office and said he wants to do a life insurance, but he doesn't want people at home, his wife at home to, to know. know. So that and you asked kids. why. Ah, he might kill him. me. Him, rather. Because I'm still, young to, I'm still very young to die. Uh, it was just last week. Yeah, it I was just a, last week. I had a class, but it was oh. in Gambia. Yes, okay. Now, um, and you did realize that he should tell his family. What are, what are you keeping away? What, what are you what keeping, are you keeping that you keeping important away information away from your wife? Yes. Now, this is what I want to derive at that. And the government, so many insurance policies, companies, government parasitators have been using unclaimed funds to do so marvelous things and we have started appreciating them. We still boils us on fraud. Is there any act that compelled insurance companies that any of your clients that have life insurance policies at his or her death, 
they should go back, come back to the family and tell them, ah, hello, my hello, sir. Because if there is, if there is a debt, the bank will come to your house after your debt to claim your property. But if you have money in bank and you die, they will come to you. That should not be Please. Because there are so many areas that the government fraud the citizens and so many banks parasitize. But we do have a say over there. I think from this little garden, we can start to change and spread the gospel of transparency to the authorities that we thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, let me say thank you. I'm not on the defensive side, but let me say kudos to the National Insurance Corporation. As we speak, they, are, they have mandated insurance companies to produce record of outstanding claims, that is, claims that have not been paid. They want to know the reason. And when you say it's a fraud, I won't totally agree with you. For example, people have bought policies. Addresses have changed. Insurance company is not aware of the change of address. When they write to the, uh, to the address, the mail bounce back. And nowadays, you don't want to just publish anything in the newspapers. I'll give you one experience in one of the defunct insurance companies. The man was an engineer. Uh, he had three policies. In one of the policies, he made the first, he has two wives. He made the first wife the beneficiary. The second policy, he made the second wife the beneficiary. The third policy, he made himself the beneficiary. Now, he was on sick bed. He needed to do surgery. Am I communicating? He needed to do surgery. The surgery was to cost like, a, I think, um, give and take. I think about three million naira. So, if he so if he cancels all the three policies, he will get three million naira. He couldn't get up. He now wrote to us. He applied. Then we were to treat the surrender. We were now asking for his details. Then his first son came around. The guy was deported from U.S. on account of drug abuse. The guy started coming around. He wants to take the benefits. I was the claims manager. I refused. I refused. Then the man, out of inconvenience, came from the hospital. We met. And you know, if, I, if he has gone, he will kill me that day. So you can see the other side of insurance claims managers. And I now took pain to explain to him, sir, with due respect, from the record, you have two wives. This person is the first son of the senior wife. If we should pay to him, the other wife can come and make trouble. So we are taking our environment into consideration. We'll come and make trouble. The man, but the man said, but he spoke to us on the phone. I said, sir, boy, I mean, you spoke to us. How am I sure I am speaking with you? You bought this policy 20 years ago when I wasn't there. 20 years to come, I will not be there. There will be issues. So we can't rely on your voice conversation and pay him. It would have been different if we have a written document duly signed. So I now assure the man that now that he has come, I took his bank details. We'll pay to your account. You can go. Now on the other side, the company was in crisis. The company has gone down by now. That three million naira was meant was the payroll for the company for one month. We have not been paid for three months. So I now got to my guy. My guy asked me, "Why, Amo? How are we going to handle this?" And I said, "Sir, do we still have some money?" He said, "Yes." And I said, "And I said, let us pay this man." He said, "If we pay this man." How about staff who wants to answer? I said, sir, this is a matter of life and death. Let's pay this man. Let him survive the surgery. We have been surviving without salaries for some time. 
But if you still have some other money, let's pay the junior ones. Those of us who are senior can still manage and survive. So we paid the claim. The man went for his surgery. He was successful. We paid the junior staff and with the first salary of the senior staff. So there will be challenges. But if we know what to do. So if we can't identify the beneficiaries, we can't locate them. We have, not, we have no choice than to retain that money. And we can't directly retain that money. We we'll put it into investment. So it is not a fraud. In most cases, we can't trace the beneficiaries. In most cases, we can't trace the beneficiaries. And if you publish it, family members will come. I am the one in charge. I have a senior brother who lost his life in Ibadan. The claim, the, ben the pension benefit has not been paid over 15 years now. What happened? He was legally married to somebody. But before then, he had a child. So when the pension was to be paid, he used his own immediate junior brother as next of kin. So that one was now fighting for, oh, that girl, the mother needs to be considered, not just the legal wife. The legal wife was also making trouble. I'm the legal wife. So the ministry was at a loss. They, could, they have not paid it today. So our environment also matters. We take things into consideration, not because of today, but because of tomorrow. We don't know who we come. For example, people will say, publish the claims that you pay. If I pay a claim of 10 million Naira Group Life to you, I can't publish it. The next uh, day, I'm robust, we, keep, we come knocking overnight. Okay? That money, the insurance company paid you. So this is one of the reasons why we can't just go on publicity when it comes to claims. There are sensitive issues. Am I communicating? Um, we'll be taking two more questions from here and uh... Good afternoon. Kola Ole is my name. I had an experience because when we went uh, passed out from school, that was about more than three decades ago. The following year I got a job. And that's the only pay job I can say that I did uh, conveniently. After, for eight and a half years, but uh, it's only five years that I was recorded. I did this with NSTIF, NSITF, the one we used to generally for union or workers. And uh, when I was going in, by January 4, 2000, they paid me my money, 18,000. Maybe because it's a corporate organization, I work in a logistics company that time. So maybe because it's a couple of engineers, I was able to get it easily. I just went to the accountant, and he just drove the project for me, and I collect my money. Then secondly, that's a, on a good comment note. Secondly, the reinsurance industry, I don't know the numbers we have, because they have as a, a larger entity and as an undertaker for the insurance company. Well, most of the insurance, the last time they did uh, what is it called, consolidation, on the insurance industry. I don't know any, the number of insurance that survive it. Then I found out now we are having PFAs. It seems like the PFA is the money issuing house now that is easy for the insurance company to make money because it involves uh, workers. So everybody try to save for his life. How assurance, what assurance do we have that this PFA will not go down the drain? Just like all that, this uh, microfinance, mortgage, you know, in other industry. Is there any assurance for us that uh, this thing, they will survive this thing? And when it's time for them, they say, ah, they will be giving us stories, ah, this is what is happening, this is what is happening. Then the last thing, but not easy. Why is the insurance itself is a risk? Because to be frank with you, I'm a student. The only paper that I have a carryover is insurance. So why is it? Is this the risk involved or the risk itself? I'm talking of 344, when you have a grade of 344. And insurance is the only one. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. And before uh, you take that one also, let uh, this person take so you can take the two together. Uh, you can uh, bridge all the answers together because we want to round up and move to the all next. Uh, okay. My name is Uh, uh You know, my question goes like this. I just a pure and a spend that I had maybe last week. I gave my key to my uh, brother and to me to pick up some people. Okay, to pick up some from our relative. And in the process, I will I see the, I see the call that maybe somebody have, I mean, seized my car, seized my car in this Lagos. When I got there, so when I got the scenario I met was kind of 
yeah, okay. You know, maybe in the cosmos, I mean, he was driving, maybe he was using for man, eat a Kia car behind. You know, my question goes like this. The man has a comprehensive insurance. Why is he, why is he, why is he bothered about the, this accident? It's, it's a matter of call the insurance. Somebody will bash my car, take over, and let my car go. My, but, sir, you know, you know what happened? I end up repair by the light everything that insurance company would have do or pay. Why, why, why is the place of insurance? And compressive insurance. It's better I go for the fourth Sorry, insurance. Do, do you have insurance at all? On your car? I, have a, I have a third. You have a third insurance. Third party. Uh, third party all insurance. right. Okay. Thank you so much. Let me start from the last speaker. The other guy has one house, one house. One, one house, house, please. One house, please. The other guy has comprehensive cover. Ideally, ideally, his own insurance company will repair his car. They will, they will repair his car. His own insurance company. Now, they can now pick on, on your own insurance company for the fund. But the fact is, maybe the guy doesn't even know this or he doesn't want to go through all this. But if you have experience of somebody, bash, somebody bashing your car, you won't feel comfortable. I don't feel comfortable driving a car with a scratch. I think that is what the guy does and he wants you to pay for it. If he has not like me, uh, like the guy who struck bash my, at the end of the day, I let him go. I took a picture of the whole thing. I called my insurance company. They repaired my car. So I did let the, his own insurance company should have done that. So I think it was a matter of knowledge and so on. So, uh, well, so uh, now to you, sir. Hello. Sir, the issue of PFA, uh, the, he said the PFA is not the source of fund for insurance companies. Uh, I wouldn't totally agree with you. PFA have your pensions contribution. So at the time of retirement, you can either retain it with them, take your pension with them, or you move the balance after taking gratuity cash to an insurance company and buy life annuity. So not all insurance companies have dealings with PFA. Insurance companies dealing with property does not have anything to do with PFAs. So let me first clear that. So for a life insurance company, annuity is not the only source of premium. And not even all life insurance companies can do annuity. So not even all life insurance have business relationship with the PFA. So let me clear that. Then for the PFA, I think that is the answer. So why you failed? Why didn't you fail the other courses? You are biased already, so you didn't read it. <laughs> Any other question? Did I pick all your questions? Re okay. Reinsurance companies are very few. No, they are very few. I think Africa Re, Continental Re, and uh, FBS Re, they are just three. Global insurance is no longer existing. So then, for the consolidation, NICOM does that for the entire insurance space, not just not the insurance. No. They are also part of the insurance market. All right. Okay. Okay, I will have asked the question, yeah, but we part, have so to move. Okay, while we are doing that, Mr. Sunday, Ekuri and Sunday will kindly come forward and let him be talking and then Basically, we'll gradually uh, talk. I, I can't say any other thing outside what my Oga has said earlier. And uh, I just want to enlighten us the more because from this scenario, my colleague, uh, my brother uh, mentioned last, if you look at it, some of us, most of us have third parties. But even that your third party, we fail to realize the benefit behind it. From what you said, even if that person has a third party, don't look at his own comprehensive. Look at your own. As long as you have a third party cover, even currently, we, even the new uh, premium that you are paying on third party, the 15,000, the liability has increased from the normal 1 million to 3 million. So even that loss that you said you, the, you maybe your mother-in-law incurred, but wait now. You mentioned you said you give your castles. Okay, let's even let's even leave whoever incurred it. But the basic thing is your car cost damage to another person's uh, car. That's your third party. You have every right to recoup. It is the insurance that, except you have a fake insurance. You know, see, let's be careful. A lot of all these insurances we buy on the street, on the bookshelf, we may not know the, uh, the benefits. 
or the implication behind some of these things. Maybe you want to go and renew your vehicle license. I'm not trying to degrade anybody. It's not compulsory, you must come. But when you want to buy insurance and you go through the profession, like some of us that are in, the, in that line, maybe uh, like my, my colleague here, Mr. Sharafa, he's a broker. I'm a broker. These are small, small enlightenments that we can put you through and you don't need to pay anybody. I'm not ask. I can't see any one of us now say we want to. I, several times, uh, President, we used to talk. He will ask me. I have never asked you. That, I, I, I can't even. It's not possible. Where would I? Maybe a Sunday or Joe will call me now as if. I will gladly. Because, one, it is a thing of joy that even my colleague is trying to benefit uh, at least from the small knowledge. That, like this morning, when I came in and saw me, I said, ah. Oh God. But you know, I can't, it's so possible, sir. I was telling you, so possible because I sit close to him. So Professor, you just see him now, you are seeing him, you are seeing him. It's not possible. It's not a thing of pride, but you know, it's executive director. Go there, don't, 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 don't visit him, oh God. What is that? But I say it's But you know, today now he's standing by us and trying to deliver. Are you, but it's the grace of God. Somebody said he's not, he's not even sure that he's up to 60 or he's, not, he's less than that. You begin to imagine. If he has not kept himself in a very good shape to manage his life, to, he can't be at this. He can't be like this. You understand? So, but the basic, uh, what, the, what I want to drive down is, if you have an average third party on your car, you still have a right to make claim. But when we don't, you, that, uh, hey, you know, August said something earlier that we are guilty of some, the same offense we are accusing others for. When we don't take our time to even read, everybody is in a hurry, you want to make money, you want to make money. Even that money we are making, we don't take time to analyze those income. And if by chance you have a challenge, at that point, nothing stops you from picking up your phone and make at least get a, uh, make an inquiry and get more clearance and knowledge. You understand? So I'm not saying it is not limited to only insurance. You understand? But as it is, whatever thing we do, let's see how we manage ourselves and uh, the resources at our back and forth so that we don't need to. Thank you very much. So, sir, well, we have to appreciate you for the time because it's not easy to see an executive director within our means, right? So. Joe will be making a small presentation as a token. I would want to crave the indulgence of all the Koreans here to please stand up. With the exception of the women, let the women sit. Uh, <laughs> they are Koreans. The women, they are Koreans by virtue of their husband being a Korean. Yes. The reason why I'm doing this is we are presenting this to an executive director. And at the same time, we are presenting it to our senior. We are presenting it to our Egbo. So, a uh, hey, Korean. So, on behalf of uh, the executives of E89, Ikubo's High School Old Students Association, E89, this is an appreciation award presented to Egbo, a Korean, Wasiu Amo, in recognition of your presence as a guest speaker at the 2023 business conference organized by ECOBA 89 from June 15 to 16. I hereby present this token to you. Thank you, sir. Indomino, thank you so much, sir. And it's an uh, honor having you around. As at the time he was coming in, we are not in. So, <laughs> all right. Thank you so much. Um, let me say a very big thank you for the recognition you've accorded me. I'm not sure I've come to say anything new today, but I, I appreciate the honor, and I pray that the club will continue to work stronger. Amen. Uh, just uh, please sit down, please. On a party note, what we are discussing, if you are involved in a coalition and you have third party, please snap the scenario, capture the vehicles involved, including their number plates, and whatever you spend, keep the receipts and file your refund. 
If nobody is not attending to you, I'm available. I will assist you to get the money back. You are entitled, you are entitled to a refund. You are entitled to a refund. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you very much, sir. And um, I will definitely get across to you. I hope you are not leaving immediately. Okay, sir. So, we'll be safe. so to move on speedily, thank you, our Ebon, our senior. I remember his face vividly. One house, please. So to move ahead speedily, our next speaker is actually around. They've been around for some time. And uh, hello, one house. One house. So I'll be introducing the next um, speaker. And they will the person will be speaking on Startup Act 2020, impact on SMEs. The person is here already. He's an associate partner at SPA Ajibade & Co. Law Firm, Lagos State. Um, she has over 10 years professional experience as a litigation and alternative dispute uh, resolution expert. She has appeared before trial and appellate courts in commercial and general civil disputes covering a broad range of clauses, including contractual, banking, defamation, real estate disputes, and et cetera. Also, she has advised individual and corporate clients in diverse industries, including but not limited to adv advising on confidential clients on the applicability of legislative amendments to extend statutes on the notarial services in Nigeria. It's a lot of grammar. A core member of the team that advised and represented the victims of a gas pipeline explosion in Nigeria on applicable remedies, represented a leading recording artist in an arbitral proceeding over a multi-million naira entertainment dispute between the artist and the producer over breach of the record contract. She is a member of the Institute of Chartered Secretaries and Administrators of Nigeria, ICSAN, Institute of Chartered Secretaries and Administrators, UK, known as the Corporate Governance Institute, CGI, and the panel of neutrals at the Lagos Multi-Door Courthouse. May I welcome to our presence for the next presentation, Ms. Abiodun Ogumbinobi. She'll be talking to us about Startup Act's impact on SMEs. Can we give her a round of applause, please? Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's actually a great pleasure to be here with you today. Um, as introduced, my name is Abiodo Gunobi, but I, I must um, correct a little error. Um, I'm actually an associate with um, SP Ajibade and Co. I'm here to make partnership. So, and I'm here with my colleague, um, Miriam Abdul Salam. So, we'll be facilitating this um, program together. Yes. Um, the Nigeria Startup Act 2022. Um, can I have? Is that it? Okay, you will. All right. Thank you. So, um, the Nigeria Startup Act was actually um, signed by President Wari um, last year. Um, to actually, you know, the, it's so much expectation from the, the technological community, not just in Nigeria, but in Africa. Um, I, I don't know how many of us are actually tech enthusiasts in the house. Is anybody involved in anything technological? Uh, okay. Okay, you are. So because um, prior to it being signed into law, there were um, a lot of um, folks involved in uh, technology, fintech, um, Property tech, health, healthcare, you know, technology, all of them were, we, we, are, we all heard of what happened with Paystack when Paystack sold its um, technology to an American company two years ago for, you know, millions of dollars. A lot of young um, adults were really excited about that. Um, 
So, uh, so today, we, this, uh, today's topic is all about startups and how it impacts um, small and medium-sized enterprises in Nigeria. Because um, the Startup Act actually came with a lot of benefits, and some of the things we'll be considering are what um, startups really means under the NSA, um, what SMEs are. I know that this training started um, yesterday, and a lot of people had um, addressed what. Okay, what startups um, entail. Um, we'll be looking at the differences and similarities between the two, and then more importantly, um, how, um, uh, how um, small and medium-sized enterprises can take benefit under the um, Nigerian Startup Act. So um, what, is, um, what is a startup? Uh, literally, one would say that a startup, that would be the third slide, one would say that um, a startup is um, a company that is just, you know, setting out or that is at the, at, at the initiation stage of business, but that is not the definition as provided under the Nigerian Startup Act. Um, under the Nigerian Startup Act, um, it actually defines a startup as a company that is, okay, that will be uh, uh, the next slide, please. Thank you. So as a company that um, has not existed for more than 10 years and provides um, services, products, or um, or process within the technological space. And um, you know, when it defines it as, as this, it, um, it, um, it could be um, a created service or a, you know, a new service or probably a, a development on an existing service. So. Please, sir, I would like all of us to please put our phone on silent so that we can avoid distractions as we are receiving. So thank you very much. Thank you. So, um, having defined what um, a, a startup is, then it's important we look at what a startup, a startup under the Nigerian um, Startup Act is not. A startup, uh, as defined under the NSA, like I said, must have at least must be involved in, in providing technological services, product, or process. So, in that a company jo was just registered yesterday, or that it was registered last year, or and they just took off without um, providing any of these services or products, that such a company cannot qualify as a startup under the Nigeria Startup Act. So these are some of the features of a startup as defined by the NSA. Like I said, it must operate in the technology space. It must offer a unique digital technology, innovative product, service, or process. It must not have been in existence for more than 10 years, meaning that a company that was registered in 2013 or later than 2013 cannot be cannot qualify as a startup under the NSA, and then um, not all businesses businesses that don't provide any of these services cannot qualify as a as a startup under the NSA. Um, having said this, one would wonder. Um, so, for companies that had, had registered before the law was signed into law, how would they take benefits? The answer is very simple. All they need to do is to look at their memorandum of association that has um, the object clause. That is um, the clause that defines what the company will be doing. And then if it doesn't have this clause in it, the second one that is offers a unique digital technology, innovative product, service, or process in it, then they will need to approach the CAC to amend the, their memorandum um, of association to incorporate same. And until that is done, they cannot operate as a startup. So um, some other features, um, like I said, these are some of the things I've said before. Um, the second one is um, a need for an amendment if um, the object clause does not, um, does not incorporate it. And then another thing that is important, um, uh, yes, I, I know that I'm speaking to my fathers and my mothers in the house, and I'm quite aware that... <laughs> <laughs> yes, that uh, we uh, we are also aware of what happened um, shortly after independence with, um, you know, the amendment uh, uh, speaking about, you know, um, giving Nigerians uh, a percentage of shareholdings in every company owned by, you know, the Oibos before now. So, of course, the NSA took that into consideration by saying that for any company to qualify under the NSA as a startup, there must be at least one third ownership of the shareholding by a Nigerian, either as a owner, as an owner, or as a co-owner of the business. Meaning that um, an American company or a Danish company or a French company cannot just come into Nigeria 
to take advantage of the NSA. For them to do that, it means, for instance, a Microsoft. If a Microsoft wants to come into Nigeria or Twitter, they will need to, they, they will need to at least give one third of their shareholding in that company in Nigeria to a Nigerian for them to qualify under the NSA. And then, um, of course, I've been talking about companies. The question, because this is a workshop um, to, um, to talk about benefits to um, SMEs, the question naturally will be, is it only um, limited liability companies that can take advantage of these or that can be registered as a startup? Um, because the NSA is coming way after you know, um, the Companies Act that actually you know, um, evolved into the Companies and Allied Matters Act as we know it today. Yes, it actually provides for partnerships and sole proprietors, meaning that for companies, for businesses that are registered with CAC as just a business name to carry on business as a sole proprietorship or as a partnership, they could actually approach the, um, you know, the, the commission for, um, for a startup label. I'll still get there for it to be registered as a, as, um, as a startup. But the, um, the, um, the license that will be given to them is, is to enable them to register or to convert to a limited liability company within six months. If that is not done within six months, such a license will be revoked or such a label will be revoked. So um, that is important for you know, businesses that are not registered as a limited liability company. And uh, upon registration as a, uh, as, a, as a startup, what will be issued to, you know, to set these companies apart is what is known as a startup label. And up, upon being issued a startup label, they'll be entered into a startup register. Please, the next slide. So um, what are the benefits? Because all this uh, plenty grammar, it won't, um, there's no point of you know, going this route without you know, conferring some benefits on startups. Uh, you, you'll be amazed at the number of, uh, uh, you know, of opportunities or the benefits that are available to startups under the Startup Act. For instance, um, I know that um, until, well, it's no longer that recent, but until recently, permit me to, to put it that way, registration with the CAC could become uh, cumbersome, but now the CAC has actually you know, evolved and the registration with CAC on almost all aspects can be done online. But even aside CAC, because I know I'm speaking with businessmen, they are, because C registration with CAC is a starting point. Depending on the type of business you are engaged in, there will be a need for you to register with other players in the industry. For those in the manufacturing sector, definitely you have to register with man, with son. For those who are involved with food and drugs, you'll have to register with NAVDAC. So same thing with you know, startups, because of course, there will be a need for them to you know, uh, you know, um, liaise with different um, um, MDAs, ministries, departments, and agencies. So what the Startup Act has done is to, pro, um, to um, set or, or establish a, a, some sort of a one-stop shop, such that you don't have to go from ministry or department or agency to the other, trying to get your registrations done. So there's a, some, a, some sort of collaboration on what is known as a startup portal. So on, that, in this, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the, on the portal, once you register with CAC, if you need to register um, you know, your trademark or uh, probably for um, patents, if you've designed a, 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 a what's it called, a, a, like a system or a process, you could actually apply on, uh, you know, on the portal for a patent or you know, a design or even for copyright with the um, NCC. And then there's also NOTAP, because ordinarily with um, what NOTAP is, is when you want to import um, a foreign technology, meaning that there's a system or a process by which something is done in other countries that you feel, oh, this would actually aid the way business is done or a particular thing is done in Nigeria, and you want to bring it into Nigeria. What the law says is that such um, a process must be registered with NOTAP. And you can imagine you've done CAC, you've done you know, um, NCC. Now, OK, well, NCC does not really apply to technology. But you know, you've done all sorts of registration, and you are moving to Abuja again to register with NOTAP. But what um, the startup portal has done is that can be done on the portal. And ordinarily, before importation of such a technology, it has to be done within 60 days. And then also, CB license. So for uh, companies that are involved, you know, for fintechs, 
instead of you know um, having to uh, acquire for those who want to you know walk through banks you've acquired you know a microfinance bank you have to apply for license with cbn you have to apply for your for you know technological license that too can be done through the portal for you know sec regulations to provide and um, regulatory incubation programs and also for companies that wants to trade their shares on the nse you could also you know uh, um, um, apply to the nigerian exchange limited through the portal um, Aside these, um, you know, um, these access points, the entry point into the startup um, label, there's also the fact that, uh, that um, you know, it provides a, a, like a leveling ground or a playground for not just the startups, but also for um, stakeholders and the public to engage. So for instance, you have um, suggestions, you could actually go on the portal to and make these suggestions or recommendations or complaints on the portal. And then um, there are also incentives because um, a, the, the Startup Act provides for a lot of incentives for startups. And one of such incentives is uh, you know, the Pioneer Status Investment Incentive Scheme under the IDA. Uh, the IDA actually provides for um, certain sectors that could be, um, that could apply to be recognized as a pioneer. And the moment you are, apply, uh, you are, you are recognized as a pioneer, you'll be exempted from paying taxes for three years and then renewable for another one or two years, depending on the sector you play in. So these um, uh, 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 startups could apply through the act for, a, for the grant of tax reliefs and incentives under the um, pioneer status incentive scheme. And then, um, you know, there are restrictions that apply under CETA will not apply to um, startups and some of these restrictions are um, for instance when it comes to companies and um, gains tax ordinarily um, it's only two thirds of um, their income that can actually be that they pay, that they pay uh, that they pay tax on you know so, some of these restrictions don't apply to them so for instance um, CGT is not charged on gains that accrue from their assets that they dispose if it hasn't been up to 24 months. So it's only if it's after 24 months that um, startups will pay capital gains tax on some of their assets. Um, also, uh, you know, export incentives um, under the Export Development Fund, Export Expansion Grant, and then the Export Adjustment Scheme. Um, there, there are also grants and loan facilities, um, you know, with CBN and other statutory bodies that gives loans to SMEs, so long as those startups qualify as an SME. And then and there's also a special um, fund that is supposed to be set up for startups. And that fund must have a minimum of 10 billion naira in it every year. So, and um, from the fund, um, startups can, uh, you know, will be giving grants and loans from that 10 billion naira fund uh, on, on an annual basis. And um, next slide, please. And after that is also um, crowdfunding. Okay, what I just referred to is the startup investment seed fund. They could also do what is known as crowdfunding. They could apply, you know, under you know the regulations of SEC because until recently, uh, crowdfunding wasn't really permitted in Nigeria. But the moment you're registered as a startup, you qualify. Of course, it's not an automatic qualification. You have to apply through SEC, through the portal. And then I've spoken about the last point, which is if you want to be listed on the Nigerian Exchange Limited as um, a startup. Um, some of the challenges of um, the NSA, see, though it, it was signed late last year, um, the, um, the NSA, like I said, actually provides for the fact that there must be a startup portal. But till we speak today, um, the portal is yet to be set up. So you could imagine those who were excited to partake or for a company that is probably nine years as our last year and is thinking, let me quickly register before, you know, my 10 year um, anniversary because uh, the startup portal is yet to be set up. Another thing is um, the, the, the um, this NSA actually provides for you know the commission and um, the president of the Fe uh, the council rather uh, the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and the vice president are members of this council and they are actually the chairman and the vice chairman respectively. So you could imagine if they are not available due to you know executive functions then what happens? Does it mean that the council, because the council is the one that would put some of these parameters in place. So that might actually give room for 
probable bottlenecks. Um, the, the next uh, um, phase of this uh, presentation will be on um, SMEs, which um, my colleague um, Miriam would facilitate before we come back to um, the similarities between startups and SMEs, the differences between startups and SMEs, as well as the benefits to, um, to SMEs um, under the NSA. Thank you. Good evening, good evening, ma. Good evening, sir. Um, like my colleague had explained what startup is, we're talking about SME, that's small, medium enterprise, business life. Okay, there's a definition according to the SMEs, uh, SMEDA Act, which talks about small, medium scale industry development act, says that an SME is a non subsidiary independent organization that employs fewer employees. Like, it's just a small business. It could be a, like, just a one-man business that has several employees. And then under the Central Bank of Nigeria, the act has a policy that categorizes um, SMEs as their t annual turnover should be not, not exceeding 500,000. So any business that has um, their turnover, like at the end of their financial year, their turnover is not more than 500,000, they are classified as SME. And also there's a national policy that actually talks about there's micro, there's small, and there's medium um, categories. So, and as it's displayed here, for micro, there are assets that's excluding the land and the building. They have less than 10 employees in the company. They are to be less than 5 million in a financial year. They will be classified as micro enterprise. And for small enterprise, their employees should be not more than 10 to 49. When it is 50, it has turned to medium. And also, their annual uh, financial statement after the financial year should be 5 million, but no more than 50 million. So it, Companies that are within this range are classified as small enterprise. And then for medium, this is not, this is not a big enterprise or an organization, but it's still classified as a small enterprise. And then their employees should be 50 to 119 as displayed here. And then their turnover should be 50 million, but not less than uh, 500 million. So we wonder why, we are, why we, that's going to classify as a small um, business enterprise, but that's the national policy. So we move over to the survey that has been done by the um, SME, the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics. It talks about the, uh, okay, the 49, um, sorry, the GDP of Nigerian economy says that, uh, 90, sorry, 46% of SMEs, uh, they contribute to the Nigerian economy. And then the overall business in Nigeria, 60% are SME, 46%, sorry, are SME. And then they enjoy this by the federal government. And they enjoy tax and incentives, like my colleague that explained. They're exempted from charging VAT. And then the Financial Act also, the recent one that has been enacted, also give them a turnover of not more than 25 million. And they are excluded from you know, company income tax. And there are also some other benefits they enjoy, which are highlighted here. The two, 200 billion small and medium scales are guarantee scheme. Yes, please, can you go to the next slide? So the features of SMS, they are, these are the features. Capital is always very small. We've highlighted it. It could not be, it could be less than 500, it could be more than 500 or so, depending on the classification each uh, enterprise organization for all on that. They are flexible, they can change, they can adapt, they can, okay, they are doing this business for a period of time. They can easily switch to another business because they are small and then they have the opportunity to enter any fox against any competitor. Also, they are labor intensive. They use more human power than machineries. Unlike big companies or public companies that always use uh, technology, most of them are always manpower and not technology. Also, the employees are very small. I think it has been highlighted here that the IS could be 200, no more than that. It is above them, then it cannot classify under SME. And also, they are very close to their customers. Because it's a very small enterprise, they, there's this customer relation that they have, like maybe there's an employee that's a department that deals with customer, not just, um, uh, not just uh, operation, unlike large 
companies that they have to invest more, get more money, get more machine in order to satisfy their customer. SME always, they always locally and they have a small customer base so they can manage the customers they have and maintain close relationships. And then the management also, like I said earlier, it could be a single person or it could be a group of people, but not just like, not several investment, just a few people that has, we're talking about startup and SME, the similarities. Um, both uh, startups and SME are, are meant to be registered under the companies and um, Allied Matter has that's karma, and they fulfill all the requirements listed in the acts, whereby they have accounting record, registers of members, registers of secretaries and directories, minutes books in order to do business. They are like their companies also, so they have to follow these requirements. And then they have to register with the regulatory body under which the business category, like let's say insurance, they have to um, register with the relevant insurance body, let's say accounting or any other business. They have to ensure that they are uh, licensed to operate that business. And also they ha have the access to grants and loans because they are registered and they are following the um, right procedures. They are, they are allowed to grant and loans from financial companies and the government. And also I said earlier, there are, are, um, are tax and financial uh, official incentive available to both entities. And they always have similar challenges, like although it's in different business, but when, when being evaluated, you see that there are not um, much difference in the challenges here. So let's differentiate between startup and SME. Like she has earlier stated, startups are regulated by the Nigerian Startup Act, which was recently enacted um, last year. Why SME has been in the, in the um, country for a while, that's 2003, it is the small and medium industry development agency that has been regulating SME from since 2003. And then the basic difference between startups is that startup is more regulated with digital and technological um, aspects and development of startups. So it is more of technology. What SME can also can be any other, any other business that it could either be technology or te uh, what is not regulated by technology. So it could be, in, let's say, a financial business, a uh, accounting business, or any other similar business, which not necessarily have to have technology. And also, the objective of startups is um, to position Nigerian startup eco uh, ecosystem as the leading digital economic system in Africa by providing an enabling environment for technological enable startups in area. Like I said earlier, technology is more related in startup. But for SMEs, it oversees and coordinates and monitors the development of SMEs and coated businesses as throughout uh, in industrialization, more like it is poverty alleviation, most like anybody can just say to start up their business as long as it has the requ uh, required tools in it. And then, like I said, any other business that are not limited to technology, that's for SME. And for SL startups, it has to be a limited liability company. Like it has to be registered as a full company and not, let's say, a business name. And although a sole proprietor, that's this just one man business, cannot, can also be a startup. But they, there's a law that states that it has, is granted a six month period to enable that startup register as a company because it is, uh, the law recognizes startups as it has to be fully fledged company and not just any other business. Unlike SME, SME can just be a business name, can just be a sole proprietorship or partnership or limited ability partnership or no, it could be just people just coming together and registering, oh, we have this name, they just register it, which is not different from the, which is distinct from the, um, from startups that has to be limited, has to have secretaries and directors. But for SME, it could just be just one man that is the secretary, that is the director and all. And then for startups like the art provide, it has to be in existence for no, uh, for no more than 10 to be eligible for registration of a startup, like the law states that for you to enjoy the benefits that are highlighted in the act, you must be in existence for like 10 years, or no more than 10 years. It could be lesser, but if you are 11 or you are 12 years, you won't qualify as startups anymore. You'll be assumed to have grown up, like past the requirement for startup. But for SME, it could be in existence for as long as you are in the requirements, you have is no more than um, the money stated in the law. Yeah, please next slide. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
So it's also, it must be for status also, it must be registered. Like under the ads, there's a register of status whereby when you make an application that your company is technological driven, so you have to be, your company name must be registered in the, um, in the um, organization registration. As long as you are registered with CAC, you don't have to do, and relevant bodies, you don't have to register anymore. Those are the stuff. But for startup, also, there's the portal, like she said, for easy registration and uh, with relevant departments and agencies like MDAs. But for SME, just register with CAC and your uh, regulatory bodies. That's the end. You are good to go. And then for startups, when you are registered under the startup portal, you'll be issued a, la a label, that's a certificate, that shows that the company has been is valid for 10 years from the date of insurance. Like when you are issued a certificate that, oh yeah, yeah, you are a fully fleshed startup, they give you a certificate and the certificate is valid for 10 years. After 10 years, you have um, moved from startup to a, maybe a bigger company. I mean, there's no such thing. And um, for startups, the availability of finance and financial investment startups as well as so, so this boy is talking about is that because you have to do some other further registration, there's more benefits. Like you have, there's more tax incentives. There's more investors. You can actually involve private equity funds and incubators. These are all listed in the act. But for SME, there's tax inventive, but it is a bit smaller. It is reduced, unlike the startup, because you don't have to go to the requirements stated in startups. And also, startups are are granted access to loans and facilities and also credit guarantee scheme to set up for the development of label startups. So once a startup is registered, is uh, allowed to enjoy the credit guarantee st uh, scheme that gives it more grant and loan. Although SME also have uh, access to grant and loan, but it's not, it's not as, um, it's not as wide as big as startups and it's, it's according to the loans being granted under the SMEDA Act, like it's the act that regulates it, so they will determine the amount of loan and grants you can get. Also, development of accelerators and incubators or program for startups. Because startup is a technological driven organization, they are, you have to develop accelerators, something that okay, will grow the business, and then it's more of technological driven on like SME. So SME doesn't have any technology. It could be technology or not. It's be there. So I'll call my, I'll refer back to my colleague to talk some about the impact of startups at all on SME. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Miriam. And um, thanks for um, at least your attention up, at, up until this point. So um, at this juncture, we'll be looking at um, the impact of um, the NSA on uh, SMEs in Nigeria. So um, prior to that, um, we'll be looking at some of the challenges of um, SMEs in Nigeria. Because um, before, uh, before the um, enactment of the NSA, some of the things that um, were considered by um, the team of um, specialists made up of tech enthusiasts um, and different um, MDAs before they came up with the act where the challenges um, startups, uh, tech startups faced in Nigeria. And some of these um, challenges faced by SMEs in Nigeria, which I believe some of us here would be able to attest to, um, we have the first one being um, access to fi financing. Um, while um, the CBN and um, different um, government policies had actually been um, enacted in the past um, to provide um, f financing and funds to um, SMEs, I'm sure that some of us might have not been able to benefit from some of these grants. And even when banks um, and, and some finance houses decide to give loans and facilities to um, SMEs, at times the interest rates can be killing because um, by the time you look at um, your turnover or you look at you know, your books and then you consider how much you make as against how much you pay back as interest, it can be very discouraging. And even the cost of maintaining some of these facilities, the requirement for collateral, um, considering um, the categorization of what makes up an SME, because if a small business um, is, um, if a business with less than five, um, you know, five million is what is categorized as um, a small business, then it, it begs the question, 
where will such a business get you know a collateral from and at times you know cross-border forex transfer rates because um, particularly in, in in the last um, few months in nigeria where uh, you know a um, black market because while cbn rates um you know can be quite deceiving that okay um, dollar to naira is um, 500 and something naira but in actual fact for unless you actually get a cot or you, um, you get a, 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 a what's it called from um i've forgotten the term you know business um uh, pardon me you know from the bank you won't get um i think it's bat you won't get you know the, the official rate you won't get the official rate. So, uh, meaning that for a lot of businesses, they have to, you know, transact at the black market rate, which I, as I, I at some point went for as high as uh, 800 and something naira. And then, of course, there's inconsistency at times in government policies and at times um, bureaucratic bottlenecks. Because while uh, registration for certain services on their portal, they'll tell you that within one week. But at times for the next one month, two months, six months, you are still there unless you want to go the Nigerian way. And then there are also, you know, certain, um, um, in certain sectors, though it, there's a requirement for you to get, um, you know, like a final license or a final certificate. But what is obtainable in that sector is once you pass a particular stage, nobody will come to bother you until probably, you know, government policies change, a new orga comes on board, and then, you know, they start pursuing everybody who doesn't have that certificate or license as if it's their fault for not obtaining such. There's also the multiple tax systems, you know, across the various, you know, um, arms of government, and then, um, you know, inadequate infrastructures at times, because for a lot of businesses, they have to generate their power themselves because of inconsistent power supply, you know, our road networks. There's also the export issues because regardless of how much you buy your goods abroad for those that are into the import export business you have to you know factor in the cost of clearing clearing those goods at the port um, of course and um, the bfa which is a, a different conversation entirely has actually come to make some of these things easy because for instance the BFA, the BFA, which is the Business Facilitation Act, signed into law earlier this year, talks about you know importation um, such that um, the Nigerian port is supposed to operate a 24-hour service. But of course, let's wait to see how um, that will be in, um, you know will be incorporated or how that would you know come to pass. Um, and then the issue of you know licenses or certificates not being issued, like I spoke about earlier, the BFA line. If you don't get your certificate, it will be presumed that you have it. Uh, and of course, some of these, uh, not even some, all the MBAs are supposed to put all their requirements on their website. So the BFA is a different conversation entirely because it's all about the ease of doing business and it's also targeted at um, SMEs in Nigeria. So um, having spoken about that, um, what is the impact of the NSA on SMEs in Nigeria? Um, I'll take us back to where we started from. Not all SMEs would qualify under the NSA. The only, the only set of businesses that, um, that are categorized as SMEs that would qualify under the Nigerian Startup Act as a startup are, um, are technological businesses. As in those who either are, offer technological services, technological you know, uh, products or processes, those are the only ones that would benefit. And what are these benefits? The first one is the ease of doing business, meaning that for those that are yet to even register as a business, probably you, um, you are nursing an idea of starting a technological company, then your journey, will, you, you start your journey from the startup portal once it starts running, meaning that you, know, you register your business on the portal. Once that is done, you then, you know, probably if you are bringing a for, a, 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 an expatriate or a, a foreign technology, you do that on, um, on um, the portal. So there, there are also access to funding, some are, of which are treated earlier, um, to grants, to incentives, so, to loans. There are um, exceptions um, from, you know, um, the, the export incentives under the um, free trade zone. Um, there are um, tax incentives. Um, there are um, also, also, there's also, um, like I said, um, the credit guarantee scheme that is to be set up that would have you know, 10 billion naira fund. And then, of course, like I said, one of the objectives of the NSA is to improve the ease of doing business in Nigeria. So as an NSA that has this service to offer, the moment you register under the NSA, as a startup, you would have access to all these incentives. The beauty of it is a startup label, once issued that label, 
would um, you, you, it would operate as a startup for 10 years. And that's the reason I gave an example of a company that is, um, or that is in its ninth year of being registered as a business in like, for the next 10 years, or um, enjoying all these benefits till you know you um, till you face out of um, of um, of the, those benefits. And then um, in conclusion, really. Um, I have said some of these things. The, the, the NSA offers a lot of benefits that um, for businesses prior to now, they were, uh, they, they would, who had experienced some of these benefits available to, to other businesses. For instance, people talk about you know, um, tax holidays in some country, which is the reason why you find, um, find some companies said you know, that they are registered outside Nigeria, but they are operating in Nigeria, or they are operating in their country, but they are registered outside their country. So um, the, uh, the NSA is supposed to offer some of these advantages to um, you know, startups in Nigeria. So basically that's it. Um, thank you so much once again for your time. Um, I, I don't know, does anybody have questions, um, comments? Definitely, I'm sure there will, come, there will be questions. Please, let's give her a round of applause. And uh, are there going to be questions? Definitely, I have questions. Because um, despite the fact that I have not, I wasn't too, don't worry, I'll say a little bit far off. I was not seated all throughout due to the nature of our work, but all the same. You said startup. Now, that got me interested. Well, my, I registered a company in, nine, in 2013, so definitely by this year it should be 10 years. Now, do I, can, I, can my company see benefit for startups? Because oh, I think this is June. I was going to ask you the month of registration. Because one thing is that I actually registered it in 2013, but I didn't start using it until 2015 15 or 16. So. It doesn't really, I had issues with uh, tax people and they started talking about a lot of things. So with respect to that, do I see cons uh, benefit from startup? And if I don't, now, what other benefits? Because a lot of times, most of us are not informed. We register companies, you want to ask some questions then, even from those you are registering from, they have little or no time to explain to you because most of them actually don't even understand not like now that you register, you ask some questions. IT has changed a lot of things. You get to read some things and you ask some questions. So how do we now reintegrate ourselves? Because we are from the less IT age, now we are in the IT age. So how do we integrate and marry those two? Okay, um, okay. just a minute, sir. Uh, okay, um, that's fine. Um, for uh, companies that are registered before, um, as a, 10 years ago or that are you know on, on their 10th year like i said once you are 10 years and above you don't qualify under the nsa to be registered as a startup and then um, companies like human beings evolve because a good example i give people is that um, 20 years ago um, a lot of us regardless of how technological savvy we are in this time and age, there were things that if they had told us 10 years ago, we won't be able to wrap our minds around. That um, for uh, probably um, the, for the younger generation to them, it's a question of what do you mean? Because they you know, were born into it. So naturally, things evolve. So definitely companies that were set up 50 years ago, 30 years ago, 20 years ago, won't have some um, this qualification required by the NSA. And that is the reason when I started, I had mentioned that um, what, uh, what is required is uh, basically, that's for companies that are not up to 10 years and are interested in being registered as, an, uh, as a startup under the NSA. You, for a, of course, it has to be a limited liability company because even for um, sole proprietors or business names, um, they, they have a six-month window within which to register as a limited liability company. So all they, that such a company needs to do is to amend their object clause to, um, to incorporate this. Because, for instance, um, f some of the companies we know today that are in the IT space, if, if you check their memorandum of association, their object clause, as at the time they were um, registered, they weren't registered to carry to profile technological solutions. But along the line, they you know, evolved into it. And of course, at every point, because the, what the memorandum of association is supposed to do is, is not just a constitution for the company. 
that is that is where the rules and regulations that guide the company is written such that if a company says that what we'll be doing is buying and selling maize you cannot wake up tomorrow to say that beans is what is um, uh, moving in the market we are moving into the selling of beans for you to do that you have to go back to cac amend your memorandum of association to bring it in line with what you want to do Otherwise, in law, it, uh, whatever you, if you do that, it, that's what is referred to as being ultra-virus, meaning that you've operated far and above outside your scope of business. So I hope I'm able to answer that. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and, uh, I think you, you've answered that question. You need to go back to CAC and then uh, shaping the, 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 guide, the rules that's guiding that SME so it can be able to work in startup. Okay, now, let, 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 there are some issues that we really need to look at under the startup. Uh, considering uh, the group that we are, the association that we belong to, SME will be more okay for us to work on. But the issue with SME is that now we have the problem of currency, or the problem of loan. Actually, bank of industry are trying, but uh, I would say 75% to the north and almost just 15% to the south end. That's a great issue concerning that. Uh, another thing is the, the, the environment is not conducive. And considering all the challenges that you have mentioned again under the startup, what can we do? I'm a living witness. What can we do? I have to go and register in UK. I have to go and register in UK because I believe what is UK is perfect and 100% okay with me. Take my money in pounds than doing it in Naira. In Naira, coming to tax, tax is another big problem. That's a challenge that is having. A big challenge. And the problem is that the money does not go to, into the account of the, of the federation. It goes into the pocket. That's another big problem. So what can we do? What can we do? Even those of us that are in SME, what can we do so that these challenges can be reduced to minimum? And now we now look at the way we now migrate from that. To the startup for startup for now, I think it still need to go and resolve themselves because just to, yeah, 2022 there are still challenges. But for SME, what can we do to bring others up so that they can go into the small scale, medium, and other things so that at least they can improve from where they are? I think we should look at that. Thank you. Okay, um, uh, well, um, for some of the I think um, the answer to um, most of the challenges or most of the questions or concerns you've raised um, is basically, um, if there's one thing I believe in, because we're in a country where everybody talks about government, 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 as if government is um, from mass, forgetting the fact that government is amongst us. We are, gov we are the government. And um, you know, when I started talking about um, you know, the Startup Act, the Nigerian Startup Act, I had referred to the fact that um, you know, tech enthusiasts, tech, um, you know, um, the, those who operate in that ecological system were really happy to see it you know, coming to, as in being enacted. But um, the NSA didn't just come into being just like that. Um, it was actually the folks in the tech space that moved for it because um, the truth of the matter is I'm a lawyer. Um, I can't expect a non-lawyer to know the challenges we face as lawyers better than we lawyers know. And um, ordinarily, when you check, good enough, sir, you said you operate in, um, in the UK. Even the history of the, uh, of, the, of the parliament in the UK, back 100 years, 200 years, um, most of their laws didn't just come to see the light of the day. Um, um, laws that, are, that pertain to business were actually sponsored by businessmen. Businessmen who operate in the agri space actually sponsored bills that you know, had an impact on agricultural, you know, uh, the agricultural practices or processes. So, um, but uh, it's not um, that, um, that terrible because like I said in the course of my presentation, I referred to the BFA, the Business Facilitation Act that was signed earlier this year. Uh, though it had been in the pipelines for more than five years because, um, you know, the PEBEC, that's a presidential, um, you know, a committee was actually set up to look into that. And um, they, what they did was just, you know, like a cunning way of getting some of these things in. Because what um, the BFA, like the Finance Act 2019 and 2020, just amended, you know, related acts 
an act that I, I, has an impact on the ease of doing business in Nigeria. And you know, some of the acts amended by the BFA, like I mentioned earlier, is um, you know the one that involved with um, ports, you know, immigration, um, the Companies and Allied Matters Act. So for some of these, because um, it, though it's not just SMEs, but um, the BFA, will, um, if implemented, really would also ease the you know um, the some of the challenges experienced by SMEs in doing business. But I think the answer to your question really is for other to identify whatever challenges they are experiencing in their sector and the sponsor bills. Because um, senators, people in the House of Rep and now various House of Assemblies, they not all of them are lawyers, not all of them are doctors, not all of them operate in the particular space within which you're operating in. So they won't even know the challenge that we are facing in some of these our business sectors. Thank you. I have a question. Okay. 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 Good afternoon, everyone. Um, all um, protocol of that. Yes, I want to say, make a contribution. You know, some of um, some of us I want to do business. We just rush into do registration of the company, and after uh, registration has been done, we find out that ah, the space is something else. And that leads to what I call maybe inactive years of doing businesses. So is there a way after maybe you have done the realization about maybe 15 or 12 or 13 years that you can still be part of this NST one? Two, is there other ways that you can be able to ensure that, uh, you know, the Nigerian tax is something else and they want to get everything from you? whether you are in operation or not. Is there a way that um, such people that are in that situation could be able to, I mean, to get some um, soft landing in the area of um, tax, uh, what can I call it, tax liability and so on and so forth? Thank you. Your question doesn't really impact on the NSA, but um, I'll take the first question. For businesses that have been, like I said, that have been registered 13, 15 years ago, naturally, they don't come under the scope of the NSA. Um, and of course, if you've registered with um, the CAC and um, you don't operate for a certain number of years, and when I say operate, you could actually be operating in the actual sense, but you haven't been filing your returns with CAC because there's no way CAC will know that you have actually been operating or you haven't been operating. Definitely, once you check, uh, once um, a business partner or a prospect checks CAC start um, um, website, such a business name would pop up as being inactive. And the beauty of CAC is, you know, CAC, you know, uh, it's, uh, sorry, I won't say what I wanted to say. <laughs> You know, see, you know, I was going to, you know, um, quote like a Yoruba adage. <laughs> oh, you know, uh, we Yorubas permit me, so sorry. We say, you know, CS will just wait patiently till the day you need them. CS will not run after you like the taxman. CS will not run after you. Meaning that the day you wake up and you remember that, oh, I registered ABC Nigeria Limited, and then I, I have now bidded for this multi-million naira or multi-million dollar contract, eh, you will need CAC. Then CAC will tell you that you can't do anything until you update all your returns. That's the difference between CAC and the taxman. Unless you want to abandon that name or that entity, start up another one. But if you are still interested in using that business, you won't just pay your returns or up to date, you will pay default for every year of not filing your annual returns. And that takes me to your second question. Even if you are not um, operating, CAC still requires that you put forward your annual returns on a yearly basis. Even if it is zero naira, if it is minus zero naira, put it there. That way, CAC knows that this in the entity is still operating. And then to your last question, sir, as regards tax, um, the Finance Act 2019, I, I think, actually makes provision. That's why I said when it comes to SMEs, unlike you know startup, because you know for startup, all the don't let's say all the people, but you know the major players in that industry came together to examine their challenges to profile solutions to workable solutions, not just solutions, workable solutions to the, the 
the challenges they identified. You know, what operates with SMEs is you have to look at, you know, um, different policies and um, different laws that have been enacted over the years. So it's not as if um, the future for SMEs in Nigeria is bleak, no. Because for instance, Finance Act 2019 actually makes provision for, um, you know, for companies whose um, revenue is actually below 25 million not to pay VAT, not to charge VAT. The only thing is that the moment your turnover exceeds 25 million, if it is one naira above, then you have to. Meaning that you have to keep your books intact to monitor. Unless probably you are a small business and you know that for where in the next five years, you understand. But even as a small business, you can never tell. You understand? So you have to keep you know, your record so that the day you exceed, then you start you know, paying VAT. And not just VAT, it also applies to you know, income, um, the company's income tax. But all these provisions, of course, it's also subject to amendments. Because Finance Act uh, in 2021, another one was proposed, and it had passed the first, second reading. The only thing is just that it didn't sail through presidential assent. So it could be amended at, uh, amended at any point in time. So like I said, the future is not bleak. Those provisions are there. Thank you for uh, all the explanations. Standing on the existing protocol, I just wanted to ask um, some questions regarding registration. Actually, uh, operating the ICT sector, let me put it that way, and I did my initial business registration, which is an enterprise in 2012. And part of the description there was ICT services, products, and all this stuff. But um, I have a challenge. There was a time I wanted to upgrade that registration. And at the point, they were requesting that I, 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 uh, I bring my registration as Nigerian Computer Society, all those stuff. And I don't have that. Because actually, I actually didn't study anything related to computer in the university. I did something else. So I was now asking that now registering as a startup, will I still be required to join that membership before I could be registered under under because startup artists specifically as you said technological based uh, registration. So will I still be required to register as an as a member of the Nigeria Computer Society before I could be registered as that? That's the first question. And then second, let me buttress what you said regarding uh, filing of annual returns. Like the business I told you about registered in 2012. I never for once filed any returns. So there was a time I was trying to bid for a job last year. And I think it was because after searching, it was discovered that the business is inactive. So this year I had to say, okay, I need to finalize that. And I knew I spent a lot. At least I spent more than a hundred just to finalize that. So. And then my last question is, um, is there any restriction in maybe the technological products and services you have to render before you can register under the uh, Startup Act? If there is any, let me know. Thank you. Okay, um, I'll start with the first question. Um, the fact that you registered a business name and then you are required to um, register with um, the Nigerian Computer Society. Uh, the question will be, how long ago were, were you asked to do that? That was like seven years ago. Let exactly. Yeah. Because um, CAC has since removed um, the requirement for proficiency um, certificates when it comes to registration of business entities of any type. Yes, uh, prior to now, um, there are certain um, uh, there are certain uh, businesses that you can't register without being, uh, without pr presenting or front uh, uploading rather um, a, a, a certificate showing that. Oh, for instance, if I uh, let's say I want to register my law firm now to say, okay, I have um, I, you know, that I'm a lawyer and I operate, uh, I upload my call to bar certificate. But CSE has since dispensed with that requirement, so I think you could actually go on. All sorts of professional certificates has been dispensed with. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. For most of the schools, if you go to their site, you see that they, they, you are required to put a professional um, certificate to back up. Uh, you know, school is a different um, ball game entirely. 
because you know when it comes to SCUMO, SCUMO is, doesn't apply to all business entities. SCUMO has a list of business entities that must obtain a SCUMO certificate from the EFCC. So that is a different conversation entirely. EFCC and the CAC are two different agencies. Uh, no, the, um, the, the, um, the objective of each agency is different. The, CM, uh, the Corporate Affairs Commission is just an entry level. You want to do business in Nigeria, you have to register. For EFCC, of course, as the name implies, Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. So they want to be sure that you are not saying, oh, I have this competence, and then people will bring their money, and then, you know, I, along the line, they will start hearing stories yeah, yeah, yeah. of... Um, Nigerians will like stories a lot, and you'll hear all sorts of stories in Nigeria. So, uh, <laughs> so and then to answer your third question, because I think your second um, wasn't really a question, um, which is um, restrictions. And well, the NSA for now doesn't, because by the definition of a startup, you will then know uh, um, whether the service you want to re render falls under it. Because it says that you know it's for those who have technological, you know, innovative uh, um, processes, products, or services to render. So, for instance, if what you are rendering is a, you know a raw material service that is technological, possibly CAC may, might query it. And don't forget that it's all about the way the person who registers your business crafts your object clause. So I could craft your object clusters that you sell through CAC. Does it mean that that is what you are going to use the company for? All right. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Ogunubi. Um, any other questions? OK, fine. Thank you very much. And uh, we quite appreciate the information. I'm sure you are still not going yet, because some people might still ask some few questions behind the scene. So before you go, we would like to say thank you. So, OK, uh, we'll be one of our own as a Dr. Leke Kodri who will be making a presentation to you on behalf of the association. Thank you. It's better to come to the side. <laughs> well, uh, on behalf of uh, the Cobos High School of Students Association, and everybody here present, and those in diaspora, we, especially those online watching, want to show our appreciation to you and uh, to Miss. Am I right? Oh, so yes, she's still searching. So, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think. I think we need to laugh a little because we are too serious. <laughs> we are too serious. Maybe she's going to follow me to UK. <laughs> Miss Abiodun Ogunobi, for your recognition, the presence as a guest speakers at this 2023 business conference. We really appreciate and want to say God will continue to be with you. God will continue to guide you. You continue to go here. I'm impressed with whatever what you have said, and we say that your business will always go higher. Thank you very much, and God bless you. you. So we we'll present this to, to you on behalf of everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone. All right, then. So we'll be proceeding on a, on a 30 minute recess for us to have or 30 minutes lunch break. So, <laughs> thank you so much. So, we'll see you again in another 30 minutes. <laughs>
Attention, please. Um, to we'll be moving one by one to the whatever um, to the service point so that we can take our meals and. I uh, would like the presence of the ESCO, so would like to take a picture with Mrs. Ogunobi before she leaves also.
Good afternoon, uh, gentlemen, and welcome back to the second session of this program. I am your semi-host and the General Secretary of Ekoba 89, and my name is Ibiro Balu Agua. You remember our president is still at Blawal, and the PRO is Sharafa Adeniji. Our former president was uh, uh, is a Korean Ojo. So here we are. Thank you very much for your presence. Thank you, our wives, for being here. Sorry, my wife could not come. He's a civil servant, so they, need, they can't allow them to disappear like that. Now, it's an opportunity. Can we have audience, please? Can everybody make their way inside? Can you invite everybody back inside, please? So that before we start, one of the vice president is uh, on, online, ready to come on. So I just wanted every one of us to be here so we can run things. Okay. You have to take the names of noisemaker. Anyone that is still making noise is a fine of 10,000 Naira. Agreed? 10,000 Naira as fine. Agreed. Is it taken? Okay, 5,000 Naira. Noisemakers. Fine. It's too much. Okay, it, it is. Uh, <laughs> Mr. President, can we do 5,000 naira for noisemakers? Okay. They said 500 naira for noisemakers. Okay. <laughs> okay, we have the class captain and a, uh, the name Kuforiji and the assistant class captain AY. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. It's nice to have everybody here. And I think this has been an informed gathering. And I'm sure every one of us have gained one or two things within this period of time. And let us give a round of applause to the head, the president, Ekorian uh, Latif Lawal. And also give a round of applause to Ajagaban because he had to wade through the years to bring us up to this level. A round of applause for him also. Okay. He said every good thing has a cost. And I'm sure all of us love this gathering. We enjoyed it. And we would like to do more. But we have to do something also on our path. Most times we are on the platform chatting. And sometimes some of us have decided to be silent. But one thing is that this kind of forum brings us together. And we can now, from this day henceforth, become a force. So I will encourage all of us. E89 has an annual due. It's not much. I think it's about 5,000 per annum. And we also have a social due, 1,000 monthly. We can do that. Let's start making a commitment so that we can have something, so that whenever we want to do something or reach out, mm -hmm. we can be able to do it. So, um, and at the end of this program, I'll enjoin everybody to wait behind because we are going to be having an abridged annual general meeting so that we can discuss, we won't take long, but it's just going to be brief, so that we can discuss some things and the next way forward, because I'm sure if we can have this one every three months, every four months, it will change the way we think and it will change the way we impact ourselves as well as the environment we live in. We can make Nigeria a better place only if we work together. So to introduce the next speaker or the next person, I would like to call on Ikuru and Ulabi, our Honorable Treasurer. Thank you. Good afternoon, fellow Ecoreans. All established protocol observed. I'm all a bit The session we're having now happens to be the last of the sessions for this uh, 2023 business conference of Eco Boys High School Old Student Association E89 set. 
The next uh, topic is going to be anchor, I'm going to be delivered by ECOBA Global Second Vice President, Engineer Ganeyu Tito Nurudin. And the uh, title is Investor's Guide, Smedan as a Link to Securing Business Capital for SMEs. Ent Engineer Ganeyu Tito Nurudin, we welcome you to this session. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, if you can hear me clearly, please uh, just say, okay, that way I know I'm coming okay. loud and clear. Okay, we are with you, sir. Thank you. Good, good afternoon. My time is about... Uh, 10, about 10 o'clock in the morning. And uh, I- Did you get that? Did you try again? I truly appreciate uh, the opportunity to be with you today. So- My pleasure. My job is to introduce the next speaker, the next presenter. And uh, I had the opportunity of having a decent conversation with her yesterday. I called her up. I just wanted to know, find out more about her. And the, the conversation I must tell you was very, very encouraging. So there's no doubt in my mind, she's going, to, she's going to share very, very valuable information with us today. So my name is Sachito Ganyu in Oregon. I'm E74. I'm the uh, second VP for Ecoba National and uh, a VP for Ecoba North America. So, I'm assuming that uh, Ms. Tosi is in the audience right now. Please, uh, someone say yes, that she's in the audience. Thank you. So, Ms. Tosi is here to basically give us a lowdown on Smithan. Uh, Ms. Tosi is a very enthusiastic educator, facilitator, and mentor with a strong focus on entrepreneurship, mentoring, and business counseling. With over a decade of experience in these fields, she has had the privilege of working closely with numerous businesses through her role as the inaugural center manager of the Business Information Center, BIC, and Business Support Center, BSC, at Smithans Ogun State offices. Tosin's expertise extends beyond her work as Sweden. She has also served as a trainer for the International Organization on Migration, IOM, providing guidance to return migrants. So when I discussed with her yesterday, I asked her, who are return migrants? She used the expression of, of hope return meaning people that, were, that went overseas to uh, Europe, America, for whatever reason, they were basically deported back to Nigeria. So they go to Sweden, and Sweden basically settle them, recycle them, teach them a new, uh, new way to do things. It's a very, very good program. I was very, very impressed with what she told me yesterday. Uh, furthermore, she has been recognized as an ILO trainer for my group, and holds certifications as a trainer, facilitator, and coach or TFC on ICSS for GIZ. In addition, Ms. Tosin's extensive involvement in teaching and mentoring, Tosin is a seasoned entrepreneur, bringing valuable insights and experience in management and human resources. Her comprehensive skill set and diverse background make her a valuable asset in any business or educational setting. Well, she has a BS in industrial chemistry. I asked her yesterday, how did you go from industrial chemistry to being going out there and doing what she does now? I was very, very impressed by her response to me. She said, oh, she's finding very rewarding with what she does now that uh, she works with uh, 
or lawyers, doctors, or all kinds of artisans to basically improve their business. So again, Ms. Tosi has a BSc in industrial chemistry from University of Alabama. She has advanced dip or diploma in human resources and personal management and masters in public and international affairs, both from the University of Lagos. Please, everyone, join me to welcome uh, Ms. Tosi amongst us as we uh, learn and uh, partake from our presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope we are well rested from the food we've eaten. I know this is an adult um, training or session we're having and uh, sitting for long as adults kind of um, makes us feel weak. So I'd like us to do a little bit of exercise to get ourselves in the mood. <laughs> they, we, we've all eaten, right? We ate rice or swallow? Which one? Both. 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 Oh, <laughs> that means the item seven was really, really nice. Okay. So did they give us salad with it? They didn't give us salad. Uh, okay. I'll give you salad. And I'll give you, I'll give you fruit salad. Hmm? <laughs> no, you need, you need, we, we need, we need fruits. So I would indulge your, um, uh, yeah, you following me along with this exercise. So it's called fruit salad. So table one and two will sing with me. When you are singing your own, you stand. When you finish singing, you sit. Table three, four, five. When you sing your part, you stand. When you finish, you sit. Then this side, the last part. When you finish singing yours, you sit also. Do we understand? Okay, please let's all rise up. I'll teach us the song. So I had the people online to please participate also. So I'll sing the song then. It's, it's quite simple. <laughs> it's quite simple. So I'll go, I'll go like this. Watermelon, watermelon, papaya, papaya. Banana, 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 fruit salad, fruit salad. So when we are saying fruit salad, everybody will stand up. Do you understand? So banana, the first two tables, Pap uh, papaya, the three, then this last one, banana. Do we all understand? Okay, let's go. One, two, three, go. Don't give us sour watermelon, no. One, two, three, go. <laughs> so please let's one, two, three, go. Papaya, papaya, banana, banana, <laughs> banana, banana. One more, one more. One, two, three, go. Pasta. Let's give ourselves a round of applause. So this afternoon, I'll be talking to us about um, Investor's Guide, Smedan as a link to securing business, business capital for MSMEs. Next slide, please. So I know we've all been hearing about MSMEs since morning. We are the body that sees to the smooth running of MSMEs in Nigeria. So I would like to define, because I've been hearing a lot of um, names that has been called. You know when they pronounce your name wrongly, you are, you are on the defensive immediately. You say, no, don't pronounce my name that way. Pronounce it this way. Like most people will call my son and they'll say Abajo. It is Abajo. So it's the same way for Smidan. When people say 
um, they, they call Smedan in a way, it's kind of a trigger for those of us that work with Smedan. So Smedan is the small and medium enterprises development agency of Nigeria. We are the agency that was set up and given the mandate in the year 2003 to see to the smooth run SMEs to ensure that we have a sustainable economic development and these MSMEs contribute very much to the GDP of the nation. Smedan performs a lot look more attractive to investors because without this capacity building, you are not aware of what is lacking in your business at that point. But after all these trainings and you put everything into practice, you become more attractive to investors out there who are ready to invest in businesses in Nigeria. We also carry out BDS services, which is business development service. What we do is that we give you information, we come to your business. When we come to your business and we, we, we sit with you, we have business counseling with you, we know what exactly is wrong with your business. So we can use different tools to try to diagnose what is wrong with your business and where you need to improve upon. So after doing all this, we can now tell you that, okay, this is where you should uh, make changes, this is where you should make adjustments, and you can now go ahead with um, getting all those things done. Credit facilitation. Smedan collaborates with financial institutions such as commercial banks, microfinance banks, and cooperative societies to facilitate access to credit for entrepreneurs. By working as intermediaries, we connect MSMEs to potential lenders, support in preparing business proposals and business plans to increase their chance of securing capital and assets in loan application. In order for you to go to um, the banks, like I said, I mentioned before, having a business plan. It is very important, it is very key. You need to, you need to have a business plan. How many of us have, uh, have uh, business plans? How many of us know what a business plan is? How many of us have, okay, the, the hands that are up, did you write the business plans yourself? Okay. Have you ever used it to apply for a loan or for, or have you pitched with it before? Okay. You've, you've pitched before? Were you able to get it? Okay. So what we do at Smedan is that we teach you on how to write a bankable business plan. The key word there is bankable. It's not just writing a business plan. There are things that investors will want to look at and see in your business plan. If it is not there, you won't get it. Then not only you having the business plan, like my uh, brother here said he pitched. We teach you on how to pitch because it's also a technique that you need to learn. What are the key words the investors are, are, are looking out to hear from you? We teach you on how to, to say that. Like I used to tell people when I train, if Dangote was here in the room with you and you had one minute with him in the elevator, how will you sell yourself and your business? And you see what some people will be saying, oh, I'm going to tell him my name is so, so, so. But before you finish mentioning your name, one minute is up and he's out of the lift. So you, how do you pitch your business? You have to look at the key things. What are the things I need to say that the investor wants to hear? Those are the things you need to watch out for. Then, um, I, like I said, the microfinance banks, Smedan has a lot of collaboration. As of Tuesday, Wednesday, that's the um, day before yesterday and yesterday. My DG, Dr. Lawale Fasonya, was in Lagos. And we signed um, MOUs, two MOUs with um, two banks, First Bank and um, Sterling Bank. This is for the benefits of MSMEs in Nigeria so that they can run their businesses properly. Then we also in Smedan, through the, the um, efforts of our DG, we will soon be floating our own microfinance bank because we have a lot of interactions with these um, uh, entrepreneurs, that the small and medium ent entrepreneurs, we have a lot of interactions with them because we get to train them. They come to us, they tell us their problems. So our DG thought about it, that why not just float our own microfinance bank? After training these people, we know their problems. We can actually provide solutions and make it easier for them. So hopefully we're looking at October in floating our own microfinance bank so that MSMEs can have access to it. Then also, we act as advocacy and policy. 
policy uh, in influencing the government to make sure that what is going to make running a business easily in Nigeria is there for MSMEs. How many of us have heard of the national policy? Okay, only one person. Okay. I think I should probably rephrase the question again. How many of us have heard about SNEDA? Okay. Okay, so if you've heard about SNEDA, you should have heard about our book, our policy, which is meant for you. So the national policy, if we're in the third, um, third uh, policy right now, the policy was enacted upon to see to, uh, the, to provide solutions to MSME problems in Nigeria. So right now we're on the third uh, policy, which will expire by 2025, and we'll now start talking of another policy. This policy addresses key areas that MSMEs are finding issues in. There are seven key areas that were identified. We talk about finance, we talk about technology, infrastructure, we talk about um, 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 human resources, about seven of them. So these areas are addressed and solutions are preferred to make sure that MSMEs have solutions. So this policy is something that, because somebody was, I spoke with um, a gentleman and he was telling me about his issues about running a uh, business in Nigeria, talking about importing. This policy, this is, this, uh, this is why we need MSMEs to come up to us when we have our stakeholder, stakeholder meetings. Come up to us, let us know the issues you have so that this can be incorporated into the policy and make this, the MSME um, um, area very okay for business owners. Try to look at how we can encourage women to run businesses in Nigeria. We came up with, we, we have another um, um, book which is titled um, MSME's Competitiveness in Nigeria. This survey was conducted last year and we discovered that 51% of business owners are men. 46, 41% of business owners in Nigeria, no sorry, 59% of business owners are men, while 41% bus, uh, owners of businesses are women. In that 41%, they make more profit than the men, but we have more men running businesses in Nigeria. Sorry? More responsibilities. Mm. <laughs> so we always try to encourage women to run business. Then we also have other programs like uh, the PAMES, which is the Product and Marketing Enhancement Scheme. You have your product. Let's assume this is what you are producing. Let's remove the label and every other thing. What we teach you is how can you do this product? How can you enhance this product to make it very, very marketable that people from outside will want to look at it and say, oh, I'm going to invest in this business. We teach that. As of Tuesday, I was at um, the Caribbean Islands um, the, the, um, program, an event that between Caribbean the Islands and um, um, Smedan, where we were discussing how to do between Nigerian entrepreneurs and the Caribbean islands. And along the line in the discussion, we discovered that most people are not even aware that this is a very, very lucrative area to face as a business owner. Everybody keeps looking at, oh, let me face UK, let me face America. But this is a very, very good market as a business owner that you can go into. You talk about tourism, you talk about um, the agri sector, you talk about creativities, look at that sector. And I also got to know that there are also some other advantages of running businesses over there. Like let's take for example, St. Kitts Island. If you are running a business there, probably you say, oh, okay, I want to, you can get to have their, their um, once, once you are, you, you are the naturalized as a citizen, that passport can enter so many other countries, which gives your product access to so many other places around the world, rather than facing US, UK, like every other person, which is fully saturated. 
Then we also have um, the program. We also have so many other programs that we do in Smedan. So most of these programs, like we know the world now, is everything is digital. And we know that our generation were not born into the uh, tech and the digital um, uh, um, world. So we always tell people to put, introduce tech into your business. When you introduce tech into your business, you get very, very wonderful results. I was discussing with somebody who said he was into poultry. I don't know who the person, okay, behind. He said he's into poultry business. I was asking that, can he introduce tech into the business? I said, of course you can. That I, even I even told him that I had a client who is into, who introduced tech into the business and decided to look for other people into poultry business and do a poultry mapping. What is he trying to do? He's trying to get other people in poultry business, then linking them up with people that need probably eggs, um, the frozen chicken, or uh, the, live, the live chicken itself, yes. So in creating that app, it makes it easier for the business owners to be able to source for um, either the feed for the beds or any other thing. So don't look at your business and say, oh, I've been running this business like this before. Look for how you are going to introduce tech into your business. Smedan does that training also where we teach you about um, digital literacy and also running, um, putting tech into your business. We've done we have in Nigeria. And uh, Smedan even has his own um, hub. We have one at Yaba Tech. And we also have some other hubs we, we in, interact with. Presently, we are, um, there's, a, there's a link online for a program that is coming up very soon, probably around August. It's an M MSME fair that is going to happen in Lagos. So before the fair comes up, we are, we, we are collaborating with a hub, the Nest. So this hub is going to bring business owners that have products that are export ready. And we are bringing um, investors to come and look at these products and see if they are interested in it. Not only that, we have sister agencies, the likes of CAC, the likes, likes of Sun, Navdak, to come sit down and talk to those that have products that are export ready but do not have certifications for those products. So our, our aim is that when these sister agencies are there, if they cannot get it done within one week, we're expecting that everything should be, get, should be gotten ready in one month so that businesses can run properly and they can get access to the um, external investors or even internal investors. So those are the various things that we do in Smedan because we are trying to look at it that MSMEs make up a lot of um, investment. They bring up a lot of investment, investments and um, profits into the country. As of 2020, before COVID, we had a total of 41 million MSMEs in Nigeria. After COVID, we had 39 million MSMEs. Why did this happen? A lot of business owners fell out of business. Some not, not because they did not have money. Some people had money. But at that point, you know, that was the period that we had a lot of people going through depression. I don't know if you agree with me. So if someone is going through depression, if, you know, it, they say it's what you like that brings you out of what makes you sad. So if you don't like the business you are doing at that point, it can be a very big problem. So for those that did not have passion for the businesses they were running, coupled with the fact that they were locked down, they didn't run the business anymore. This was a major problem for us because we had to do another survey to look at the total number of MSMEs we have and also work with what we have now. Then also we have a lot of people who have more than two, three, four businesses. I know most of us here have that, yes or no? And I know that in those two, three, four businesses, some of us are not even operating, maybe like two anymore. Yes or no? Okay. So what Smedan does is that we also go out to try to look at businesses that are moribund. 
after checking, you will, we do BDS services with you and try to find out, okay, this business you were, you were running before, what happened? Why did you stop running it? In doing all this, it helps us with data gathering because without proper data in Nigeria, the government cannot help anybody. That is the main issue of MSMEs in Nigeria. There is no proper data. And it's, it's a big problem for us in Smedan because by the time we go out and we count, oh, okay, this is the total number of MSMEs, go again in the next six. Come forward, state your name and your questions. Let's make it brief as possible. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Kola Ole is my name. I'm a member of this uh, 89 set. Um, first, I'd like to make a confession. There was a time Fender always sent uh, text messages to me that um, they just said I should send code about three or four times. So uh, I and a colleague, we are both in the same sector. So there was a time we had nighted. They had a workshop that time. So I was asking, ah, was that this video always send text to me? And he said, what do you do? I said, I oh, always just about the guy. No, you shouldn't have done that. And anytime these people there are around, I didn't mean you answer those text messages. Maybe maybe in one of these workshops. So he said, uh, anytime I something like this, I should reply. Something good might just come out of it. And uh, like the one you said, like that you are going to hear is uh, having a fear by your girls. At least uh, it's a situation I like uh, most of us here to be a participant and attend that lecture so we can move uh, from there. Then, um, one thing about Smedan, in terms of facility, do we have it through them or? You help us, uh, you said you uh, help, can, can help us through the banks. Okay. That's uh, what I uh, like to do. And to stop it, I'd like you to give her a round of applause. She was, she, she was the, one of the earlier, most of you met, we met her here. So she deserves a round of applause. Uh, that the saying that she has always, uh, the patient has his own reward. So she has been patient. And uh, you can see it in her. She has a reward. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. So for the first question, I would have loved to know what was written in the text message. Because most times, we have a lot of scammers sending text messages in the name of Smedan. You even go online, you see they will, they will write Smedan is giving out 5 million naira. Smedan is doing this, Smedan is doing that. Most of those things are scam. Yes. So whatever you want to, to get, any information you want to get, you can either go to Smedan Info, which is our Instagram page, or you can go online and check our website, www.smedan.gov.ng, to get updates, updated information about all our programs. Then I forgot to mention also, um, Smedan, you know, I, I've been talking about data. Data is very key for us. And in order to get data, Smedan needs, uh, Smedan set up something called um, the Smedan Register. What does this Smedan Register talk about? It is different from CAC because I've seen a lot of people coming to meet me to say, oh, I have my CAC certificate. Why am I registering with Smedan? CAC certification shows that you are a business owner, that you have a business you are running in Nigeria. Why registering with Smedan shows that you have a business, a valid business in Nigeria, which will help us because in the long run, if we decide that, okay, we want to do um, um, empowerment training for people probably in the um, poultry sector, in maybe Lagos State, in so-so local government area, if you are not, if you have not registered with us, we will not be able to capture you and you're not able to benefit from what is being given. And even for our constituency program also. So that's why we always encourage, go to the Smedan Register, where you need to go to smedanregister.ng. So in order to register, you need to have a valid email address because a soft copy of your SUIN, Smedan Unique Identification Number, will be sent to your mailbox. I always get people say, what next? Now that I have this, what do you people want to give me? I feel it's, it's a very funny question because it's like when you have your CSC um, number, do you go to meet CSC to say, oh, now that you've given me the number, what next? So it's the same thing for our own unique identification number. You, you don't need to come and ask us what next. We are the ones that we get back to you because we have a lot of programs that are geared towards MSMEs. 
So once you are registered with us, you get to benefit what the government has to give to MSMEs in Nigeria. Then the next question he asked, I can't remember. Okay, the fair, the fair. Okay, I, I'll um, I'll send it to. I can't. Is it Mr. Lati? Yes, I think I have his number. I have him on WhatsApp. So I'll send the flyer, the e-flyer to him. So when you just um, apply for it, so once you are selected, please be, be mindful that it is not just Smedan alone. And Smedan, we try to like pull back because we've had situations where people say, oh, um, there's only some particular set of people that are benefiting from Smedan. So we don't want that. So we are, we are kind of in the back seat, it is the um, that will get to pick the people they want. So even if you are not selected to come show your goods, you can come for the um, fair to meet with the investors and also the sister agencies to ask your questions and get solutions there. Is that okay? Okay, then the last one. Okay, facilities you can get from Smedan. Okay, so um, at Smedan, we will not, I always tell people it is better for you to be in an association or form yourself into clusters. We answer you faster that way because we know that if you are in a cluster, each person can guarantee the other person. We have, like, let me give you an example of a program that Smedan runs that we, we do in um, cluster form. We call it OLOP, one local government, one product. So what this program does is that it goes to local governments and look for products of comparative advantage. And we, we focus on that and the people in that area. So once we identify them, we give them probably maybe uh, machineries or things they need. Instead of having it as an individual, they have it as a collective. And they, they don't need to only use it for themselves. They can use it for the community also. That's by renting it out, and they make more money for their clusters that way. Is that okay? Any more questions? Okay. Yeah, like you talked about registration. We know, I'm hearing this for the first time, that we'll have to register with Smedan as well. Like we do register with CAC, when you register with CAC, you have a CAC certificate. Does Medan give certificate as well like CAC does with the unique number? Yes, I told you that that is why you need to have a valid email address. You have to have a valid and functioning email address because once you finish filling the whole, um, um, well, you finish answering the whole question on the platform, your unique, that's S-U-I-N, Smedan unique identification number will be automatically sent to your mailbox. It's in form of a certificate. So all you need to do is print it out if you want, or you can leave it as a soft copy in your mailbox. Yeah, madam, thank you very much. Uh, we want to appreciate you for your patience and uh, your time as well. Uh, but mine is not a question per se but it's a request or an appeal kind of for when you are talking about uh, uh, Smedan you said you have a you normally conduct trainings so I just want to make this kind of, uh, the appeal that if it is is it possible for you to share your training manual with us so that over time as because a lot of us are into different trades so that it will help us to key in when we look at that manual like i know because i have uh like in my own uh, field we have the regulators that are guiding us and at the beginning of the year they give us a kind of training manuals then organizations begin to sign in and say okay for this month or for that month maybe three people in this department that's at least that will help grow their knowledge on that field. So I think, I don't, I don't know if it is possible so that uh, we can key into it and find a way to, to be part of those trainings too. And I believe uh, they are not that, uh, 
from the look of things, it is not really going to be that expensive. I think it is something maybe, because I know some of these trainings, when we say we are coming in as an association, you find out that you give discounts by saying, okay, if you are able to give us five persons, uh, we'll give so, so maybe 20, 30% discount. So at the end of the day, it is something we can, at least to grow our knowledge as well and uh, build our future. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you for that. In order for you to get our um, training manual, you need to ha attend our training. You need to invite us to come train you. After training you, you are qualified to have our training manual. Because I always tell people, it's a different thing to have the material and it's another thing to understand it properly. You might read it one way, but by the time we give you the proper training, you will find out that the way we've, we've um, trained, we've, the way we've facilitated is quite different from you reading it. So we always encourage that you come for our training or you invite us to your um, facility and we come train you and train your other people. Then from the knowledge you've gained from us, you can cascade down to every other person in your organization. Uh, thank you, Tosin, for this concise uh, presentation, very brief and straightforward. Um, I just want to ask uh, this question as regards um, what you said about smelling registration. I always believe that you know, once you have CAC, that is just you know, the alpha and the omega of it, but making it clear to us now, I think it's an eye opening. Um, I want to ask, is there any financial implication you know, as regards to the registration with uh, uh, smell? There is none. There is none. You are, you are registering for free. We are not collecting any, any money. You can actually do it on yourself. Check for it on your phone and do it, do it by yourself. Right. We've um, actually had scammers come up with um, text message. That was what I was trying to find out, the context of the text message he got. We've actually had some people come up with text messages to say, smell and register, pay so-so amount or come to so, so place, let's train you on how to register for it. So I'm saying it once again, you can actually do this by yourself. Once you are tech savvy, go, to, go online and do your registration yourself. Okay, uh, would, uh, okay you want to have a question? Yes. I'll ask my question. Oh, thank you. I, I wanted to rephrase what my earlier colleague had said about your training manuals. I was thinking that he was asking for a training program, a training schedule, so that when you are, we are privy to that training schedule, we can key into it at any time, since we have a knowledge of it. And do you have a sort of discount rate for people coming in groups or individually? So that I think uh, I want to rephrase it like that. Thank you. Okay, do I say, am I, should I assume that um, it's, it's coming from um, Ekuba or Okay, it's something that we can um, discuss. I actually work with this um, zonal office southwest, but I'm usually in Lagos. So it's something I can discuss with the state manager, Lagos State, and we can come up with something that would benefit the um, association. Uh, thank you. Um, my question, one of my questions is actually in that line that, okay, fine, uh, because as a group, as a set, a subset of a bigger set, because, because we have a COBA national. This is just a subset of the COBA. So just looking at, okay, as a group, we can come together. Because it's likely that some of us might do some things together. And we can come together as a group and come towards you, just like you have confirmed. Also, I would like to ask um, Smethan as a whole, we would also like to know, because there are different sectors in businesses. And which of the sectors, because like everybody said, I'm also hearing for the first time, I had to register with SMA, um, Smeda. I've always thought something of it which I actually couldn't define. I always think it's, it's a fraud on the other side. But thank God for this information. So how are, which, what and what sector are under Smeda? Does construction fall under Smeda or is it just agricultural base or tech base? or educational base, or uh, health base, or stuff like that, because you know we have different sector, health sector, we have even micro sectors also, so which of the sectors is smith and covering, so that we will not be running amiss? 
Okay, like That's I said, first phase. Okay, okay, maybe you can answer that. Uh, okay, like I said before, Smedan covers. We are the, we have we've been mandated to see to the smooth running of MSMEs. We are not excluding any sector. We cover every sector in Nigeria. We even go as far as ensuring that entrepreneurship is taught in primary and secondary school. Because we look at it that a lot of people come out of school and their mindset is, oh, let me go for a white, white collar job. It doesn't pay in the long run. And you see this Gen Z, they're not ready to start collecting 50,000, 60,000. Peanuts, they will tell you it's peanuts. So we, we encourage entrepreneurship. Go out after the blue collar job, try to set up a business that can run properly. So that is what we encourage. Okay, thank you very much, ma'am. And uh, thank you, and we quite appreciate you for the time and for your patience. Please give her another round of applause. She said earlier on that women are better managers, and we were all grumbling. They are, because they manage us. The only difference between us is that we tend to put, when we, are, when we have issues, we leave our own and divert to them. And when they are done, we leave them to be secure while we keep growing about the problem. So it's one thing that we need to do. And uh, we would like to ask, probably just a few minutes, we would like to ask our second vice president, whether he has one or two things because he's still online. Sir, you will have maybe one or two questions for Madame so that as we go ahead, we won't leave you out because as our father too, you are here with us. Oh, thank you. Oh, Ms. Tosti, uh, thank you for coming today. You've been awesome. Thank you for taking my call yesterday. I truly appreciate the conversation. And uh, generally, my question to Ms. Tosti is this. And it's regarding uh, your comment uh, about women are uh, better managers. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to ask the question in a different way. So one, of course, is clear you are a woman. Okay, so that means so you have a first-hand experience in how women are better managers than men. So I would like for you to kind of uh, expatiate on that. What is it that women, that you do, uh, what uh, traits do you have that allow you or make you manage different? I know for a fact that a woman can manage 10 things at the same time. They, they multitask very, very well. So that's my first question, then I have a follow-up question. What is it that women have that makes them better managers than men? Ms. Tosin, thank you. Okay, to answer that, thank you very much for that question, sir. To answer that, um, in one of our um, um, training modules, we teach you about personality traits. And in teaching these personality traits, we, we liken it to different types of um, animals. We find out that when uh, we are teaching, we have um, the personality trait of lion, we have the owl, we have um, the tortoise, and we have the hen. We find out that most men, when you ask them, which, which one do you feel you have personality trait for, all of them will say, which, they will say what? They will say, oh, I'm a lion, I'm very fierce, very this one, I'm very that one. But when you ask the women, they will tell you, oh, I am a hen. The hen. The hen is very, very protective. If, a, if you, as little as that hen is, we as human beings, is it easy to take a chick from the hen? It's either you lose an eye or you get pecked all over your body. So that is the same way with women. They, 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 they are protective of everything around them. If it's their business, because they think, they think of, oh, this thing, oh, I can either teach my child to go into this business. Most men don't think of that. I'm not generalizing and saying all men. Most men don't think of that. They just run the business like, okay, I'm, I'm running this business for myself and to feed my family. There is no continuity. But be interested. The son runs the business. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Ms. Tosi. 
So my follow-up question is this. So what advice would you give men in how to at least improve their management skills? So what advice would you give us? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that it's one of one of the ways is by coming for our training. When you attend our trainings, like I've I've done a lot of trainings for uh, retirees and pre-retirees. Most people wait until the last minute before they start thinking of what to do with their lives, and that is what usually finishes pension. Someone at the last minute will just discover that, oh, they said um, fishery. If I go into catfish business, it is very good. He has no knowledge, no passion, no, nothing about that business. But he jumps into it. He starts the business, two months. It's either the fish start dying, or daddy, we are hungry, go and, cut, go and catch fish and eat. And before you know, 10 million, 20 million is gone. Before you know, five years, most times, if you check the, the uh, retirees, check the year they retired and five years after, they've gone. They've gone. So this is what we try to teach in Smedan when you come for our training. We teach you how to be good managers of yourself, of your business, of your workers, anybody around your suppliers, your customers, we teach you all that on how to manage yourself and your business properly. Thank you. OK, uh, la lastly, this is just a general comment. Once again, uh, Ms. Tosin, thank you. Thank you very much. You've been very insightful. We've all learned a lot from your presentation. But one thing I do want to say to us, the audience now is this. Um, people that have done very, very well in life, one thing they learn to do very early is uh, you don't don't overanalyze anything. But if you want to try, if you want to do something, do something, do anything, try something. If it doesn't work, you learn from it. You learn, you learn from the process and you go on to the next one. But one of the worst things you can do in life is, uh, as they say, don't put your all your eggs in one basket. When you do that. And uh, what you are doing doesn't work the way you want, so you might not be able to recover. Uh, I was uh, listening to one audio tape, and uh, the gentleman said, uh, uh, basically, the interview very young men and women that were very, very successful at a very young age, they, they interviewed them. And, uh, the summary of the story was, majority of them have tried between 17 and 18 different things before they found the one that made them very successful. So the question was, did they fail at, did they fail 17 times or 18 times? Or, or, the, or the 17 things that they tried before they found the most successful one was this something that they have to learn? Basically, when you do so, and this one has to do with the worst thing you can do is to do nothing. That's the worst thing you can do is to do nothing. More people, as you're helping more people, you act. You, believe it or not, you'll be actually be helping yourself. I'm simply saying. In everything we do, you know, uh, in everywhere we are, always find a way to help others. Or uh, look at our Miss Tosin today. In talking, in talking, she didn't she didn't say this directly to me, but I inferred it from our conversation. So basically, she loves what she does because every day she's talking to people, and uh, at the end of the day, she's helping them to accomplish something. So that's the reason why she will get up every day, go to work. She comes home happy every day. Because when you spend part of your time helping others in whatever way you can, it's just a win-win situation. 
Ms. Tosi, on behalf of Foycoba High School, on behalf of Foycoba, on behalf of our E89 specifically, we truly thank you for joining us today. You've been an inspiration. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for every single thing. And thank you, Madam. I hope you are this patient at home. <laughs> it's okay. So we'll have... Uh... There are only two things constant in life, debt and taxes. So I'm sorry to bring... Doc medical doctors will bring debt certificates, but tax authority will bring tax clearance certificates. Um, I'm a consultant from Ernst & Young. Um, I'm also an FCA with ICANN and also a member of the um, Institute of Chartered Taxation of Nigeria. I'm representing Ernst & Young here, and um, basically our topic is very, very, very enclosed. We have been enclosed by our topic, uh, but we'll try a bit to expand it to some extent to be able to give the SMEs owners some understandings. We know that many of us, um, by the way, before I continue, please, is there everybody here that owns a business so that I can know the direction we are going to? Or does people own business or work in some places? Many of us, majority are, have one side also, right? Not side also, or main business? Both. All right. All right, so, um, basically, um, we might need to, I won't go too technical because I know some of you, you have some persons that helping you to do your taxes, or you are even doing it yourself. You know how to talk to those guys. You know how to do things. Um, we'll be discussing from, I'm just trying to spend some time to, I know I have one hour, maybe less, but hopefully it will be enough for us to discuss because um, like the other classes, you waited to the end, but I'm sorry, I'm giving you permission as you're talking, you can raise your hand. Because this is form of tax, you might forget. When you get to say, ah, ah, what did you mean below? When? I don't know what I would have done. So, am I right? So, um, as we go on, I give, please, I'm trying to overrule, um, Eskos, am I allowed? Am I allowed to overrule, to overrule that uh, pattern? so that you can be asking questions during the course. Please, raise your hand, but please don't transfer aggression to me. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not FRS, I'm not legal state. So, thank you so much. Um, our topic is tax impact for SMEs. Can we go to the next slide? I'll be a bit fast, uh, because it's be more of discussion time, more of experience discussions, and some of, and to many people that have what you want to ask, please start noting them down. At every, at every point in time, you can raise your hand to ask a question. And I know that the tax authority has been frustrating and that to some of you and um, what to do. By the way, those that have business, how do you manage your taxes? Do you do it yourself or you have one of your friends that help you? Please, let's talk. Those that have business, how do, or you don't even pay tax at all. Oh, I won't report to you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know your company. I don't even know your fees. So I won't report to you. So why do you manage your business? How do you manage your taxes? Or you're like, oh, until they catch me. Right? Am I getting it? Is that the audience? Yes. Yes. But, you know that, oh, <laughs> but you know that now tax clearance is very, very important. Tax clearance is very important now. For you to buy a land, as they've said, SME, you need to have some, uh, you need to buy land for your poultry business. <laughs> That poultry business, I remember we did with my parents. We had almost a thousand birds. I was in a kitty, I'm a kitty boy, sorry. It was terrible. It was stressful, it was good. I was eating egg. You know, when you have crack, maybe it's crack like this, it's gone, it's gone to the kitchen. But um, all those things, like Smithen said, it will not help for business. You can set those crack at lower value. Instead of zero revenue, at least you have some minimum. Don't let us eat everything. Remember, I know you are elderly. We remember Omega Bank when they were selling the right issue. Don't eat your fish now. Can anybody remember that advert? I'm a young man, but let's go on. Let's go to the next slide quickly. So, tax authorities in Nigeria, we all know there are two key tax authorities in Nigeria the Federal Revenue Service 
and the state internal revenue service. How many do we have in Nigeria? 36 plus federal capital territory. So the FRS, basically all taxes are applicable to the federal government and the states, all st uh, taxes are applicable to states such as pay, pass payee, withholding tax between individ uh, where the individuals are vendors and the likes. So for the states, um, unfortunately for some of you, if you have your business all over the whole Nigeria, you're in trouble because the old tax seven will come and meet you plus FRS, that's 38. Then pension will come, ECF will come, ITF will come, um, another will come. But you see, one of the things, this is, when I saw the timing, it was not a session that we can go too much elaborate. But one of the key problems where you are paying additional tax is because you don't have proper documentation. If you don't learn anything out of this tax session, documentation, and because it's a deliberate act, like what that lawyer said, that SPA, Ajibade, what are they using the money to, I'm just flourishing, I'm just en enriching one politician that just embracing the money. But let me tell you something, there is no ignorance under the law. Yes, you can find a way around to sort the, F the tax authorities. That is why you'll be angry. You that you're making your business, you give the guy 200K, he help you. That one I will get to, the guy buy Benz. You are saying you are buying Benz. Who help him to buy Benz? Who have him to buy Benz? Is it not you? You, the guy, the guy tried to, you gave him 200K, he helped you sort it out. Imagine all of us, we gave them 200K. The guy buy Range Rover. And you're saying, see, I see them. That's what I'm using our money to do. Who gave him the money? So we are doing ourselves. And let me tell you, the day they realize that your business is compliant, they try it first, they try it second. They won't come the third time. They will come, but it will be longer time. They will say that, ah, that place. So one more. But by the time you give one time, second time, you have turned to what? ATM. <laughs> I know one of one Indian client, he engaged us. When we got to the stage, we, he said, okay, don't worry, we'll handle it. Pay, my, pay us our fee. He went to sort. It wasn't three months later. For, that's my investigation. They wrote another office. Ikeja office, FRS wrote, concluded the investigation. Ikoyi wrote that they want to come out with the investigation for the same period. I said they've spoken to each other. So by the time they see that you're ATM, LRS see that your business is ATM, the Tama guy will be coming. I don't know if it's a Tama person here. Sorry, sorry to support you. I'm sorry to spoil your business. But we need to preach equity. We need to preach compliance. Because compliance is very cheaper than non-compliance. We'll see what is happening here. That's what I'm saying. The one now might not be enough. I hope I'm, I'm not scaring you people. Please, you know you're my, you're my fathers and my... All right, so these are just the tax filing. Next slide, please. These are just the tax filing, taxes, selected taxes for SMEs. We all know company income tax. Though if you're in the oil and gas upstream exploration, you are not an SME. Because for you to get a license, you don't have, you don't have a... So you are not an SME. Anybody in the oil and gas exploration, not that you are providing service for oil and gas, so... If you're in oil and gas exploration, you are not an SME because to get one, to get one license alone, you must have met the Ziani. So, we are talking for small companies, medium-sized companies. Some of you that are called SME, you guys are billionaires, but uh, you all like under SMEs. But BVN will soon expose everybody. So we all know companies income tax. Please, as I'm discussing, please raise your hand as we get to middle. We all have. We all have six months to file. Many of you that have December year end, I believe you have been spoken to to incorporate your business. By the way, before I go, many of SMEs nowadays are making mistake from their incorporation status. Why do I say so? Many people will just jump and say, I want to start a limited liability company. Why? You are a poultry farmer. You are starting a limited liability company. Why? You, have, you are providing, you are doing supply. I said maybe they insist on limited. You are doing this one. You are, your business is not wide like that. Why are you setting up as a limited liability company? Because if you set up as a limited liability company, your profit is subject to a tax of 32.5%, 33, because of some things that you will see here. But if you, are, if, you, if you registered as a business name, enterprise or ventures, the only tax is if the profit you earn, you pay yourself, then you pay payee. And the maximum of payee is 21%. Average is about 19%. Compared to 33%. 
So many of you started wrongly from the beginning. And unfortunately, you cannot close your business to go and start another one. Because if you do, the tax authority has a scheme to be able to determine whether, that, like you said, that if they catch me, you have a scheme to determine whether the company you closed and you and the new company have related parties, they will combine the old revenue together and charge it to tax. So if you have not started, please weigh it very well. Do I want to start as a limited liability company or do I want to start as a business venture or enterprise? That is the beginning of trouble. And if your business is not growing well, God is blessing you, you can now convert from enterprise to what? But you'll have saved a lot of taxes. I'm giving you free consulting that, will, that people pay. That is the beginning of trouble for many people. You are, you are, what are the businesses you are doing? You are supplying paper to companies. You have a person giving you contract to go and you, are, you have a shop to you are supplying material in Balogu market. Except you are hyping. I'm sorry, all of you are you by my able people here. They want to hype that I have limited my container. Is it on water? Water? <laughs> but even you might still have a container on top of water. But I don't know if custom allows enterprise. But you can get someone to help you clear and you send to you. You'll be business ventures or limited. Except maybe the business you are now going to is now requiring you to be a limited company. Then you cannot do what? Upgrade. But maybe if you are now starting from the beginning and you see that the, the sector you are going to requires you to be limited. That's, but always do that assessment before you start a business. Like I said, you are a fish family. Why are you doing limited? Which limited are you? You are doing some, which other small, small business? You are into fashion designing. Which limited? What are you limited in? Do you understand? You are having a pure water business. Some of the money you have, what are you limited in? Let me use, I've already to use that language. But I believe you get what I'm saying. Thank you very much. So by the time you do limited, this one is gone, this one is gone, this one is gone, a lot is gone, yeah. But by the time you start as limited, this one 32%, 30 this one is 3% now, this one is 1%. If you're into this particular sector, you start out together now. So I don't want to spend much time because we've never gone to the topic we have, but so this is company income tax. You file, so don't feel that I have accounting year end as December. You are meant to file by this June 30. I hope you are aware. And if you don't file, there's a penalty of 25,000 and 5,000. That's very small. But the taxes you are meant to pay, if you don't pay it, you will pay 10% penalty plus MPR plus 5. Currently, I think MPR is about, is it 18 or 19 plus 5? That's 23%. 23 plus 10, that's what? Plus 33% on any amount. Imagine you are owing 1 million, you do not pay it by June. You will not pay additional 330,000 on it. That's why I say compliance is what? It's cheaper. No, we say, they say prevention is better than cure, right? But prevention is cheaper than cure. Just imagine you don't have that accident. Will it cost you more? It should cost you less. So please, let's just do that quickly. I don't want to, I want to move further. Education tax. So this is another one. Sorry, go back, previous slide. So these education taxes are normal thing. Please, if you are not clear, raise your hand. Information technology, this is specific to certain industry. If you are into GSM, service provider, telegramation companies, cyber companies, internet providers, pension managers, I know these are not SMEs, but some of them I start SMEs a bit. The industry started as a very small company, but it's a big company now on the London Stock Exchange. So the remittance, Naseni, I don't know if you have any before, those of you in the Marine time oil and gas, on a revenue of 100 million. Police trust fund is for everybody. So that your police you are saying is not your friend. You are paying for him. So that is 0 0.05 of your net profit. Every company in Nigeria. So, but if you are not a limited company, you won't pay police trust fund. But it's for every company. So if you're a limited company, you'll be paying police trust fund. So that police on the road, tell him the money that is in to service you and pay part of my company. But don't let the police arrest you. You come and check. You want to check your phone. You now see credit. God now help your customer now pay you ten million at that time. What's the law? <laughs> so there's withholding tax. Please don't ask me questions about withholding tax. If you want to start now, <laughs> those that know that know right. If you want to start discussion with withholding tax, we won't end. It's a two-hour discussion because a lot of issues are happening. But if you ask specific question, you can. I know you're already tired. You're going for AGM. Then capital gains tax, very important. You bought a land, many of you. By the time they catch all of us, no, why say us, you? 
Anytime you sell, you, you will buy land, you sell. You have properties, maybe you sell. Maybe you have some property your uncle or father gave you. You now sold it to developers. Developers now develop it. You put the, the land, maybe you bought it at 5 million or 3 million in something borough. Now, your ignorance, maybe it might be because of ignorance, but this is part of the things that is required for businesses and SMEs in Nigeria. Are we together? By the way, okay, let's go on. So this personal income tax for all your payee emolument, someone called me and said, yeah, means over time you to tax. I said, yes, over time you to tax. So all your emolument you are paying your staff, please deduct. Those of you that are employing staff in your company, make sure that you factor in payee in their salary. And don't go and collect the payee and use it to do business again. Collect it and go and save because you pay penalty and interest of 31, almost 33 percent also. By the time LRX come, but the challenge is that when they come, you give them back 200,000. They come next year again, you increase it. They will say inflation, dollars increase on Naira. You pay 300,000 and you become their ATM. They will know your shop. You, you, please just take notes. Why are they coming every year? I never noticed because you did it last time. I'm sorry, like I said, I'm not, I'm not a preacher of war. I'm not in Daboski. I don't know those are not in Daboski. Do you understand me now? I'm just trying to rephrase things, trying to make it as easy for us to understand that we have a lot to do as SMEs. Many of us are evading taxes. Many of us are not remitting because I don't care. If they catch me, I know my brother works in LRS. I knows how to, he knows how to help me. I, I, is it not me? In a, he will not allow them to catch me or this place. But at some point, the bush, one day bush will catch the hunter. Uh, how do you sell it? The bush will catch the hunter. Any question? Your assistant is digested. Okay. Go ahead, sir. And you mind your business. And I was just doing my own thing. Until one time when I wanted to use the business. And I went down there and they told me, you know, you are a visitor. And I said, how can I be a visitor? Yeah, you are not a good, you are not a good guy. Now, that phone was the first I got from you. But now my question goes this way. Now, they come after how many years and say, look, besides uh, you are owing 30 million, which I don't even know. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. I, I understand where you are going to. They, I'm not trying to work for FRS. I'm not, I don't work for FRS, and I don't intend to work for FRS. Although they offer me job, I rejected it. I prefer to work and be defending people than to be at the other side. Most of the things you say they are doing, it is because of your negligence. Sorry, I think there's some side noise there. Maybe the person can go out or so. I'm sorry, it's an elderly man, but please. So, just for not filing a new return, sir, is a penalty of 50,000. A zero, you didn't make any revenue just because it's not filed 
on the due date, you pay 50,000. And just imagine, and that's 25,000 every month, cumulative. Just imagine you have not filed for the past three years. Add 50,000 times monthly, multiply by 25 monthly, that's close to about 3 point something million. You have not made one error. <laughs> but now, the law has said, one of the things you really see in the first grant side on the SMEs is that if you have not made 25 million naira revenue, those people that are telling you, sir, I don't know if your business has made 25 million, if they track the credit in your statements. It's not that maybe the credit, it says to go to your common statement, you go to your personal statement, so to avoid them come and looking at your business. But if in true sense, you have not made 25 million, you are not meant to pay any corporate tax. VAT, company's income tax, you are not meant to pay. But maybe you cross 25 million, 25 million and one, you are meant to pay at 20%. It's even between 25 million to 100, 100 million, you are meant to pay 20%, and you are meant to start paying VAT. You have to start charging, one second, you have to start charging VAT on your invoices. So, I think it's more of a, this is the first step of enlightening you, but I think you should be having periodic enlightenment of this tax. I don't know, um, yes, you've invited us, we appreciate, but you also need to have periodic updates of some of these things. So, um, do you have, well, one of the things is that, um, I don't know if any of your members or any of the ECOVA members is a task consultant. So that when you are doing, I don't know how often you hold your meeting, they can be giving you periodic updates on what is meant to be done. I don't know if ECOVA has one standard email we can include that in our email directory so that when we have updates, like we sent updates like four or five in the past one week or two weeks, that email can receive it. Unfortunately, when they send it, some people just ignore it. What is today? Am I right? All they know is just to be doing law, law, law. They say the way, someone, the way our president is signing now, before you know it, we sign Messi and Ronaldo. <laughs> <laughs> so, it is awareness, and unfortunately, the back, there is no ignorance under the law. All those back years have already, you have already accrued. So, um, I don't know what to say. Let's continue. Is, am, I, am I done? So, basically, it's ignorance, and looking at the economy, every task, every, most task, don't say every task, most tax authority person want to make money from ignorant taxpayers. So, the best bet is maybe it's better to get it right now because one, even for you, tax clearance is ready. It's very important for everything now. Everything now, tax clearance. That's why those boys are making money now. Tax clearance certificates. So please look for someone because some of those things for individuals like this might not be able to do for for the for this association because it might not it's not covering our scope like that because of some other things. But if you're able to search within your, all the sets, you, will, you might get, or maybe you have someone, you can be inviting, you can be having, how often do you hold your meeting? You can be including, please, you know, those that study, please, did anybody study accounting or you did accounting in secondary school? They say, that initial teachers, ignore what? They don't, I don't remember my accounting teacher then. You say, ignore tax in those times. But now, if you ignore tax, you are ignoring yourself. Your business is going down the drain. So please, let us focus on tax, both pay how much you are paying yourself, how much your company is making. <laughs> it's the person that wrote it. There is no allowance that is not subject to tax. All forms of emolument is subject to pay. Not even now that uh, one of the gifts they gave us two years ago is even to increase the pay. Almost all emoluments. Companies don't want to bear the tax. One other thing is that one of most of us are employers of labor. By the time they come, do you know that that tax you should have deducted from your staff? You are bearing it. 
Although you feel like I did that, maybe at the end of the year, I did that one million. When they come, I will declare 500 for them. I will save some money. But it is not the proper way for sanity. Many of us are religious people, both in your mosque and in your church. For equity, whether in your mosque or is someone online. But unfortunately, the truth needs to be told. Are we together? All right, let's go on. All right, please. Yes. One year. One year. In your f- one year. That's even good for you. If they does that source, all you need to do is when you are filing your monthly returns, maybe you now made 25 million, revenue 25 million, VAT, let's say 1 million, VAT payable, you now see the VAT deducted at source. If it's the old money the deducted though, you put it at source, but you provide schedule of the company that deducted at source and attach it to you because they will go and pursue that company. And if, the, if that company say no, they did not deduct it, they will come back to you and charge you 20, 13, 20. That's correct. <laughs> so ideally, if you want to shut down a business, you need to fight with that authority that you are seizing a business. You know, you need to notify CAC you are seizing a business. For you to notify CAC, they will ask you for evidence of filing cessation with FRS. Yeah, no, not bank liquidation. Bankruptcy is when you are out of money. Liquidation or bank, bankruptcy is for individual mostly. The individual liquidation, you have to liquidate. And when you notify FRS that I'm filing my last return, or when you are playing what last card. Check up. Maybe you tell them last card like this. Letter is, uh, is uh, either appropriately. So, process is to close totally. But if you say, let me just leave it dumb as well, whatever. Many things. Now, um, Can we move forward, sir? We will move forward, but let's just clear it quickly. Because one thing is this. A lot of things are getting clearer. I would say information that's coming into that sector. There is actually not much enlightenment. I think it is after that you now see that a lot of it got scaled especially within Lagos, and a lot of eyes start opening. But before then, it's more like if you enter a tax office, as if there are even boards being there on a daily basis. There are no more boards, they are making money. They are driving better cars than you. So that is the space right now. There is a lot of, this is a problem. And a lot of people are finding it, they are not even able to even get a glimpse how do they get out of it. And the person that take over the business will still pay it. Nobody is taking over the business because the children are still small. The business is just there. The wife is not knowledgeable about it. And it's just there. So how do we because one thing is that let us find what is the solution, what is the way forward? Because most of us right now are at the other age. And things are changing. And we cannot be doing the same thing the old way. We need to recognize and that that truly. Thank you very much, sir. Um, like what you just did now to call on EY to come and do sense to come and discuss finance art. Like I said, if I had come to face my topic, you will not get to this place. Very, the topic was it is very, very narrow. But when I realized I was for SMEs, I needed to expand the discussion so that it can be beneficial. The amendments are very, you will see very, very material. So it's enlightenment. I don't know how often you hold your meetings. I don't know all what, but I want to appeal that you start factoring tax discussion into your matters. Tax discussions into your periodic meetings. Maybe, in, I don't know, how often do you meet, sir? Well, we, we meet online, mainly because we go to this Can we, can we buy two online? No, no, no. How often do you meet? Monthly, quarterly, half yearly? 
you meet quarterly. So uh, is it for a whole day or just two hours discussion? Oh, okay. So because if it's quarterly, then maybe one of the quarters you can bring in an expert in tax. You can even bring FRS. Yeah, because at this point, it depends on many, if many of you have if many of you have your business in mainland site, you can approach the FRS and say you want their state coordinator or their leader in, on the mainland side to come and discuss with you. Right? By the time they see that you guys are your elderly people, some of them are your mates, some of them are maybe your juniors or maybe a bit above. They might not attend the co boys. Like me, I attended Christ school. So you might find out that it's someone that you know you know. Maybe in, when you went to university, you now met. But nonetheless, you can invite those FRS guys, LRS. You can bring consultants to discuss, but quarterly, make sure that either within the four quarters of the year, you must bring in tax authority to discuss, someone to discuss about tax again to enlighten you. Because especially for that FRS, it might be compassionate when everybody is pouring out, like you are pouring your issues now. You might be compassionate and say, see me in my office. I might be able to find a way to weave some things for you. I'm just telling you that, excuse me, I'm just giving you hints on what might happen. You might go to him and say, this is what I face, this is a problem, and talk to him and let him know. He might wave it because he has seen that you guys, everybody is, you guys are connected and it's like everybody is having similar problem. So, in that instance, it might, it might, I'm not saying totally, because those guys are ruthless. If there's something that will not bring money, they will not be interested. So, are we together now? All right, sir. You people will not allow us to go to deal. I'm not done. All right, let's go on. All right, so um, next slide. These are the amendments in the Finance Act. Please, do you, does anybody know? Have you ever, if you have not heard of Finance Act before, please raise your hand so that I'm not talking to the wind. You have not heard of Finance Act before at all. Please, it's not a crime, oh, please. Uh -huh. So that I'm not just be saying, Lord, it looks like, uh, is there someone giving me engineering mathematics? I will just be looking. All right, so Finance Act is an instrument. Let me just retreat. Finance Act is an instrument used by the government to make, instead of amending the old law at once, which takes a longer route with the legislative, the government will cherry pick, will pick some amendments around, and we are also in a document called Finance Act. Well, if they want to change, let's say they want to change land use charge now, maybe federal government has land use charge. Instead of them carrying the old law, Take it to National Assembly, someone will raise the bill, what you will be crying. In that time, someone else will be talking. And they will now lead five, six months, ten months before they amend just one law. Government will just pick, okay, what are these in this language? What's the challenge? Let's just pick three sessions that we feel we should update. They will pick this one, pick this one, pick the one, and we arouse them inside one document called Finance Act. And you know tax is under, is under the fiscal policies. So they use that document to update tax laws, finance laws, some other laws that are in Nigeria. So we are talking about the tax aspect of the finance and over the years they've done it for four times now, 19, 20, 21, 23. So they've used, they've developed, they've done the instrument about four times now to amend the laws. And if you are not conversant with those amendments, you might think that your business is doing fine based on your knowledge of, 19, of 2018. Whereas there have been a lot of amendments to that. I don't know if you're a business person, sir, or you work in an office, you see that your taxes has gone up. It is because of finance arts. Do you understand me? They, they amended it in 2021, and your taxes went up. It's because the amendment they did it. So most of the amendments, they do it with the budget, so that they can rake in more revenue to finance the budget. That is their own clause, at the detriment of we, the masses. Like our president said, don't suffocate the poor. Let him what? But it is suffocating, it is a shock us, it is a shock. Are we together now? So that is finance art. So we're just discussing some of the amendments that impact SMEs. 
Are we together now? Is that clear now? So we all saw this is the category, the lady from uh, Ajibade. This was the breakdown of companies for Niger for in Nigeria. Small companies between zero to twenty five. They are not paying any tax, right? Uh, medium companies from twenty five to one hundred million. Your corporate tax, your company income tax is two twenty percent, and the big one from hundred million and above is a uh, thirty percent. Um, as I don't want to go too much. Then for companies, please, any of your letterhead should have your TIN. Do we all know what is TIN? Tax identification number. All your letterhead must carry your TIN and your payer ID. If you went and when else you want to reprint your letterhead, please, you must, it is a requirement. And now for you to for you to for a company to open a bank account now, you need to have a tax identification number. So immediately you go to CAC to go and incorporate your company, either business name or registered company, you will be assigned a tax identification number. So from there, tax authority has started monitoring your life. It's like someone that gave birth in the village. Everybody is monitoring your growth. That's why they tell you that. Ah, uh ah, -uh, you don't tell. You never born another that one. So it's like that. That's all. Immediately you do that, tax authority start tracking the business. So it's a requirement now. And all those times, ah. God have mercy. Educational institutions, schools are now, private schools are now meant to pay tax. Private schools are now required to pay taxes. Before it wasn't so. I'm very sorry, some of your children's school fees will go up. And you'll be expecting them to know one to 1,000 within uh, JLC, after they are done with JLC. All right, these are, two, these are technical matters, technical matters, technical matters. So they are saying, if you file your returns, so like they said, the December year end companies are to file by June because of six months after. The law is saying if you file 90 days before your due date, they will give you 1% credit of the amount you are meant to pay. So if you are meant to pay like 10 million, but you meant to pay by June, but you now pay to the tax authority by maybe before 90 days, that's about March 29, 30. They will give one percent, but is that a proper financial management? Anybody, any finance person, is that a proper finance management? Where is the Qatar general, <laughs> Mr. Wolabi? Is that a pro, is that a proper account, financial management? All right. So FRS is saying if you are meant, if you are to file by June, and you file by March, and pay, let's say you pay ten million. They will give you one piece, two percent, two percent. Let's say two percent bonus. So you will reduce that your ten million by two percent because you paid in March as against paid in June. Is it a proper finance management? Because within that three months, by the time you fix it in GT Bank, uh, by the time you fix that nine million in GTB at nine percent, ten percent in three months. Would you get more money? It's better you just keep that 10 million and pay it around 25 of June or 20 of June. You will have saved. Do you understand now? So these are some financial management things. Some of the things I'm saying look strange to many of you. But uh, by the time you start business, are we following? So these are technical matters. I don't want to. Education tax, as at this time, in, before in 2019, it was 2%. You see, many of us, you see third fund projects, right? In universities. It is this money they're using to, they said they're using to fund it. Let me change my word. <laughs> so, third fund, but sincerely, third fund is working. You see, if not for third fund, some of our universities would be like a uh, previous college of education. But now, college of education, university, polytechnics, they are now receiving this third fund to build and that thing is to get the money. I mean, to build correct thing. In three years, the roof will have gone. But at least they build something. Someone will come and re repair it later. So that is some of the things. Let's go to the next slide. These are technical matters. Are there people online that will ask questions? All right. So VATs increased from 5% to 75 I hope you are aware. That was the amendment then. Small companies, you are not meant to pay VAT. Uh, what are those things? Then now, the VAT for companies. Uh, okay, 
for companies now, VAT you be paying is VAT you collected before. Immediately you, you know sometimes you do a business, you invest, but at, FRI, at that time FRS is saying you should pay VAT in the real grants. No, even your customer has not paid you. But now they have amended the law that it's only when they paid you, you can now pay the VAT. Are we together? So that will help businesses. Um, let's go on. These are technical matters. Um, so, minimum wage. Anybody, any minimum wage and below will not pay tax. Are we together? Anybody that is collecting minimum wage. How much is minimum wage now? I filled up my car with 20,000 yesterday. I wanted to cry. Sir! You don't give me minimum wage, minimum wage. Thank you for that. Everybody, everybody, everybody was serious before. We are laughing. No, it's not basic. Oh. your gross salary. Sir, don't worry yourself now. None of you is collecting minimum wage here now. No, your gross salary for the month. No, which none of you is collecting yet. All of you are, you are our elders. So I'm just trying to say that if you have domestic workers collecting those amounts, don't deduct pay your 20 staff. So if you have graded at least these ones who they are collecting 25,000, 26,000, I not deduct pay from them. Are we together? Get the person to the pay rates. The difference, no, no, it's on total. So far, you cross that thirty thousand. Once you pay on yourself, life assurance, not the savings one that Mucha was doing one time. The life assurance you pay on yourself last year, you can use to reduce your tax this year. So many of you that have been enlightened to start a life assurance payment into a, into a funded account, go and get the evidence. Give it, submit it to a, if you're in civil service commission or you're in your business, you can bring it in as a, to reduce your taxes. That's why I said that the one which I was doing one time. Yes, thank you very much for that, sir. The actual, now this, not the savings one no, that you say, they say, say for nine years, they'll give you 7.5. That one is just saving plan. But the actual life assurance scheme endowment fund funded one not just the one that you are putting in name are we together if you do that i know some of you might have been enlightened maybe in one way or the other i think esco maybe you might need to bring someone to discuss about that about your health If you pay 10 million last year and it's on the endowment, you bring it in this year, they will deduct it from your gross emolument before calculating tax. So if your gross emolument was 300,000 before, they will, you know, it was 30 million before, they will deduct that 10 million and pollute it monthly. Any premium you are paying for life assurance, right, will be used relief on premium on life assurance or contract deferred annuity on an individual life or of his spouse paid to an insurance company in one year will be enjoyed in the following year. You pay the premium this year, you bring it to your company's head or to your civil or to the civil service commission. They will use to reduce your tax, so they will parade it for the 12 months, so that your tax will reduce. That's why if you and your friend are on the same salary scale, your tax will reduce. And say, ah, how did you do it? Do you know someone in civil service? No, you are wise. You are getting advantage of life assurance. You are getting advantage of what? Reduce tax. Someone mentioned that you are already doing it. You have it here. Life assurance, not savings, so. 
group life assurance. No, group life assurance is even different. Group life assurance is done by your employer. There is life assurance business that you uh, for health care, and that's before they do it, they will bring a loss adjuster. They will check your health status. They will know how much they will charge you to know whether when you are old, this, when sickness comes, how much they pay and the like. So it, you need to be a light. I know many of us. You say the money I'm collecting is not is not even is not enough. Why should I go and be paying money for life? Who know when I will die? But it is important that after the, the money can be paid to your next of kin. Yeah. So it, please let's factor into your end of your discussions. Life assurance very important. Then many of us instead of going to the hospital and be paying money every time, I hope you have adopted. Actually, okay, okay. I hope you have adopted HMO scheme. So that it's not that you don't have money and you are really, really sick, feeling sick. Please, let's factor it that HMO is very important. I'm sorry, I divert it, but I feel it's very important. Let's go, let's go on. Uh, many of you that are selling shares, shares is not supposed to say capital gains tax. Um, let's go on. For the financer, this is the topic they tell us to deal with. Oh. Yeah, scroll down. This is the only page. <laughs> so, uh, quite a number of things. These are too technical for you. Which one can I say? Eh, hey, those of you that have crypto. Although crypto has entered one chance now. But if you make any gain on your crypto, you will pay tax on it now. That, sir, leave trash for Loma. If you bail if I go poor. I go to my I go Sir, this FRS, FRS is getting wiser and wiser every day. So they've, they've taken this law. They won't come to you. They will go through some, some of the, you don't pay directly to buy crypto now. You go through a channel. <laughs> then they go and hook that channel, provide the needs of everybody. And they will link to your BVN. You see, yeah, BVN that they did is like CCCs. Those that know what I'm saying, those that know what I'm saying. So, um, which other one? Let me see. So, every import, every import, hello, one chat on us. Every import you do, if part of Nigeria, there's additional 0.5% on it. If you are importing, so they want you to encourage after, you know, this African free trade zone. So if the good is coming from outside of Africa, there's additional 0.5% that will be charged on it. So Moto, me that wants to buy a car, I'm looking for money to buy a car now. Additional 0.5%. So they want to use the money, they said they want to use the money to fund the budget. Uh, sir, I need to say they say, oh, it's not me. Before they say, ah, uh, telecom services, additional tax on your telecom services. Okay, I think um, education tax that I said before there was 2.5 has been increased to 3%. So, yes. In, 20, in 2019, they increased it to 2.5. They've increased to 3% now. Sir? What will happen to it? <laughs> All right. So um, I think um, because of the audience, I couldn't go to detail because you are not tax experts. You are business owners and um, top civil servants and top business owners and top people in your office. I think with this, this few point of mine, I think I've been, a I've been able... I know because many people are not, it's, it's companies that do that. And when I, when I did the survey, it's like many people are not talking, either they're business owners. Or so the, one house, please. Investment allowance is an allowance that on your asset, when you buy assets in the company, there's no work capital allowance. You, you can use it to reduce your tax. So they now give additional allowance of 10%. If you buy plants and equipment, that's plant and machinery. That allowance, what we call rural allowance, if you go and invest in, Bush, 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 inside my village in Ekiti. You can get an allowance of almost 20% of the amount. They remove that one. So they tend to remove a lot of allowances 
from companies and companies might, might be companies will be paying more taxes nowadays. And another one, that's why. Okay, no, 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 no. So this one, if you buy something on Amazon online, we all know Amazon online. Maybe you bought a shoe. You must have paid VAT in Amazon if you have paid. They are saying that by the time you are importing those goods to custom in Nigeria, you should not pay additional VAT again. The only provided that if you have not paid VAT when although because Amazon is not required to be paying to be charging you VAT. If you cannot show that you have paid VAT to Amazon, by the time you get to custom here, you will still pay another VAT. Before, if you pay to Amazon, you will still pay at the custom because they know they know they, they know the year word. So but now they say if you have proved that you have paid it to Amazon or anyone you bought online and they are shipping the goods to Nigeria, you will not pay another one in yes. Then VAT, they also brought in a lot of things. Um, because of the situation, we have no more time in. Um, I think I should just quickly round it up from here. I must go on this Friday, TGIF. Thank you very much. Have a nice evening. Do we have any questions? Any more questions? Time? Okay, time till now. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. And Thank uh, you we for appreciate you for being here. Um, we are supposed to give you a small gift, but we are going to arrange it because your name didn't come on time before we get it. So, oh, no problem. So on behalf of uh, EA, oblige us. Yeah. Don't be afraid. Much. We won't kidnap you. I know you cannot. Be because I'm, you I'm are, you are actually enlightened a lot, a lot about this issue of tax. Because a lot of us actually have issues. And we have not... By the president, and made, let him make one of to comment and then we can maybe next time you bring it put it in the morning session okay yeah. but it's, it's not a bad thing to put tax at the beginning just for your day <laughs> yeah well we thank you very much for this outing thank you sir this i want us to give this speaker another round of applause please. he works in an international company at the same level with uh, is it deloitte or what do you call them that's the level it works. They have come here, they didn't charge us a penny. We have delayed them here. We did not even give them enough notice. We just kidnapped them and then they obliged us. So once again, uh, Mr. Adeyemi, Adeyemi, we really appreciate your presence here. We, we will appreciate your companies to also allow you to have come spare this time with us. He has been sitting down there. I have to plead with him. This lecture is supposed to have been before lunch. And then he waited for almost four hours to just make sure he gave us the... Um <laughs> so once again, we we'll thank you and we'll get back to you with your play card and other gifts. Thank, thank you, you very sir. much, sir. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice evening. Don't go. Now, um, we'll, because the time is far gone, uh, we actually said we'll have an abridged AGM. So I would like to crave your indulgence. The opportunity of being gathered like this in short notice. So, um, our, but our wives are here, don't worry. We are still discussing it's nothing much more. So, we will. Uh, we are included. So let the president make a, a few um, comments and then any other thing we'll take it up from there. Okay, the AGM meeting basically just to give account of what we have done within a brief account of what has happened within the last one year that this executive has been in power.